Hello, hello. Good middle of the day? Question mark. <laughs> hmm. Uh. Hi. This is this is a very unfortunate time to be streaming. I feel like because like it's the middle of the day. No, no one, no one's home. People are out and about, or they're asleep, depending on the time zone. But it's fine. I'm here here and before I spend the rest of my day not really doing anything I thought to myself you know what let's see how long I can play Professor Layton for 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 for, for before I get not, not even tired but just how long can I read for until my brain goes pew? <laughs> also I hope I got the right version of Professor Layton in Pandora's box I think it is right because Funniest thing is when you when you look on Twitch, it, uh, the the only thing it has available is Professor Layton and the diabolical box, which is the American version of the game. Uh, and Pandora's box should be the European version, so we should have the European voice acting, so the European look. Because if we get jump scared by the American look, I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> so this is fine. This is a, the the second game in the series that takes place pretty much right after the first one. I don't think there's a lot of time in between the two games. They're probably going to tell tell us like, oh, ooh. Uh, but chronologically, this is the second second game. Like as I've said. Uh, the first three games are in chronological order, the same way they literally come out. Meanwhile, the, the the other three games are like, oh, we actually take place before these, so that's gonna be fun. But yeah. Uh, new game time. I hope the sound is okay. It's the same. It's exactly at the same like levels as the last game, so it should be fine. Hopefully, we'll see how that goes. Right now we're going to enter our name. This is a work of fiction. Characters, groups, and events portrayed within are no way intended to resemble those of the real world. There are tales of a box that brings death upon any who dare open it. Tell me, do you think those rumors could be true? Ah, yes! Extremely fucking grainy cutscenes. Hey, look, there it is! We're already seeing a few faces we know. Ooh. Now this is what I call deluxe. Just look at this room. 
Yes, I can certainly see why some call the Molin Teddy Express a cruise ship on rails. Hey, son, this is great! <laughs> now, don't forget, Luke. A gentleman pays attention to his manners. I would do the same. Every setting. I don't care. It's very gentlemanly to try out the sofa, see how bouncy it is. behind this Elysian box anyway. Or who open it die? Sounds awfully fishy to me. <laughs> Perhaps so. But we've seen it happen with our very own eyes. The answer is out there, Luke. But I just need to find it. We will. I know it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Elysian box. My dear friend, as always. There was a box that was rumoured to kill anyone who opened it. At first, neither the professor nor I believed it. But all that changed with the arrival of a single letter. A few days earlier. Look, have a look here. What's that, professor? It's a letter from my dear friend and mentor, Dr. Andrew Schrader. Is everything all right? My dear Herschel, as an archaeologist, you're sure to oh have heard God. of the item known as the Elysian Box. I didn't know that was his voice in English, Jesus Christ. Of course, it is more commonly known as Pandora's Box, in reference to the famous myth. This nickname would appear to be well-deserved since it is rumored to kill whoever opens it. And I managed to get my hands on it, and I open it, and now I'm dead. What? I'm dubious of this reputation, of course, but when my interest is piqued, I simply must investigate. That's why I'm pleased as punch to tell you that the elusive item is finally in my possession. <laughs> What's more, I believe I'm on the cusp of unraveling a great mystery tied to this box. For the moment, Let's just say I have a theory, though I haven't a been able to prove it yet. Initially, it was my intention to finish my research before daring to open its lid. But I must confess that my curiosity is simply overpowering. In the unlikely event that anything should happen to me, please, finish the work I've started here. Your friend, Andrew Schrader. According to the postmark, this letter was sent two days ago. We should go pay the doctor a visit. I just can't shake the feeling that something awful has happened. Well, your intuition's usually spot on. I say we head out right away. <laughs> Illusion box is an antique set to bring death upon anyone who dares open its lid. According to rumors, the box has already claimed many lives and is known as Pandora's box in many parts of the world. Could such dark rumors be true? Luke, before we go, would you be so kind as to fetch my car keys? They're in one of the drawers in that desk. Will do, Professor. Uh, if there's something you wish to interact with, Luke, you need only reach out and touch it. Luke must find the keys to the Professor's car. Search by touching the drawers of the desk. Right, right, we get. Apparently, uncomfortable chairs make you cleverer. <laughs> cleverer! Cleverer. Well, here they are, Professor. You get Layton's keys. You can find items you pick up in a Professor's trunk. Many thanks, Luke. Now let's get moving. And <laughs> my side! <laughs> you do know how to move about, don't you, Luke? Yeah! Bad idea. Let's see. First of all, touch the shoe in the bottom right corner. Then I just touch one of the little arrows that appear to move in that direction. 
That's exactly right. Anytime you wish to move, stop by touching your shoe at. Go on, try it out. I'm good. How you doing? What do you mean items that I find on my trunk? Oh, they actually are. So there's not too many items we have in our possession at the same time. Then there's only so little space. That's the way, my boy. One can investigate properly without first doing a little lag work, as they say. Couldn't agree more, Professor. Now shall we head up? Am I going to be able to keep up the little voice I do for Luke all the time? Probably not. Nice to hear. Yeah! <laughs> I hope you're doing well, too. I always hate saying well as well. That's too many wells in one go. <laughs> Let's see. Luke, before we set out, it would be wise of us to confirm the location of the doctor's flat. During one of his visits some time ago, he was kind enough to leave me a map to his home. The map itself, however, is a rather unusual piece of cartography. Look here, Luke. It oh! Hmm. How clever! The map itself is a puzzle. Professor, do you mind if I take a crack at it? I just know I can solve this one. You're very tired, but in a good mood? Well, at least you're in a good mood. That's good to hear. I am not tired or like I shouldn't be. I slept I slept over 10 hours basically. Like I woke up with some kind of alarm at around 9 for like a minute and then and then I only really properly like managed to wake up, get up, whatever it was like barely an hour ago, a little more like around 11. So I'm like I need to do something, otherwise I'm gonna waste the entire day and I'm gonna feel bad about myself. Several pieces have been cut out of the middle of the map to Dr. Schrader's home. Complete the map by sliding the pieces with the stylus and inserting them in the right places. It may sound simple, but don't forget that you can move or remove pieces, including the one already in the middle of the map. Stylus to move objects around on the touch screen and you set aside the answer tops. Top. They're like, oh, you can move this one. How do I? Can I turn them around? No, I just need to put them in, right? Alright, let's see. I'm gonna get rid of this one simply for the very simple reason that I don't believe if it's there already when we start this that it's right. These look like they could go together. about right also congrats on the half first <laughs> this is connected this is connected this is connected yeah hmm. <laughs> let's see if this works yeah that was almost too easy excellent work now let's hurry to the doctor's flat Uh, Picarat's a point that indicated puzzles. Difficulty, the more Picarat's a puzzle is worried, the tougher it is. When you submit an incorrect answer for a puzzle, the number of Picarat's you can earn when the puzzle decreases, so think carefully before answering. Having lots of Picarat's. Once you've completed the game and safe, go to the bonus section and load your game file. From there, you can enter the top secret area where a number of fun extras are waiting for you. The more Picarat's you earn, the more content you unlock. Excellent. With our destination confirmed, we are ready to pay the doctor a visit. Come now. Let's go! We are in London now. Hmm. I do believe we found the doctor's building. But which flat is his? That I'm afraid I don't know. But come to think of it, the letter I received did mention something about this place. The doctor's home! Find Dr. Schrader's window from the details on this ladder. In the morning, I often wake up to the sound of music drifting in from a nearby flat. Looking out, I spy a flag fluttering gently outside my window. Take a single sip of my tea and turn my attention to the morning sun. Not many flats in London have a view of the sunrise anymore, you know? Circle the window from which the doctor views the sunrise. Well, that's easy. This one. 
Well, because if he actually views the sun rays, it has to be coming from here. Consider this puzzle solved. Yeah, baby. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. <laughs> That's right. Now that you know where it is, head for the doctor's home. Unless I'm mistaken, I think we found his flat. Now follow me, Luke. We're going up. I nearly forgot. Before we leave, let me remind you how to use this trunk. To open the trunk, just touch the icon in the top right corner of the screen. Inside, there are all sorts of helpful functions and information filed away under different icons. Touch an icon to use it. To save the progress we've made during our investigation, touch the save icon. Touch the puzzle icon and index icon to view all the puzzles we've encountered so far. So if puzzles are marked with a tick, those who've yet, who yet to solve a blank puzzle before yourself can be replayed by selecting them from the screen. The index also shows the locations of unsolved puzzles that we've tried so that we may revisit them. Touch the journal icon to display personal notes of key story events. So just set to touch the trunk icon whenever you need to access it. The good part about this being the DS game's just having a touch screen. Just like, wherever you want to go, just touch it. Hello there, mister. Never seen you around here before. Want to hear something useful? Alright, see that post box over there? Try touching it with your stylus for me, will you? A hint coin, wow! Brilliant, that's a hint coin you found there. Ever been stuck trying to solve a puzzle? It's times like those when I bet you fancy a hint, yeah? But when that happens, you can try your shiny hint coins for hints. They're scattered all over the place, which means you should always be on the lookout for them. Use your stylus to touch anything that looks suspicious, okay? Good, well, that's all I have to say. You take it easy, mister. Yeah, sure, thank you. I like that the t tutorial parts of the games don't take too long. It's always just like you, you run into one uh, one person that tells you about the hint coins. You, you go, okay, here, here's how you move, here's your... Oh, excuse me, uh, here's your, your menu, blah blah blah. Third save file has a floor on it. Right then, hello, hello, hello. This is Dr. Schrader's flat, I'm sure of it. Dr. Schrader, are you home? It's Harsh Layton. I came as soon as I write your letter. Hello, are you there? Doctor? I don't hear anyone in there, Professor. What if he's. This is no time for idle speculation, Luke. We must get this door open first. It seems to be locked. So without a key, there's no way to get in. Well, no legal way. Of course, how could I forgot? These keys were enclosed in an envelope along with the doctor's letter to me. Ah! But how could you have forgotten? Quick, Professor, let me try them on the door. Huh? That's strange. It doesn't seem like any of those keys work on the door. I have... There's something on my screen. That makes it look like Luke has a mole under his eye. <laughs> he does not. I was like, I think I would have seen, I would have recognized that in his character design. Luke, don't you see? The doctor has, yet, has set us yet another puzzle to solve. I cannot read today, Jesus. Which key? Which of these keys opens the door? Use the stylus to move the keys and find the one that fits the lock. Careful observation of the shapes of the keys required to find the right one. <laughs> no, 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 like this. Here goes. I wonder if that will work with an actual key. Technically, that you can put whatever you want on, on the side that doesn't open the door, I guess. But also, it's just weird. That's right! How long did it take you to realize that the grips of the keys could also be inserted into the lock? This little lesson about the danger of making assumptions should serve you well in your puzzle-solving adventures. Sweet. Professor! No, I'm true. How could this have happened? This is terrible, Professor. 
Do you suppose the Elysian Box did this to Dr. Schrader when he opened it? I honestly don't know, Luke. But that can wait. Right now, we need to notify the police. Of course, Professor. Hmm? What do we have here? A train ticket for the Molentary Express. Look at this, Professor. There's no destination written on the ticket. I've never seen a ticket that didn't say where it was taking you. How strange. Mm. Yes, very strange indeed. A single ticket with no visible destination was discovered in Dr. Schrader's home. It appears to be for the Molentary Express, but where exactly is it supposed to take its bearer? Wee, wee, wee. Hi! Excuse Hi. me! Hmm. Hmm. What? Huh? Hey, it's you! Well, Inspector Chelmy's the name. You two found the body, did you? The real one this time. No, Luke. Let him go. Get off me. Luke, stop that. That's your face. Listen Oh, my gosh. His face doesn't come off. He's the wrong thing. In Luke's defense, he's never met the real Inspector Chelmy. The only one he's met is the one that was an imposter. I would have probably reacted the exact same. There's no one in the blazes! That's my face, not some piece of taffy! I'm so sorry, sir. I didn't mean it. I am um, sure we had another imposter on our hands. What in the world is this child talking about? I swear. Young ones these days have no manners. <laughs> my apologies for the confusion. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Herschel Layton. I'm a professor of archaeology at Gresson Heller University. And I'm his apprentice, Luke. Interesting. So if I understand correctly, you keep a child around as an apprentice, do you? Yeah. Not at all, sir. In truth, he's... Professor Layton's apprentice, like I said. <laughs> well, it's really none of my concern. <laughs> I have a crime scene that needs my attention. Clear a path, will you? But of course. Luke, not a word about that ticket to the authorities, all right? You got it, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, yes. Let's see. What do we have here? A murder? Or was the crime self-inflicted? Inspector, I should tell you that the door was locked before Luke and I came in. <laughs> Hi, Sammy. <laughs> Thank you for the videos. I see. So this door, the sole entry point in and out of this eight going going flat, sleep yet? was shut tight. Then the doctor was holed up in here, completely apart from the outside world, yes? That being the case, hmm, yes, I'm sure of it. The old Aww. gent must have <laughs> suffered a heart attack. Oh, hi! Thank you for the resub. Hello! <laughs> what? How did you come to that conclusion, sir? Use your noodle, laddie. What other explanation could there be? It's true that the flat is on the eighth floor and that the door was locked, Inspector. Still, I'd hesitate to say that this room was completely closed off from the outside. Is that so? Please elaborate. Isn't it obvious? There's something quite unusual about our crime scene that's been overlooked. Isn't it obvious? Eh? It's as plain as the nose on your face, Inspector. <laughs> I suppose you academics think your fancy degrees prepare you to play detective, eh? You never played this one? Wait, did you just skip it? You played the other ones and you skipped this one? Oh, what? I need some light in here. You stopped that at the first one. Oh, okay. Let's see. Whatever nice analysis I need, I'll be like, no. <laughs> 
isn't it obvious? The answer to this 150 picarat a puzzle is <laughs> your mom. No. It's the beginning of the game. I it is you, very obvious. Nowadays, yeah. So far, it seems so far. Like it's everybody and their mum thinks they can do my job. Oh, I see. Well, now, as I was get ready for the a wild ride. Failure, plain and simple. I mean, my, and my favorite is the third game. Uh, but the second one is lovely. Not that your mom go, hehe. <laughs> this. It's a scaled-down model of a Kronosaurus, if I'm not mistaken. I reckon that ugly mug will give anyone nightmares. Here's what probably happened. The old fellow turned on a light, I'll give you a spoiler. one look at the beast, Professor and then Layton's killed mom actually oak. shows up on one of the games. Considering that a lot of people in this game don't have living parents. She's cute. This is the doctor's own home. From what I remember, Why would the bones he put up himself scare him. People have a way of becoming forgetful with age. Not that you'd understand, boy. Well, you're right about that. I don't understand it at all. Then what? Mr. Layton, is it? <gasps> no. No, that's ah, that's yes, news Layton. to me. <laughs> Mr. Layton, what do you think? The scenario you paint certainly isn't out of the realm of possibility. <laughs> but, <laughs> but considering the lights were off when we entered the room, I don't think we found our answer also, yet. Why the fuck would uh, an archaeology professor who has a scaled-down model of a dinosaur in his own living room suddenly get a heart attack from seeing that model? <laughs> Whether well, that was in <laughs> global warming. Furthermore, look around you, Inspector. Doesn't anything strike you as odd? What do you mean, Professor? Because it's a roaring sea. Roar means I love you in dinosaur. Study your surroundings, Luke. I'm sure you can see it too. Funnily enough, you cannot actually see it until you get to the puzzle itself, what he's talking about. If not the doctor's flat and is on the eighth floor and that the door was securely locked, you might think that there was no way in or out of this room. However, a single suspicious detail provides a clue as to what went on there. Look in all four directions and examine the room carefully. When you think you found the telltale detail, circle it with the silence and touch submit. Be sure to circle only one object or else your answer won't count. Diana confessed to him and he's got commitment issues. Oh no! <laughs> You cannot actually see. Oh! Uh, what do you mean, please redraw my circle? Look at this! <laughs> the ripped off curtain! How dare you! Redraw That's your okay. circle! Hey! <laughs> it really was the first circle I've drawn in this game, and it's like. <laughs> Well spotted! For some reason, part of the curtain has been ripped clean off. What could have happened here? I wouldn't say that's a clean rip off, but I'll of take it. Of course! This window is missing a curtain! Hmm, so it is. But what exactly does this have to do with my crime scene? Well, my good sir. Someone used that to escape! It means someone exited the building through this window. And I'll bet they're our culprit. It for, but still, that's scary. Like ripping one singular curtain. Whoa, whoa, whoa. still on the eighth floor. That's scary. I'd say scary that's a high. sound theory. And I well do not. Done, I'm boy. not afraid of heights, but that's scary. Do not hold this, you like, right? Oh, <laughs> Don't think about it too yes. hard. Sound as a pass. Just like, yeah, okay, this I'm guy escaped. It's not good, but it's hard. Liar! Liar! Shh, Luke, listen. I don't believe our friend Inspector will be of much help to us. Damn! What say you and I conduct a little investigation of our own? Professor, look! There's something in Dr. Schrader's hand! Mm. 
It's an old photo. Yeah, right. How did they tie it to the other side? I have no idea. I I, can't I just accept it anything. as it is. I think to myself, you know what? Whatever. Whatever they say. No, because. Hmm. But if you looked at the picture, it was legitimately tied to the railing on the other side. It was. No, no, no you, you're right. It was tied to the railing. That's that's exactly why I'm like, hold on. <laughs> it, it was tied to the railing. What do you mean? Problem is I cannot go back to show you, but it was tied to the railing. I still have... Do I have... No, I don't have the tab left open. Oh, whatever. We'll just accept it as that that, that this is how the, that person escaped. It's fine. Let's not think about it too hard. Phone fragments of the photograph were found in the late doctor's hand. In his current state, it's impossible to make out the contents of the photo. What could it be depicting? Very well, big first and you just tie it to a rating voice. <laughs> it's like, oh, I escaped! Hey, what's the big idea? You can't just pour evidence in a crime scene. Get your hands off that. Uh, that. Uh, what is this anyway? <laughs> hmm, more than it matters. I'll be holding on to that. Now, out with the both of you. He found a torn photo, but Inspector Shelmy confiscated it. Oh, but we haven't finished. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Schrader indicated that he was in possession of the Illusion box, yet there was nothing resembling such an artifact in his home. Maybe the person who did this to him was after the box. An interesting theory, Luke, but for the moment that's all it is. However, we do have one clue to understanding today's events, namely the ticket. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Professor? Indeed I am, Luke. I believe that a trip aboard the Molentary Express is in order. I always say Molentary, like, way differently than they do. I think it, it's Molentary? Molen? I, I don't know. I say it differently every time. Somebody managed to steal the Legion box from Dr. Schrader's home without leaving behind a single implicating clue. Who could have made off with the box? Wish me. We suspect we'll find the key to unlocking this mystery on the train. Dr. Schrader did his best to point us toward the Monetary Express should something happen to him. Sure as fuck on a London morning, I know that this train will lead us to the answers we seek. I think that was an Professor actual... Professor and Luke sped away from the city, unaware of the secrets that awaited them down those iron tracks. I think... If I remember correctly, there was an actual physical ticket. A ticket in, in the in the game when you bought it back then. I, I'd have to check my box of the game if I still have it. Just look at this place, Professor. It's so posh, I feel I should be wearing a monocle. <laughs> Quite so, Luke. Every fiction fitting is the very height of decadence. The sheet. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Just post it in a uh, single, single player, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so hi, I get a good mm, middle of the day. <laughs> I keep wanting to say good morning. <laughs> it's not morning. <laughs> I'm getting resembling morning. And why the rest of the train is just as grand? How about a little exploration? Is that a brick? Yeah, okay, yeah, no, I, I see it. Okay, yeah, okay, that is a brick. You can barely see that in the drawing though. Like it looked like it was tied to the to the railing, but that that is definitely a brick. Okay. Gotcha. It's yeah, it's it's very strong. It's more like afternoon. Yeah, right. It's, it's afternoon time. <laughs> afternoon tea time. Afternoon tea time. More like finding every single hidden coin here first. I know there's a hidden coin here. Don't. Don't copy me, reliable. Fuck. I I I would buy 
from that company. I would buy curtains from the company, I think. Look at that, Luke. Your back is wide open. Your belongings are all scattered about. Oh, so they are. You should put your things away before we start exploring the train. Should we? Luke's belongings are all over the place and need to be packed away in his trunk. Use your stylus to move objects into the trunk, making sure that none of them overlap. When everything has been placed neatly into the trunk, touch submit. He has a bunch of stuff, yeah. It's funny that, that some stuff also starts off in, in... Well, somewhat in here, but not completely. Hmm. Let's see if this works. There we go. Piece of cake. Good work. Luke should be able to close the crunk, crunk, <laughs> trunk properly now. The drawing is so cute. Mm -hmm. It was a tight squeeze, but everything's finally packed away. We were in rather a hurry, so I suppose you didn't really have time to pack properly. I do feel better with everything put away. Come on, Professor, let's do some exploring. And despite him packing different clothes, do you have, will we ever see him wear different clothes? No. Ugh, Professor, the sugar's covered with ants. Oh dear, I'll have to remember to get sugar for my tea elsewhere. Here is though, isn't it? How did I get here? Speaking of ants, try this one on for size, Luke. Look at nicely, afterwards it will be a giant mess. Oh, definitely. Horrible mess. Busy ants were tirelessly carrying food back to the nest. One such ant was returning with food when she bumped into an acquaintance in front of the nest. What are you playing at? Didn't you notice that you took the longest path possible back to the nest? Think about where you're going next time. Knowing that the ant never traveled on the same path twice, can you trace the route the returning ant walked to get to her nest? They're only there to give you the illusion, for real. <laughs> Longest path possible. Longest path possible. You can have to. Just leave it to me. Layton's apprentice strikes Sing. again. Yeah. That's right. Perhaps all the heavy lifting kept this little aunt from thinking about her path home. If only she thought about where she was going, she could have saved herself a lot of walking. One. Got it, my boy. While well, I'm no fan of ants and my sugar, you have to admire the craftiness and work ethic. Maybe it's because even the sugar of the Molendary Express is extra fancy. <laughs> I'm sure those ants are genuine sugar connoisseurs. Sure they are! When I was a child, one time <clears throat> I had one of these weird sugar pearl things you could get at, at the fair. Like an entire bottle of them. Middle of the night, I managed to drop it. The sugar pearl scattering everywhere. I didn't think too much of it, I guess. I don't know. I don't remember. I only remember from when my parents tell me the story. Um, I go to call my mother. I'm like, Mom, can you come in here? She's like, why? What's happening? I'm like, yeah, I dropped the sugar pearls. And she's like, oh, okay, sure. It turns on the light. The entire floor was covered with ants. The good thing is I don't actually remember that happening. I only know from her talk because it, that would have had to be a very horrible situation just seeing those ants everywhere. <laughs> so no more sugar pearls for me. Remember Luke, we're here to find a Lucian box, so don't get too sidetracked. <laughs> have to tell me twice, Professor. Now, why don't we start by investigating the train? Press and Luke decide to explore the Molentary Express. Don't get too sidetracked in a later game. Hee <laughs> hee, the sidetrack is gonna turn out to be the main story at some point. Hi! I hear the rooms at the front of the trains are super duper fancy. The donors are made of gold. But no one's allowed in except for really rich people. So, Mistress, are you really rich? Because if you are, you can go see the super duper fancy rooms. Super duper fancy rooms. 
That number the extremely wealthy can enter. If our young friend is correctly informed, there must be a set of deluxe rooms in the next carry. Wow, I'd love to see what those look like. I bet they're simply smashing. Smashing! Too bad we're not super super wealthy. I'm going to my Rennies, where are you two going? We're actually out looking for something, dear. Sadly, we don't know where it is. Until we find a clue to point us in the right direction, we'll simply have to continue looking. Ooh, that sounds like lots of work. Yeah, I'll tell you a puzzle to take your mind off that stuff. <laughs> okay, girly! After trying to fold the strip of paper in half, you notice that one side of the folded strip is one centimeter longer than the other. Determined to get it right, you fold the strip again, only to discover that now the other end of the folded strip is one centimeter longer than the other. You've now made two fold creases in the strip. What is the distance of millimeters between the two creases? Jim put answer to the answer screen, say when it is real. Oh, one, one centimeter, then, so ten millimeter. This should do the trick. If it's always just one centimeter long oh, on this side, wonderful. one centimeter long on that side. That's right, the distance between the creases is 1 cm or 10 mm. If you're having trouble visualizing this, imagine that the matchbox showed above has a height of 1 cm. Now imagine that one of the matchbox's sides was removed. It looks just like your strip of paper after being folded twice. The excess length of your folds is represented by the remaining side. I am unsure how that is supposed to be helpful, but okay. You got it! Wow, those hats you're wearing must be thinking caps or something. I hope you find whatever it is you're looking for, misters. That is very sweet of you, character. I'm unsure uh, whether you're going to show up again ever. Yes, I suppose these accommodations will do. I do hope my darling boy will be pleased. You're voiced? That reminds me, I believe it's Disney time for my sweet baby. I'm off to visit the dining car. Gosh, that woman was just a type I'd expect to see on the Monetary Express. Talk about rich and flashy. Right, this train is full of many well-heeled patrons like the woman we just met. We must watch our deeds and words here. Formal setting demands formal manners, don't you think? Absolutely, Professor. Oh, well, uh, not much crime solving yet. We're trying to find uh, a spe specific box. That may or may not have killed someone we know. <laughs> Just look at the craftsmanship on this picture, Luke. I'm almost certain it was handmade. Who knew that something as ordinary as a picture could be so fancy? What could be more relaxing than sitting in your suit with a cold beverage and watching the sunset? Not everything that's served in pitches is good to drink, however. Look at this puzzle for yourself. I'm ready for it, Professor. Well, no, this is Mur this is not Murder on the Orient Express, uh, for one, because while the game puts you on this uh, train here, you don't actually stay on a train for most of the game. Uh, the person we found dead was also found in his own home and not here. We just found a ticket to get on this train in, in that home. The game is... Uh, the game starts off with a, ooh, here's a box, ooh, a guy is dead, and then you're on a train trying to make you think, haha, everything's gonna happen on the train, but that's, that's not true. <laughs> that is not true. Two men, known here as one and two, are playing a strange game. First, both men put their empty pitchers on the table. Next, the judge brings a pitcher filled with vinegar and places it in either spot A or B. The judge then starts shifting the vinegar from one pitcher to any adjacent pitcher over and over. After moving the liquid 55 times, the owner of the vinegar filled pitcher must down it in one. Ugh. If you were the judge and secretly wanted two to drink the vinegar, would you place the pitcher down in spot A or B? Mm. 
Wait, sorry, 55 times. So always the adjust and always the adjustment one, so one. Oh yeah, yeah. One, two, three, four. Bleh, I already miscounted. But it's always gonna be in the middle again on, on uneven numbers, right? So one, three, five, seven. Oh no, the, the thing is we, we need to put it in a space where it, where the second person has to uh has to drink it. That's the thing. We want this person to drink it. So we need to put it here so this one is always going to be in the middle. Beep, 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 beep. Here it goes. <laughs> Gonna get some get, fetch some food? You do that. Food sounds like a good idea. I'm drinking a yogurt. Yogurt? A drink? It's supposed to taste like that strawberry thingy and it tastes interesting. I'm not sure if it's... You know how a lot of times strawberry tasting stuff just tastes extremely fucking fake? It's one of those, but it is what it is. I already paid money for it. I'm gonna drink it. <laughs> Nicely done! The vinegar changes pitches 55 times, which is an odd number of course. Regardless of where you place your pitcher, whichever pitcher sits in the middle of the three will always contain a vinegar after an odd number of course. Therefore, in order for man 2 to drink, the vinegar filled pitcher must go in spot B, because doing so will put man 2's pitcher in the middle, thus guaranteeing the vinegar ends up in this pitcher. Chemical berries, the best kind. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Does it say anywhere here that there's actual strawberries in it? It says 36% yogurt, uh, buttermilk, I don't fucking know. Sugar, 3% strawberries, and 2% strawberry juice. Also, some other stuff that I don't know off the top of my head what it, what they're called in English. Mmm, <laughs> yummy. I was hoping it would taste a little like Furzwege, but it doesn't. Mmm, three percent strawberry in a drink. Yes, nice. Excellent work. Now, let's press on, shall we? We mustn't stand around all day. You were the one who gave me the puzzle! All beverages are wonderful, but as a British gentleman, I must say nothing delights me like tea. Uh, <laughs> sure, Leighton. Why am I not surprised? Ooh. Hello! I'm dreadfully sorry, sir. I'm afraid all the seats in our fine establishment are taken right now. What a pity. Indeed it is, sir. But while you're waiting for a table, may I interest you in a puzzle? Imagine that. You're waiting for a table to open up and this guy just fucking gives you a puzzle. Four couples sit in a crowded dining car. All diners are sitting next to or across from their partners. The Jonas's are sitting by the aisle. The mustachioed Mr. O'Connor is sitting next to his wife. Mr. Lambert is sitting opposite his wife. Using the information above, can you determine where Mrs. Hadley is sitting? Circle her and touch the Very hot. They're either next to each other or across. The Jonas's are sitting by the aisle. So, they're one of the couples that sits across. Either these two or these two. The mustachio Mr. O'Connor is sitting next to his wife. There's only one person here with a mustache. So these two... These two are the O'Connors. Then these are the Jonases. Mr. Lambert is sitting opposite to his wife. This is the only other team that's the opposite. So this person has to be Mrs. Hadley and that's her husband. Please rejoice. Oh, hello! I do they not like my circles today? So freaking bad you code and catch up eight out of spot. Oh 
<laughs> right? It's like, I already paid money for it. I'm gonna eat it, even if it tastes I'm not bad. I'm test my theory. <laughs> and there we have it. This guacamole is like 1.5% of... What the fuck? Guacamole, guacamole. That's right. Mustachio and Mr. Khan are sitting next to his wife, so all the people on the left must be sitting next to their spouses. Mr. Lemon is sitting opposite his wife, so he must be sitting at the right-hand table. The Jones are sitting by the aisle, so they must be C and G. That leaves E and F as the Hadleys. You have to go buy some bread, B and B. Get some bread for me too. <laughs> I went out earlier, actually. I was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna go out for a few steps, so I so I properly wake up, and once I get back home, I'm gonna stream. And then I forgot to actually like get groceries because I wanted to be home again I like I just went a very short round okay went okay you know what <laughs> fuck that no more going outside enough touching grass exactly right sir as they say that nothing wants the appetite like a hearty pasta oh and it appears a table has just become available allow me just a moment to tidy it up and then I will be happy to escort you to your seats Great, I'm starving. Oh good, our table's finally ready. We'll just be taking our seats then. Uh, madam, please wait just a moment. In truth, these passengers have been waiting long. Nonsense, we'll not hear another word of this. You take these people before us, we're insulted. I, I do apologize, madam. It's simply that these gentlemen arrived before you. We will not be kept waiting. Do you understand? Not a single second. And out of our way. Madam. Yeah. About pushy. I do apologize, sirs. There's a lovely observation deck in the last carriage of the train. Please feel free to relax it for a few minutes while I prepare a new table for you. Maintaining one's composure while dealing with difficult customers is truly admirable. Come, Luke. Let's give him some breathing room. We'll take a look at the deck and return to the dining car later. Yeah, she's um. An experience of a character. Goodness me, no need to look so put out. Don't you know that ladies always go first? Especially ladies of a certain class like <laughs> me. I'm not sure if class is the word she meant to use there. Voice character means you're pretty important at some point. To an extent, yeah. To an extent. <laughs> Not that many people actually die in the later games. If at all. I'm, I'm like, wait, hold on, I'm just thinking. Do... Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <I'll> get into that. <coughs> Need to work in the cold cut. <laughs> Look at all the stuff there's to eat! Yes, it seems that the monetary express is a first class operation right down to the kitchen. Oh my, passengers in the kitchen! I'm sorry, but we just can't have that. Sturdy clothes of yours probably violate all sorts of health regulations, you know? Well, have you know that there's nothing at all dirty about our clothes? Say what you like, short stuff, but that doesn't change the fact that I'm running a kitchen here. Did you stop to think about what could happen if yucky outside germs made it in here because of you? I see your point. Terribly sorry for an intrusion and any worry we may have cost you, good sir. Oh, alright. I'm sorry too, sir. It was that. <laughs> Professor, look here! It seems our friend the cook has been keeping a pet in the kitchen. How arrogant of him to lecture other people about germs. <laughs> oh boy, I guess the cat's out of the bag now. Listen, I don't know, it's against the rules to keep a pet in the kitchen, but he's my only friend, see? Or you're not, he's the only per uh, creature I've got to talk to in here. My, he certainly is generously proportioned, isn't he? He's a hamster, I presume. Of course he's a hamster. The quiet dignity makes him the nobles of all creatures. When I first started working here, I needed someone to keep me company, so I bought him. Thing is, I feed him all the table scraps we take back, which makes for a diet that's a bit, um, <clears throat> rich. He's really piled on a pounds, and to be honest, I'm starting to wonder if it isn't bad for his health. 
I wonder, could I ask you a favour? Would you mind looking after my friend for a little while? When he's here with me, I can't help but feed him, but those scraps of poi grass and paste you soon at all. That's not how you say that, do you? Poi, poi, poi. You mean you want us to take care of him and help him get into shape? Sounds like a great idea to me. I mean, what do you think, Professor? Can we please keep him for a little while? Well, I've always said that helping rodents in need is among the duties of every true gentleman. We'd be happy to take custody of this hamster until he sheds some of that excess baggage. <laughs> I thank you so much. It's a real weight of my shoulders. Ha ha. And of his waist, hopefully. The hamster minigame has been added to the trunk. You can check on the hamster by touching the hamster icon inside the professor's trunk. And one more thing, since I won't be seeing the little fella for a while, could you give him this apple? He loves them so. It's so funny. I'm going to miss my fury friend. Please look after him. Fury friend. Don't worry, he's in good hands. Please give the hamster a name! Oh! Uh, mm, what? Uh, um. I didn't think about that. I forgot you actually get to name the hamster. I love the names in these games. Dilbert! <laughs> Dilbert, come on, Dilbert, you can do it! The Hamtaro already got back to the names. Dilbert! Dilbert, you know what? For being the first person to, to give us a name, sure, whatever. Let's do that, Dilbert. Dilbert. Luke is named the Portly Hamster Dilbert! Okay, little chat, from now on, anywhere I go, you go too. What? <laughs> it appears that your way with animals has earned your new friend, Luke. I think so too, Professor. The hamster minigame is so cute. Use any items you can get hold of to help the sluggish hamster get back in shape. Items at your disposal are shown at the top of the touch screen. Pack items with the stylus to position them in the hamster's playground. The hamster notices any items within three three spaces of his position. He won't react to any items four ball spaces away, so really think about where you place items. Touch an item to see the properties it has, take advantage of the special properties of each item to maximize the hamster's workout. Place all items where you want them, and touch the exercise to get the hamster moving. Once the hamster interacts with an item, it disappears from the playground. His workout ends when all items are gone, or when he can't find the next item. Each time the hamster walks a number of steps listed as his goal, he'll get a little healthier. If you can get the hamster to his peak con physical condition, something good will happen. You will unlock an extra house in the extra section after the end of the game. We're not gonna get anywhere with just the apple yet, but uh, we, we will gain more items and then you have to place them in specific areas. So he's gonna work, work off those calories. Very fun. I wrote to MMA carrier featuring Dilbert. Let's go, Dilbert! The mm -hmm. board service may interest you in a refreshing beverage or scrumptious snack. Thank you, but I don't think we need any snacks right now. Of course you don't. And I put on my best smile for nothing. Most passengers eat in the dining car, so ritzy I can't say I blame them. Competition like that, it's hard to sell so much as a cup of tea. So bored. I've got a while until my shift finishes, so help me pass a little time with this puzzle, would you? Really? You think her face is scary? No. Here's a tasty puzzle for you. Can you move the pile of pancakes from the blue plate on the left to the red plate on the right? Wait though, it's not as easy as it sounds, you must follow these rules. You can only move one pancake at a time. You cannot place a pancake on top of another one that is smaller than itself. You can use the middle plate and move the pancakes as many times as you like. <clears throat> you can! Hmm. The first one is the easiest. That was almost too easy! Delicious! This puzzle is actually a variant of the famous Tower of Hanoi, a puzzle invented by a French mathematician all the way back in 1883. It has been used just about everywhere. With increasing difficulty depending on how many things you have to stack. Oh, 
Oh, check out the brain on you, kiddo. So listen, our next stop is in this stinky little two-cow village called Dropstone, right? There's like nothing there. I wish we could stop somewhere more exciting for a change. But I guess that's working a job for you. Sometimes you just have to deal with crippling boredom. Damn, girl. Good logic puzzle games like this in elementary school was based on Snow White. We're stacking dishes. Ooh. Snow White the fairy tale? French mathematician. Hi, what a lovely deck. Ah, this is the best. This breeze feels great. Indeed, and the scenery is simply breathtaking. Look, Luke, you can see a lake over there. The sky is so blue and just look at those trees fly by. Now that's what I call a view. All this talk of pristine scenery reminds me of a puzzle I once heard. Why don't you try it? Of course. Why don't I try it? The forest below contains four different types of trees. Use the status to divide the forest into four sections, each containing one of each type of tree. I I saw. Um. Technically, if you look at the crossover, I don't know if they ever said that the Professor Layton and Phoenix Wright crossover is canon, because if that is canon, technically it would have to take place in the real world. Seeing as Ace Attorney takes place in basically the real world, but on the other hand, there's some stuff where you're just like, it's a little off. It's always a little off from from how we we know the world. It's supposed to be using classrooms, and if we had other games, so that was based on fairy. Oh, interesting. It's like because the game is like, oh yeah, yeah, we're very realistic in what we do, blah blah blah. And on the other hand, you think to yourself, mm, some of this stuff smells like magic. But there's no magic. There's no magic. So can say that the story share the world. Yeah, but the thing is, Here though, goes. Professor Layton versus Ace Attorney had that was had them be easy. in the same place. They had the Ace Attorney characters coming to London, and then the story happened. So it's like. They, they did. They did they just use the plane. They did not cross over any funny world. Uh, worlds like uh, the, what's the word? Uh, parallel worlds. They just used the plane to fly to London. Take a moment to admire the gorgeous scenery. That's exactly it. Well done. Well, did you expect any less, Professor? <laughs> That's a nice idea. I almost forgot we're supposed to be searching for the Elysian box. Can't say I blame you, Luke, but the box that poor Andrew to his death. Come what may, I will solve this mystery. Of course. No magic to spring power? Yeah. But like, for real. Every time you think to yourself, oh my god, this cannot possibly explain. There has to be magic there. They come up with, with another, oh, actually, this was just made by someone who's really rich or really well versed in technology and rich every single time just to go it's not actually magic <laughs> i think we finally have a good grasp of this train's layout it's high time we begin our investigation problem okay professor let's get to it Chris and luke decide to begin their investigation of the train And by that, I mean we're gonna pick up every single hint coin we can. And also trash! Look at that, someone's left some rubbish on the deck here. Oh, sorry, rubbish. Trash is not... Oh, the red way. Some people have got no manners. Luke, a true gentleman cleans up after himself and others should the need arise. What do you say we take care of this mess? Uh-huh. Oh, goodness. Oh, no. <laughs> 
put the rubbish into the bin where it belongs. Move the blocks obstructing out your path and slide the pile of rubbish into the bin at the bottom of the screen. No, for sliding puzzle. <laughs> oh, for sliding puzzle. Eee. Eee. <sighs> no, hold on. That doesn't work out. Yes, <laughs> I do. It's the entire reason why I keep um, keep the cursor on, <laughs> so you can see it. You can get that. Are you not on the Discord? You should be. I think. <laughs> you can get it on the Discord. To test my theory. I uh, commissioned that sometime earlier this year. Leaves no puzzle it's unsolved. Super cute. <laughs> That's much better. Now don't forget, little belongs in a bin, not on the streets. There, now there's no little cluttering up that amazing view. Wonderful, isn't it? Keeping a place tidy really brightens it up. Very true. I cleaned up my room yesterday, a little bit at least, and I was like, this is nice. If only I would keep to this more often, because this is really nice. Hello. Ah, there's nothing like travel by rail to put a spring in your step. I couldn't agree more. And there's no better way to do it than on a train as fine as yours, Mr. Beluga. Hmm, so you know my name, do you? But of course, this train and its owner have quite a reputation in London. <laughs> You're just killing everyone off in your head, one by one. I've seen your face in the papers more than a few times. Ho oh, ho, is that so now? I'm sorry, uh, my friend. But I can't say I know you as well as you seem to know me. That's okay. The name is Herschel Leighton. I'm a professor of archaeology by trade, but a train enthusiast on the side. Mm. I've heard tales of this train's grandeur, so I decided it was time to experience it. First hand. Leighton, you're such a fucking... Well, isn't that something? It certainly is a pleasure to meet you, Mr. It's the first Leighton time I'm hearing that he's a trade enthusiast, like, g my good sir. <laughs> oh my, just look at how late it's gotten. I really have to run. Do enjoy your time aboard. Beluga, isn't that a whale? The beluga whale? That's what I keep thinking of every time I hear beluga. Gentleman, he's an enthusiast of the trains. Really? <laughs> Rubbish enthusiast. <laughs> Why don't we head back to the dining car now, Luke? I forgot quite an appetite. What is happening outside? Welcome back, sirs. My deepest apologies for the long wait. Let me show you to your seats. Great! It's finally time to eat! My sentiments, exactly. Ah, oh, look at all these choices! It's enough to make my hand spin. Oh, look over there. There's some sort of commotion going on. You call this... cuisine? I call it slop! Are you telling me you served it to our customers? I'll make up some more right away, sir. <laughs> The mess out of my sight this instant. But of course, I I'm very sorry to have displeased you. 
And another thing, look at these vases in the picture, talk about tacky, replace them immediately. Sir, that piece is a quintessential work by the royal renowned. I don't care if the Queen of England painted it, replace it and be quick about it. Of course, sir, I'll start making the arrangements immediately. No, they just put the entire sprite on the screen and don't care. Some of the characters are really, really fucking small. So it ends up looking like that, but he's not actually on the table. <laughs> Isn't that the same man we saw earlier? I don't think I've ever seen anyone so bossy and loud. <coughs> uh. I was, indeed, Mr. Benuga. It's a shame the picture wasn't to his taste. I think it's marvelous. Speaking of pictures, Luke, I have a most intriguing puzzle for you. Thank you. <coughs> the drawing below is made up of curved lines that intersect to create sections. If you want to color on the entire canvas so that no section touches a section of the same color, what's the fewest number of colors you can use? You can use the color as many times as you like, as long as it doesn't touch a section with the same color. Once you have your answer, touch input answer and enter the number of colors. Can I draw on this one? I can. Okay, so color one, color two, color two, color two, color one, color two. Mm. Color one, You spread the gym shows. <laughs> <laughs> three colors. You could use more, but you need at least Just three. Leave it to me. Piece of cake. That's right. You need three colors to fill in the drawing. Most of the drawing can be done with two colors, but one pesky area in the bottom left corner requires a third color to complete. Okay. Expertly solved, Luke. After a puzzle like that and a filling meal, I feel a rest is in order. Let's retire to our room. Sure. Hello there, sorry to interrupt your game, but there's something important you should know. As you progress through the story, some puzzles will disappear from their original locations. These puzzles are then moved to Granny Riddleton's shack, where they can be solved at any time. Here's the first set of puzzles to be sent to the shack. If no puzzles appear on the next screen, it means there are no unsolved puzzles to send right now. You're done! <laughs> Because I've already solved everything that I could. Thank you for your patronage, sirs. I hope our cuisine was to your liking. But oh, yes, the menu was excellent in both its variety and execution. You honor, sir. Professional waiters such as myself live for praise such as yours. Now then, shall I provide you with the bill? Oh, I do apologize, sirs, but I seem to have forgotten your order. Could you enlighten me? Um, yeah, sure. Luke, are you sure you can really eat all that? You put in quite an order there. No problem, Professor. I'll clean my plate and still have room for more. That's not one of the Professor's concern at Luke's order, as Luke's order costs twice what his own did. Below you can see all the items are to order along with their prices. Touch the prices of the items that Luke ordered. Oh, goodness. I need, I need, I need my trusty piece of paper. Oh, <coughs> and I also <coughs> need to be less sick. That would be lovely. The more kid looking plates. Ah, that's. Mm. 
Highly likely. Yeah, but... Also... Wait. I think I have this thing the wrong way around, do I? I do! Okay, new, new piece of paper for the second Layton game, because I still have the first one right here. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> I assume Leighton had the T. Whatever the fuck this is. Because it looks healthy and these sandwiches. So he would have... I think no, 35. You're falling asleep. Good night. <laughs> it's a rest. Um, that leaves Luke with the drink, the soup thing, and both the fish and chips, and the, I don't know, steak? And that's... Yeah, 35 and 70. Okay, so this one is Luke, this one is Luke, this one is Luke, and this one. This should be That's a lot. My man can eat. And there we have it. <laughs> Good work. If you calculate the total bill, you see that the meal cost 105. Now, in the total, Luke must have ordered 70 worth of food and Professor 35 worth. Once you've got those numbers, the rest is easy. Are you sure you didn't order too much? Nope, this stew is great and the steak is delicious too. <laughs> you need a shot and a bigger bro- Oh no! Did it rain? I'm sorry. <laughs> Goodness, you work at the bell with considerable ease. I must thank you for your assistance. Now as we have some time until our next destination, I invite you to sit back and enjoy the journey. That's very sweet. You know what I'm really fucking mad about? It is October. I did not get stung by a single mosquito the entirety of summer. I have three mosquito bites. I, I found one yesterday and now I have one in my face. I'm like, bruh, are you for real? Like, shouldn't you guys be dead already? Stupid mosquitoes. Bah. No doubt about it, the Monetary Express is the last word in luxury. Even the dishes are first rate. I'll say, look at this glass. Yes, the etching is quite impressive. Speaking of glasses, have you heard this one? Wait. The owner of a four-star restaurant assigns a young waiter to the task of stacking glasses in a decorative way. Eager to please, the waiter immediately draws five separate designs and shows them to the owner. The owner takes one glance at the designs and, with a look of irritation, turns to the boy and cries, This design is preposterous. What were you thinking? Which of the five designs is the owner talking about? Mm, this one. Because they're going to fall immediately if you try to stack them like that. Assuming you can even... That, that, wait, hold on, you can't even stack a glass like this. This one. Here goes. You can try. Layton's apprentice strikes again. Exactly right. The restaurant owner was talking about Sketch D. If you look closer, you can see that the first and second row of glasses couldn't possibly be arranged in a manner depicted. A simple 2D sketch didn't take into account the rim of the glass. Nicely done, Luke. Now let's move away from the glass shell, but he seems rather fragile. yo -ho. That was bad, even for Mr. Beluga. You mean he always blows up at you like that? Well, you know, me or someone else on the staff, the boss can be a very hard man to please. It's awful. You and the others shouldn't have to put up with him bullying you like that. Well, the boss does have a point. After all, he made his railway what it is today. He always says that a first-class train deserves a first-class atmosphere. 
I mean, even the plates we use in the dining car are custom made. The craftsmanship is amazing. Take a look at the fine detail on the bottom. Hmm? The plate in front of you bears a mug made of two egg we lateral triangles, one inside the other. Can you work out how many times bigger the large triangle is than the small one? Mm -hmm. Why does it think <laughs> it's a nine every time? This is a four! A four! <laughs> hmm. Let's see if this works. Layton's apprentice strikes again! Thank you for that idea time. <laughs> and the positive chat. Why does it always think my fours and nines? Hey, thank you for the pet. <sighs> like adopted again, can't go in it. I'm trying to write the full. I, I don't write a full like this in one go. I'm trying to write it like that because I, because I think it should recognize it better, but apparently not. It's not how I usually write a four. <laughs> Straight, if you measure the small triangles in what it is shown, it should only take a moment to realize that four small triangles would fit into the larger one. Gosh, you've got a knife for this kind of thing. Nice as you are, I'm sure Mr. Beluga will find a reason to complain about these plates too. I wouldn't be surprised. I suppose rich people can just afford to be picky. Maybe. Still not very nice for him to blow up in his uh, employee's face like that in front of customers. In my humble opinion. Now what do we have here? <clears throat> my boy, my sweet little boy, you've got to do something right this instant. Search the entire train. Madam, please calm down so I can understand the situation. Oh, it's back at me. I had no idea you were on board. Well, well, if it isn't Mr. Layton, what are the chances, eh? Well, enough small talk. I have other matters to attend to, namely a missing child. Seems this woman's child has gone off somewhere. I don't suppose you've seen him around. No, I don't believe I've seen any young boys. My little boy wandered off and he hasn't returned yet. I'm simply at my wits end worrying about it. Gentlemen, I demand that you drop whatever it is you're doing and help me find my boy. <sighs> She's been going on like this from the moment I walked in. I understand your concern, madam. My sister and I will be glad to aid in your search. We'll have the best chance of recovering your son if we start searching immediately. Are you still here? If you have time to stand around talking, hurry up and bring my boy back. It seems the only clues we have to go on are the shoe that the tiger left behind in his name, Tom. I've tried to squeeze more details out of the woman, but it's useless. She just keeps demanding I search the place. That's a very small foot! This is one of Tom's shoes. It's positively tiny, isn't it? Yes, I find it quite curious myself. Very puzzling indeed. I didn't think children with feet that size could even walk. Indeed. You got Tom's shoe! <laughs> We're riding on a monetary express, but Beth's little boy Tom manages to disappear. If the shoe he left behind is any indication, Tom must be a very young child. How could a child that small have wandered off to on his own? Tom is a damn dog, isn't he? Shh, shh, shh. I don't know what gave you that idea. Clearly, he's a little boy. I was certainly surprised to see you on board, Inspector. May I ask what brings you here? During an investigation, we stumbled upon the late doctor's diary. Its pages detailed the doctor's final days, which led me to this train. But since that investigation is none of your business, that's all I can tell you, Mr. Layton. Besides, finding a lost child is my top priority right now. With only a shoe and a name to go on, though, it's going to be an uphill struggle to find him. Luke and I would be glad to offer our assistance in the matter. 
Oh, I'm sure you would. I've heard about you, Leighton. You've got quite a reputation for poking your nose into other people's business. If you want it on my case, why not show me your famous powers of reduction by solving this puzzle? Oh! Sure. A woman in the shoe shop pays for a 30 pound pair of shoes with a 50 pound note. The salesman doesn't have enough change, so he goes to the shop next door to break the 50 pound note. He turns to his shop and gives the woman her change. A while later, the shopkeeper from next door storms into the shoe shop. Turns out that the note he gave her was a fake. The mortified shoe salesman gives the shopkeeper 50 pounds from the till to apologize. Neither the customer nor the shoes she took are found. In total, how much did the shoe shop lose? Sorry, what? Okay, hold on. A woman in a shoe shop pays for a $30 pair of shoes. Doesn't have a change, so he goes to the shop next door to pay. The shop and it's not a change. Turns out the shoe shop turns out the note he gave her was a fake. Oh no. So he gets a fake 50, and he gives the fake 50 to his neighbor. to break it down. No, hold on. He gets a fake 50. He goes to break down the fake 50 with his neighbor. If the woman had changed, but he gives away 20. But the 50 were fake, so he takes out 50 from his own till. Give to her again. No, 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 hold on. We get a fake 50 and we go to exchange it. So we get a real 50. But since we have to give her, like, we find out it's a fake, we give her back 50 from our place. So those two cancel each other. Like, we, we neither gain nor lose any for those. What we end up losing, though, is the 30 that the shoes originally cost and a 20 we give her in change because that was the real money. No, no, no. Double. Yeah, thir the shoes cost 30 plus the 20 change we gave her. <clears throat> and we get 50 from our neighbor? Because we give her the, the fake money, so we get 50. Those are real 50 we get, but since we, we find out, oh, okay, uh, the, the 50 we gave her were fake, we have to give her real 50, so the, the 50 we gain from her, we also give back. So that cancels each other. So in the end, what he ends up losing is only the, the 50 for the shoes. The original 50, these here. We lose 50. 50. I'm right. Consider this puzzle solved. See? A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. The shoes the customer made off with cost 30, and a change of salesman gave her customer another 20, bringing his total losses to 50. 
The salesman received 50 of real money in exchange for the fake note from the shopkeeper next door and then gave her 50 back when she discovered the note he gave her was fake. These last two transactions cancel each other out. Hmm. Seems your fame is entirely undeserved. Nevertheless, this is my case, so I'll be searching for Tom alone. But at your own search if you like, but don't get your hopes up. Yeah, sure, I'll be. I'm, I'm gonna get her. I'm gonna help her. Hello. Excuse me, madam, have you seen a small boy wandering around here? He would be missing a shoe. No, I can say that I have. There's no way to forget seeing a boy with only one shoe. I say, well, thank you very Oh, but what on a topic of shoes? Maybe you could help me with a little predicament of my own. Of course. <laughs> Here's a maze that's made up of shoes. Your task is to travel from the start point to the goal. You may only travel horizontally or vertically in one space at a time, and you must alternate between left and right shoes every step. Also, you may not pass through any of the walls in the maze. So e ugh, through each space one at a time to... Touch each space one at a time to highlight the path you want to take. If you make a misstep, you can deselect that space by touching it again. Okay. We start off with the left foot. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. I like this one where you're like, okay, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. But then you immediately get stuck up here. I also like that I said it in a completely wrong order. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Right, left, right. But then you're stuck here. I've played these games a lot. <laughs> huh. Some of them Wonderful. you just remember in the back of your brain somewhere. You're like, oh yeah, 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 I've done this before. Good job, that was some fancy footwork. And then others I get stuck on completely, no matter how many times I do them, so. Blow me down, you got quite the brainy bumps underneath that hat. That's... What the fuck? Okay. Oh man, I'm dark food. What's the matter, mister? Oh, hey! Okay, so I snuck into my uncle's room and borrowed his camera, right? Thing is, and I dropped it. And you're trying to find all the pieces for like an hour, but I've only found one. That's quite the predicament. Yeah, and if word gets about his wrecked camera, I'm gonna catch major flack from the boss man. Oh, brain flashing coming! Dig this! I'm going to give you this busted hunk of junk! You do with it what you want, just get rid of the thing, will ya? Okay, catch you on the flip side. What? Hey, come back here! Camera minigame has been added to the trunk. You got a squarish part. Use it to rebuild the camera in the professor's trunk. Camera option has been added to the trunk. Reassemble the broken parts of the camera there. To access it, touch the trunk. I can me 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 me. I wonder what kind of luxuries they have in that carriage. Hold it right there, man! Semi Thunder says entrance to this carriage is for VIPs only, capiche? Now I know you'd like to sneak a peek, but the whole carriage's been bought, so that's a no-go. People who reserve rooms in this carriage must be super rich mega tycoons. Indeed. I wonder what it must be like to have that much space to yourself on a train of this calibre. Well, for now I suppose you just have to keep wondering, eh, Professor? <laughs> yes, quite. <laughs> Ooh. I know you're itching to see what's behind that door, but you can't go backstage without a pass. What if we just took a really quick peek? No, can do it, little guy. You need a ticket to do that. I'll tell you what, if you pull Sammy Thunder as a puzzle, it'll take your mind off that door. Check it. Check it. A number of people are on a train. At the first station, a train pulls in to one sixth of the people on board get off. At the next station, one fifth of the three remaining passengers get off. This pattern continues so that at the next station one fourth get off, then one third, and then one half. Then at the final station, all remaining passengers get off the train. Assuming no one got on the train during the journey, what is the lowest number of people who could have been on the train when it set out? 
this. Six, and then only one person gets off each station. So six people, one person gets off, five people left, one person gets off, four people left. Don't try to math with me, brain. Game. Just leave it to me. Blah. Legends Apprentice strikes again. Who would? If you assume the train started out with six passengers, then only one person would have would have to get off at each station. This puzzle can be really tough if you don't remember to reduce the number of people remaining on a train at each station along the way. This puzzle can also be really tough if you think to yourself, wait, it only has 20 picarats, it cannot, it cannot be that hard to do. Don't think too complicated. And that's how that one goes. Well, now the show's over, so move it, will it? If the folks in here find out the passengers hanging around outside the door, I'm gonna get a new phone. Sure, okay, I'll go. I have other puzzles to collect. Yes, something's falling behind here. Oh. A little hat! It appears to be a cap of some sort, but I don't think I can reach it from here. Maybe the cap belongs to Tom. We certainly should have shouldn't rule out the possibility. Oh hey, since we're on the subject of caps, have you ever heard this one, Professor? Teacher, everyone in the class closed their eyes. While none of the students were looking, she slipped caps under their hats and said, Okay, everyone open your eyes and look at your friend's caps. Whoever sees four more people wearing red caps gets a red balloon, and whoever doesn't gets a blue balloon. In a class of ten children, only some got a red balloon, but how many? Sorry, what? Whoever sees four or more people wearing red caps gets a red balloon, whoever doesn't gets a blue balloon. Ten children has to be an uneven number, otherwise it doesn't work out. Four people or more wearing red caps. Four people or more means five, at least five. But if it was five, it wouldn't work out because if five of them are wearing a red cap. Mm. Ten children. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten. So if this kid is wearing a red and sees four other people wearing red. Four. And they themselves. Everyone else will be seen. There has to be more than five. I don't like math. Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. That's right. We know only some children got red balloons. If five or more children are wearing a red cap, every child in the class would see at least four red caps and get a red balloon, so it must be fewer than five. Oh, the other way around. Three or fewer children were, were wearing red caps, no one would see four red caps. Therefore, four children must have had red caps, meaning that the other six children receive red balloon. Oh, uh, I thought the- oh my god, I thought of this the wrong way. But if you already- if you're wearing red, it doesn't- oh. I was thinking, what if you are also wearing red? You don't see yourself wearing red, but you see everyone else wearing red. 
Wish I could stun you with that one. Better luck next time, Luke. For now, we better return to searching for the lost little boy. Alright, yep. Better get back to that. Now that you mention it, how do you suppose Tom managed to warm his way into such a tight space? Mm, good question. Very good question. I... I like that she's not even searching for Tom herself, like... Take a look at this, Professor. It's... Food scraps, if I'm not mistaken. Do you suppose Tom wandered into the kitchen to grab something to eat? Well, it is possible, though if that's the case, the child certainly is lacking in the madness department. <laughs> oh, the flower vase looks like it cost a pretty penny. Lovely decorations really do wonders for a room, don't they? Doubly so in the case of flowers. Tell me, Luke, what do you think of flowers like these? Oh, there's something on the flowery side. Of the three pictures labeled A, B, and C, one is actually the same as the picture on the far left. However, the image on the far left has had its contents flipped left to right and its colors inverted and changed to black and white. Of A, B, and C, which picture is the same as the black and white picture on the far left? I'm so confused. What's the difference between A and B? Are those not the same? They look the same. Like, C is different because this thing is different. There's a small dot missing in B, really? Like, they look the absolute same to me right now. I mean, it doesn't really matter if these are... I need to know what fits here. Oh, this one! Oh my god, yeah. Okay, there's a dot here that is not there, so it's A. But what the heck? Just leave it to me! <sighs> I didn't even see that! Apprentice strikes again. That's right, picture is the same as the one on the far left. As shown above, pictures B and C have slight variations. Oh, but extremely slight. Holy shit. Nice job, but not all puzzles are such a breeze. Anyway, let's keep moving for now. Goodness gracious. Oh. Oh. Is everything alright, miss? I'm fine, thank you. Excuse me. So, did she seem familiar to you at all, Professor? Mm, yes, now that you mention it, something about her did seem rather familiar, as you say. Haha, <laughs> yeah, hmm, gee, Good day, sir. Is my interest in a frugal crushing beverage or a scrumptious snack? Sorry, miss, but we are currently searching for a small child. Have you seen a young boy wandering around by himself in this carriage? A little boy, eh? No, sorry, mister, but that doesn't ring any bells. Oh, oh, what happened? Did he get lost on a train? Yes, unfortunately, we haven't been able to track down the missing cop. You know, I probably shouldn't start vicious rumors, but... Oh, I'll have nothing better to do. <laughs> I probably shouldn't, but I've got nothing better to do with this is you. Girl, hello? Did you know that there's a weird old woman staying in this carriage? What if she kidnapped a little one and has him stowed away in a room? I know it's probably not true, but what it is? She's just so bizarre that I can't have wondering. But I could get in trouble for speaking ill of passengers. Just forget I said anything, okay? Strange old woman, eh? I wonder who she could be talking about. Your guess is as good as mine, Luke, but it certainly does make one wonder. Wonder no more! Hello there, sunny boys. Ever get all knock-kneed and goose from terrifyingly hard puzzles? Let me not feel the beautiful and clairvoyant Granny Riddleton stands before you, ready to help. Just as I thought, who else could this tiny house belong to? Hey, wait a second, what are you doing here anyway? They heard of me, eh, shorty? Good to know I'm still here with the youngins. <laughs> what do you mean? Of course I've heard of you, we've met before, remember? 
Mm, no, I suspect you got the wrong granny boy. Never seen you before in my life. Are you here now? So that means you want to hear my spiel, right? Uh, not really. Oh, no need to be so modest. Allow me to thank you for visiting me by bestowing a little tidbit of information on you. My specialty, you see, is puzzles. Puzzles people forget about. Puzzles people miss. Surely you boys have had a few of those, eh? Nope. No need to turn right, it happens to the best of puzzlers. What I do, you see, is I take those cool lost little puzzles and invite them to come and stay with me. I imagine any puzzle you left behind you found the way to my shack as well if you want to say hello. If the shack is empty, then you just have to get out there and find some more puzzles. And why don't you take a peek inside to see what's there? There's absolutely nothing in there because I haven't missed out on any puzzles yet. Wow! Thank you, ma'am. Hi! Oh, passenger, sorry sir, I didn't mean to get in the way of you using your deck. No trouble at all, my good man. I take it you're not a passenger then? Nah, I'm just a mechanic, innit? Come along for the ride in case something goes belly up. As you can see, she's sound as a pound, makes my job that easy. In fact, I've got so much free time lately I made up a puzzle all by myself. About it then. Okay. After years of bad business, a zoo has finally run out of money to buy food for its animals. Bellies rumbling from days with no food, the animals make a plan to escape the zoo. After praising open the rusty bars on their cages, all the animals attempt to find a way through the maze-like path of the zoo to the exit. Touch a picture of each animal you think made it safely out of the zoo and touch submit to answer. Just remember, animals show the true colors in the wild. <sighs> okay. Where are you going? Nowhere. Right. Uh, you're just going straight to the alligator? Or nowhere. Good. Which also means you're just going straight to... Do you have anywhere else to go? No. Neither of you are gonna go anywhere. What are you... You are also going nowhere? You are going straight to the lion? That's definitely going to help you out. Um, nowhere. There's wood go outside, but you're going to come across the lion. I don't think the lion is gonna keep you alive, so... Hmm? Uh, you get nowhere, you get nowhere, you get absolutely... Nowhere. So the lion then. This should do Poor rabbit. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Trap thinking. The only animal that will safely escape to freedom is the lion. While well, both the rabbit and the lion will make it as far as the path to the exit, the second the lion spots the rabbit, he's guaranteed to eat it. Nature, red in tooth and claw. Jesus Christ, game. Blimey, you didn't have polish that one off quickly. It's back to your drawing mode for me. It was a good puzzle, my man. Try making another one sometime. Hello. Excuse me, sir. Have you seen a little boy with a missing shoe crawling around? No, I don't believe so. But come to think of it, a couple who were just here were talking about a child. Interesting. Do you have any ideas to where we might find this couple now, my good man? I believe they're staying in the fourth carriage, sir. May I suggest paying them a visit? A wonderful suggestion. Thank you for your assistance. Come along now, Luke. Let's drop in on a couple in the fourth carriage. Fourth carriage. Whoa, the young fellow, you're in the wrong room. My wife and I are staying here. We're dreadfully sorry to intrude, sir, but we're searching for a lost little one. If you happen to see or hear anything pertaining to this. Oh, sweet dear, do we believe they might be talking about the darn and cutie pie that just passed by, remember? Ah, uh, yes, yes, he was a cute one. He was small and very clever looking, I'd say. So you did see Tom, then? He's been missing a while now. Eh? I didn't know whether he was a girl or a boy, truth be told. Tom's a right nice name, though. 
Pish posh dear, I'm glad my best tea said that it was a girl who passed by our room. Yes, now that you mentioned it, I had a feeling that the scam might have been a girl. Until you flip the thing on its back and get a good long look, you never can be sure, can you? No more confuddle. I don't have to find any idea who we're talking about anymore. What? <laughs> what? I hate to say it, but it looks like this hardly just turned cold, Professor. On the contrary, Luke, we may have just stumbled onto some extremely valuable information. What do you mean, Professor? You'll see. First, let's return to the scene of Tom's disappearance. <laughs> they're both kind of right, because <laughs> I know exactly what they're talking about. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more help to you. It was nice talking with you, though. Let me give you a puzzle for the rope. Eight people playing a communication game. In this game, one player has to get the message across to seven other people. It takes one minute to pass along the message, and each time the message is spoken, it can only have one recipient. Using these rules, what's the shortest amount of time required for the message to pass to all seven of the players? Ooh, okay. Okay, so one per- how many people? Seven. One person passes on the message to, s to someone, takes one minute. This one person can pass it on to someone else, also takes a minute again. Uh, but in that same time, this person can pass on another message, and this person can also pass on a message again. Pass on a message again. Third person. Three minutes? Three minutes? How many people do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three minutes! Three minutes to pass it on to all seven people. Nothing, nothing in the text says that only, like, each person can only pass on to the next one. It only says that the message has only one recipient. To test my theory. Nice. Huh. Wonderful. Very nice. If the original messenger spreads the word as shown above, the game can be completed in three minutes. During that time, the original messenger can tell three people the message, and the people who hear the message within the first two minutes can go on to become messengers themselves. When an emergency arises, information network structured in the above fashion can help get the word out fast. Now you just gotta have to hope that everyone who passes on the message actually passes on the right message and it doesn't get completely destroyed like it usually does. Yes sir, that's the answer. Pay off sharp ones, the two of you, I'm downright impressed. Still don't get your hopes up about finding a little boy, he could be anywhere. Goodness, listen to my husband, sometimes he can be a little negative without realizing it. I for one am cheering for you, best of luck finding that little one. Thank you. Good morning! Hi! <laughs> Inspector, tell me, are you any closer to uncovering the whereabouts of that missing child? So two are still flipping furniture trying to find a tiger, are you? Hmm? Do you mean to say that the child has been found? No, no, not at all. What I'm saying is that the child is no longer on this train. I passed everyone on board, but no one gave me an answer that suggested they seemed to laugh. This led me to the conclusion that the poor child either got off the train or fell off it. Fell off? Yes, it's entirely plausible given the way children love to run amok. When you combine that with the oversized hats, you've got yourself a recipe for disaster. I'll contact the railway police at the next station, so feel free to give up on your search. Just a moment, Inspector. The windows on this train are very high, and every exit is manned. Given the situation, don't you think it's, un highly, it's unlikely a child could have made it off the train unnoticed? Alright, I'll humor you. So tell me, like, where do you think this elusive ankle biter got off to? That I can't say, but something tells me that we, we may have been barking up the wrong tree. There's just no reasoning with you. Fine, keep lying, detective. Nothing will come of it, I'll tell you. Yeah! Uh-huh! Nothing will come of it! Thank you for the pick tail and the pack button. <laughs> Surely nothing will come of it. We slept from one to seven. Oh god. Are you okay? Oh. 
Dun dun! Hmm. What's on your mind, my boy? You look distracted. It's hard to put my finger on why, but I feel like someone has been watching us for a while. You too? I've been feeling that same sensation myself. Do you think that someone might be tailing us? It's certainly possible. Keep an eye out for anything unusual. Aww. Huh? Well, I hope you feel better soon. This looks like one of Tom's shoes, doesn't it, Professor? It certainly does. This is strange, though. It's for the same foot as the shoe the inspector gave us earlier. So it is. Aha! So then Tom must be... Oh, <laughs> Luke, I do believe you've both made a faulty assumption. Hmm? What exactly do you mean? Recall for a moment the events as they have unfolded thus far. Ah, uh, let's see. First, the tiny shoe we found was on the floor. That's right, a shoe small enough for a baby. And then there was a cap we found in the kitchen, but it was lodged in such a tiny corner, I don't know how Tom could have squeezed in there. Correct, in order to get back there, Tom would have to be no more than half your size. I don't think I've seen any boy smaller than myself on a train now that you mention it. That was my impression as well, which is why I began to consider a different line of thought. Luke, what if you and I have already seen Tom about and didn't even know it? You see, all the while we've been searching for Tom, we've assumed that he's a small child. But what if that assumption proves false? What if you've been wrong from the start? I think I see what you're getting at, Professor. The second shoe was a left shoe, identical in every way to the shoe the inspector gave us. If that strange pair of shoes means what I think it does, then our friend Tom is... Not a human child! Professor Layton has a feeling that Tom may not be the kind of boy he was assumed to be. Move the l shaped pieces around and arrange them into a... A... plus shape in the middle of the board to reveal Tom's true identity. It's a dog! Tom... Seems to be a dog. A little woofer. A little woofy boy. Right then, into a plus shape. Oh, except it needs to be right here, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. The woofer is small enough. Does it become a subwoofer? Maybe. Piece of cake. Show oh, we will go. The work. Tom is a dog. Do you recall the girl we saw holding a small dog? I suspect that small dog was our friend Tom. So if we check down a girl, we find Tom. Yeah. Rose and Luke decide to search for the young woman seen holding a little dog. Well, if it isn't the famous Mr. Layton dashing around like he knows something I don't. I was just about to head over to Babette's and inform her that her child is no longer aboard the train. Inspector, we are mere moments away from discovering Tom's location. Could I ask you to give us just a while longer to ponder on the situation? Still, I want to face the truth, eh, Layton? Fine, since you're so intent on it, and seeing as Babette is snapping right now, I'll wait a little longer. The moment she wakes up, though, I'm taking my findings to her, got it? If you want to prove yourself right, bring the boy back before that. Understood. I plan to do just that, Inspector. We better find the girl with the dog as quickly as we can, Professor. Mm hmm. I'm playing a certain game recently, you want to as well? A certain game? The only game I've seen everyone in the mother play recently has been Baldur's Gate. Are you talking about Baldur's Gate or are you talking about a different game? Look at that! You've managed to solve at least 12 puzzles! I applaud you! Heartily! I can see I could dislike it a couple of ardent ar ar puzzle solvers like yourself. Let's be bulls, eh? I solved double that, my good man. And I'm gonna solve one more right now. Mm -hmm. What about 
Pillow? No. This pillow is going to keep me up all night. Oh, sorry about that. Now, what's with you two? What can I do for you? I'm looking for a young lady with a small dog. Have you seen anyone fitting the description? Yeah, I remember seeing someone like that pass by. I think she was heading to the back of the train. Thank you very much. We'll just be on our way. Now hold it right there, Top Hat. See how it is? Get all grousy to answer your question and then scoot off without a word. I told you what you wanted to know, so the way I see it, you should at least lend me a, lend me a hand. I'm terribly sorry, sir. I didn't realize you quite our help. How may we be of service? Friend gave me this puzzle because I love art, but maybe you have better luck with it than I've had. Fancy giving it a go. Thank you. I'll save myself after I solve this puzzle. Go to the stream time. Talking about the other game everyone among us has been playing, Cyberpunk, and the research on Phantom Liberty. I have pfft, no idea. I know nothing about Cyberpunk, so I didn't realize everyone and the mother was playing it again. A man in a train shows you a picture he's painted. Let's say this picture is a total area of 10. Can you work out how much of it is made up of clouds compared to the area that's made up of sky? Don't think you need to guess the answer. There's a definite method you can use to work this out. How much of the area is sky and how much is cloud? <laughs> sky. Also sky. This is an inversion of these. Like, that looks the same. So it's close enough. Yeah, the same. And these. And these. They're all the same, except there's two more sky pieces. Wait, what, what do they want? How much of the area is sky? How much is sky? Oh, okay. Six and four. Yeah. And now to test my theory. <laughs> and there we have it. Now we have it. Nice job. The key is to use the screws on the frame to divide the picture. Once you do that, it should be clear that B and F, C and I, D and G, and E and H are all simply pairs of the same drawings with the colors reversed. This means that in these eight areas, there are four squares worth of cloud and four sky. The remaining two squares, A and J, are completely blue, so the totals are six squares of sky and four squares of cloud. Ah, so that's how you do it. You've got quite a hand on your shoulders, don't you? Now, it's what a girl you are asking about. She's probably on the observation deck behind me. You felt very smart about the clouds when I was little. It's a really good one. Look at the pic big picture. Oh, sorry. Does it seem as obvious? But once you, once you um, like divide it like that, it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> these look the same. Hmm. Gee, I wonder who this mystery girl could be. Excuse me. Yes, I had the sneaking suspicion that it was you who was tailing us. Flora, what are you doing here? Well, you left me behind. Sorry, it's just. Well, you see, I just didn't want to be all alone again. Hmm. Man goes to adopt a child, but then leaves her behind most of the time. What lies ahead could be dangerous. Who cares? Huh? That's why you'll have to be extra careful. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> how did she get on this train in the first place? Like, she had a ticket, yes, but how did she get the ticket? <laughs> Flora kind of adopted herself for <laughs> That's true. That's true, but still. I hate that she gets left behind so often. What was the dog we saw earlier? Quick, grab him! 
I think we were chasing after that dog all along. <laughs> right, you are, Luke. Now let's get him back to his owner. Um, do you mind if I tag along with you? Of course not. Come along now. Laura is now traveling with you. Check was traveling with you on the top screen. Also traveling with us. Hello. That's a miracle. You're right, my sweet little Tommy. Well, I've missed you so, my baby, my boy. This is Tom. We were under the impression that we were searching for a boy, not a mother with a fancy haircut. How dare you compare my darling Tom against to some common street mongrel? Lost dogs are no matter for Scotland Yard. Next time he goes missing, find him yourself. Blimey, some fools have an ounce of sense. Come on, Barton, we've got real cases to solve. Uh, y yes, sir, Inspector. Don't you walk away from me? I want to have a word with you about your atrocious manners. Yes, Ma'am, your manners are not better than his in any sense of the word. Enough of that. We'll come back, sweetie. Why did my little Tommykins run after today? Such a darling that I feared someone might have kidnapped him and held him for ransom. Uh, maybe we should keep Flora's involvement in Tom's disappearance to ourselves. Good idea, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe a reward is in order. Here, I know it's quite <laughs> generous, but I insist. You got a new hamster toy. I hear we were making a stop in a quaint village by the name of Dropstone. How much longer until we get there, Professor? I'm not entirely sure. Why don't we rest until we get there? That should make the time pass faster. Ta-da! We haven't even found half the mysteries yet, and we already cleared one of them. Turns out that Tom isn't a child as we originally thought, but rather Babette's pet dog. It would seem that Babette's affection for Tom is so deep that she considers him to be much more than just a pet. Which is valid. Mm. Mm. I say, Flora, where have you been hiding all this time? Well, until I found that little dog, I've just been relaxing in my room. Really? You've got your own room? Sure I do, it's the middle one in the third carriage. Wow, you do know that's a room right next to ours, don't you? <laughs> you were just a wall away from us and I never so much as suspected you were there. It would seem that my powers of observation are rather rusty. Ooh. My word, why is the train stopped? What's going on? Some of you don't, what did you do this time? Hey boss man, just chill out. There's a broken train, like, just sitting on the track. Until we can move that thing out of our way, we're not going anywhere, man. Then get your rear gear and move it now. I won't have your laziness tarnishing the monetary brand. The trains are heavy, man. How am I supposed to move it? I will not hear excuses, especially from a labor conductor like you who barely owns his key. Okay, all you do is just get it done. Hey, okay, I'll give it a shot. Just turn it down a notch, uncle. Uncle? I might be your uncle, but I'm also president of this railway and I demand you address me as such. Hey, alright, sure, whatever you say, your majesty. <laughs> what a lovely man to have to interact with, right? What seems to be the problem here? Oh, sorry, Mr. Passenger. See, there's this gigantic of freight train parked on the tracks and it's blocking our way. Doing the tracks is gonna take some time, so uh, sit back with something fizzy and wait. I see. Can I lend you a hand? For real? Oh yeah, that'd be way helpful. You think you can find a way to move the train blocking the tracks so we can, like, get moving? Step aside now, we're not going anywhere until the train moves off the track. Okay. Give me a puzzle then. I'll solve it. Until we get this train out of the way, the Monetary Express ain't going nowhere. Yeah, good thing there's a puzzle solution to it. 
Swap the positions of the two trains along the tracks. Move the carriages one at a time. Make sure that the numbers by the side of the track match the numbers on each carry. Fuck yeah. Okay. gonna get a little harder to get the other numbers out of here. We also still. Oh wait, no, never mind. It's easy. Two. Imagine you're just gonna play God and this move the carriages the around like this. That's totally how it works in real life. And there we have it. Now hurry back to the train, it's behind schedule as it is. Hopefully we should now be able to continue on our journey. Looks like we're good to go, give me just a second, we'll be up and running again. Sure. Finally moving again. Shouldn't be too much longer before we arrive in Dropstone. I wonder if I find any useful information there. I hope so. You got a round part! Hi, Dolly! This is your favorite? <laughs> How are you? My favorite is the third one. <laughs> You good? Glad to hear it. You forgot how cute it is. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. See, if you forget and then you come back, you can always see again for the first time how cute it is. <laughs> Open, yeah, like. There's just something, something about Pandora's box that makes it so... I have to admit though, I just haven't played the other three as much to actually call them my favorites. The third one I've just played so many times. Things looking pretty trash, so we're stopping here for repairs. We've got at least three hours till we'll be ready to roll, so why don't we catch the local sites? A capital idea. Besides, who knows what information we might stumble upon in the village. First, Luke and Flora decided to take in the sights around Dropstone. Sounds like a grand idea. A capital idea sounds weird. I don't know. I guess that's a saying. I'm telling you, man, the sleepy little farming place is like the chillest place on Earth. Well, I mean, the boss is wandering around the village and so is an inspector too. The village is celebrating its 50th anniversary right now, so I bet there's tons of stuff to do. If I weren't stuck working, I'd definitely go check it out myself. So the village was founded only 50 years ago. That's quite young for a settlement in these parts. And it's so peaceful here that I really can't believe we'll find any clues about the Elysian box. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure of that, Luke. Remember, one of the first rules of puzzle solving is that the answer is often in the unlikeliest places. Right, as always, Professor. I'll be sure to keep my eyes peeled for clues. Ah, uh, yeah. I have played all of them before. Some of them more often than the others, though. As in, the first three several times. <clears throat> the other three, like, ones. When they came out. So, once we actually get to those games, I'm gonna be like, I don't remember anything in here. <laughs> Look at this poster, Professor. Yes, yes, it's very lovely, Luke. Oh, but there's something quite odd about the picture. Huh? What do you mean, Professor? Dramatic farewell. You have 100 percent Yeah, me too, me too. I've played them to 100 percent I have played them to 100 percent I've also played Catriel to 100 percent I've played uh Leighton Myst like Mystery Brothers to 100 percent Looking forward to me about Sting Boys. <laughs> 
hope it comes out sometime early next year. Like, I want it. I want it. <laughs> Train station is on an especially good place for dramatic farewells, aren't they? Below is a painting of a man and woman bidding each other a tearful goodbye. Somewhere within this painting, have is a single unrealistic detail. Find and circle that detail. Oh no, no, I still haven't checked out the actual page for the new game. How does this window open? This game doesn't like my circles. To be fair, they're not very pretty circles. Hmm. God damn it! Let's see if this works. Legacy at the back is loaded. Azra Legacy was a trip and a half. And to this day, like, because I've only played it the one time, I, I desperately need to replay it because what the fuck even happened in that one? Like, don't tell me right now. We're gonna get there. Again, but what the fuck? <laughs> well, spot it! Where the man in the painting to open the window shine above, the frame would go through the room of the rain. These days, most trains have windows that only open partially. Of course, thanks to modern air conditioning, a good number of trains have been fitted with windows that don't open at all. I knew there was something strange about the picture. The fact that, you know, the entire second trilogy plays, takes place before all of these games makes it so much funnier when you know the stuff that they wrote afterwards. But having it take place before all this, you're like, honestly, what they're experiencing in the first two games, I'd argue, is not even that crazy. <laughs> Consider what happens in five and six. But okay. Well, Mr. Layton, are you enjoying your time here in Dropstone? So delightful. Every once in a while it's nice to leave the city and enjoy the countryside. The yeah, air's so fresh and clean, it must be nice to live here all the time. I'm so jealous. And so you should be, young man. There's something about this place that makes you feel like a new man. And with the village celebrating its 50th anniversary today, our timing couldn't be better. Come to think of it, your monetary express turned 50 this year, didn't it? <laughs> Quite a coincidence. Oh, dolly dolly. Please be careful with like, I know you're not outright spoiling anything, but mm. <laughs> I know what you're talking about, but <laughs> six or some holes moving castle levels or what the fuck in this world, reasonably normal. So yeah, right? Like, I feel like they, they kind of build up on the the whole it's not it's like i guess it's realistic if you have enough money somewhat but also what six is a an experience and then two is just like oh yay we're on a little train on a funny train ride <laughs> many many years ago actually speaking of this call uh, many many years ago i saw an edit um to uh, to that one song that i can never i don't actually know where it's originally from the, oh. and I've, i to just it was like a 20 second thing it was really short and i have never been able to find it again it makes me so mad because it was really well made with the like five scenes we have of him animated <laughs> Follow, follow, come in. I'm so mad. Now I want to rewatch the movie for the fiftieth time. <laughs> six is now <laughs> six is not realistic. It's just fair. Indeed, uh, yes, indeed, it is. Sheer coincidence, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Still, it could have been fun to have a double anniversary celebration here at the festival. Well, we already have a grand 50th anniversary celebration planned at an exclusive venue in London. 
Is that so? Well, I'm sure your party will be on par with the excellence of your train. It will. And on that note, I'm afraid I'll have to excuse myself. Good day to you, Mr. Layton. Good day to you, Mr. Beluga. It's already a year since she passed away. Time truly does just fly by. Gee. What do you think he was talking about, Professor? I haven't the slightest idea, Luke. <clears throat> yeah, sheer coincidence that it's 50 years, right? <clears throat> clearly, clearly, I just came up with the idea of making my own train. Right then. <clears throat> So, who do we have here? Visitors from out of town. Indeed we are. We are travelling on a monetary express, but we stopped here for repairs. If you're here for repairs, there's only one place you could be headed, am I right? Only one place we could be headed? What do you mean, sir? Hmm? Oh, uh, I was just thinking out loud. You're just talking to myself. Forget about it. Here, did you notice the festival that's going on today here in Dropstown? Today marks the 50th year since the founding of our village. Make sure you get in on the fun. <laughs> I love this game for a lot of what's happening. Can you really tell us whether it really is a perfect day for a festival? The sunshine has been in such a good mood, I'm gonna go ahead and tell your puzzle I've tucked away. Oh, yay! <laughs> cube parts. You know four shapes. The three of the shapes form a whole cube when fitted together with an identical shape. However, one shape below is different in this regard and doesn't form a cube when joined with another identical shape. Circle the odd shape out from choices A to D below. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do they not have my circles? This what is it? Trick. Every single circle I've drawn in this game so far and was like, oh, please redraw. Damn it. That's right. C will not form a cube when joined with another identical shape. Some areas of the shape are just a little too complex to fit together neatly. So, with just a few alterations, you could probably change the shape into something that works, don't you think? Mm -mm. Crepes, you just breezed through my best puzzle. I didn't see that coming. Oh, we're talking puzzles. Have you ever heard about that mysterious puzzle collecting lady? Here she gathers and stores all the lost puzzles of the world. How does she do it? How she does it is a conundrum wrapped in an enigma of mystery. You know, a mystenigdrum. A mystenigdrum. Jesus Christ, my man. Would, you would I like some hilarious whiplash? Of course. Would I like to talk today? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at all the stuff there's to do. I've never been to a festival before. It's wonderful. That's right, Flora. I'd forgotten how you grew up in that one little village. Well, now's your chance to make up for last time. Let's explore. Yes, let's. Where should we go first? Oh, let's go look at that booth over there. I want to see what they've got. Wait for me. You two watch where you're running or you're liable to crash into some... Yeah! Uh-huh! Mm, yeah, I saw the notification earlier. I was like, oh, you can make horror games in RPG Maker? I'm like, my good sir, is that a joke? Can you ask him? Because I can't go over there right now. Can you ask him? Like, if that was a joke or if he's legitimately never played an RPG Maker horror game before. <laughs> There's so many things to buy. Yes, but I want the hint coin. It's not a joke. You're telling me he's never played any RPG Maker games before? What the fuck? Well, he got a gat on that. Matt's father is a lovely gang. Also the, the like newer version that was reworked is uh, very good. Then please tell him that he's gotten good taste. Good choice for his first RPG Maker horror game. Then. Look at all the fruits and veg on this cart. Already belongs to the person running that little stand. Oh, but it looks like one of the wheels is dented. That must make it difficult to move. Yeah, I bet it's a real pain. 
Oh, but you know, that reminds me of a puzzle about a dented wheel. Flora fits right in. Have I played Skyrim? You promise this is relevant? I have. Uh, I have played Skyrim once in my life. Yes, I own a game. Um, and when I played it, first off, I immediately ran in the wrong direction from where you're supposed to go. And then when I actually found my way over to the first village you're supposed to arrive at, I must have angered one of the, I guess, chickens, animals, whatever. I must have accidentally hit one of them. Um, and then the entire village came to kill me and then I rage quit the game and I haven't touched it since. And that was like in 2000, long time ago, hold on. Else, uh, the last time I have played Skyrim was on March 29th in 2016. <laughs> And I played it for a total of 86 minutes. Ooh, nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna hope to check that out then. Also, you you're very much free to name job actually in this particular case. Penalty will mean nothing to you then. Oh, oh please tell me anyway. Maybe I know it. I, I knew I know a few things about Skyrim despite not having played it. It's fine. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you talk him into a playing Eve then. At some point. Force of Dursling Rain, I've never actually played myself. So I, I still have to... I only know about that one. Like, I've never seen anyone play it either. Me and actually playing them myself is, you know, another story. But I've never seen that one. Miso, I know. In the back of the train yard, there's an old warped wheel lying on the ground as shown below. While no longer functional, the wheel is interesting because when rolled on a flat surface, its axle traces a funny pattern if you look at it from the side. Of the five sorry, of the five diagrams below, which one depicts the actual path of the eggs? You're going to show about how the figures. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> the voice actor for the vast majority of the dark elves in the game, Lani Minel, is also the voice of Luke. Oh! Okay, yeah, no, I have no idea who the Dark Elves are. Also, uh, all my life I've played the late games in German. This is my first time playing the late games in English, so the only game... The, or the only time I've actually heard... Um, heard... Uh, <laughs> Heard Luke in English in the first place was like the first game because the first game didn't have a German dub yet But uh, after the second like as soon as we had the second game here, we have the games in German dub. So I Have not heard him a lot Also, the European version has a different look. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Well <laughs> It's still good to know Although I have to admit, the name does not ring a single fucking bell. Like, nope. Sad trumpet. Dun, dun. <laughs> Here goes. Here goes. That was almost too easy. Still, thank you for telling me. I, I love hearing about. Oh, did you know that voice actor X and Y has also done the them? Like, oh, ooh. That's right, Diagram A correctly traces the path of the axle as the wheel rolls. You probably won't see this wheel on a train anytime soon, but it would be fun to watch it bounce around. Yeah, yeah, I'm playing the European version. <laughs> I am playing the European version for the simple fact that I've always played the European versions. And I don't want to suddenly run into the US um, puzzles. <laughs> Da 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 da. Da 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 da. You're perfectly fine. That's right, Luke. You sure worked that one out quickly. If you got any more puzzles? I've got answers. I'm impressed you knew a puzzle like that? I've never heard that one before. Well, I try my best to impress the professor. Hey. <laughs> you sure do. You do try your best to. What are all these errors for? It was a fairground game. Hey, there's quite a strand of this game of mine. Tell you what, since business is so slow right now, the first try is on me. 
Gosh, really, mister? Come on, Flora, we can try together. Hey! Which arrow? A bag of sweet dangles from one of the three arrows attached to the wall. Assuming that all three arrows are perfectly straight, which arrow is connected to the sweet? Is it though? No. Alright, sorry, hold on. That's not a straight line. I can't. I need to draw a straight line. That space now, so I suck a full load and I can use up Genshin. Nancy Drew. Oh, I've heard Nancy Drew's voice a lot of time. Yes, oh, I see. Well, then I've heard her voice before. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but I, I've, I've, I've heard her voice a lot then. I've uh, seen a lot of Nancy Drew. She was British, she's from California. <laughs> Interesting! Good eye! Arrow B is the one attached to the sweets. This puzzle is an example of the famous Pogendo of optical illusion. When a diagonal line is partially obscured by a straight shape, the viewer tends to not be able to accurately determine which of the lines on the right is the continuation of the one on the left. Oh. Nice done, Shorty. Here's a little something for a fine performance. Really? Gosh, thank you. Nice! Thanks! Magnetizes to you. Oh no! <laughs> Wait, do I? Hold on, let me see if I can find uh, a German late loop. Late loop. Mm. Ooh! Wait, hold on, there's a voice comparison. Let's see, hold on. <laughs> Una sola persona era in grado di fermare la campana E quella persona è lei Sì, è lei È lei È proprio lei oh, 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 Devo finire di pulire lì, lì e anche là The one who holds the key to this mystery Is you Is you Is you <laughs> oh god, oh French, oh. I didn't know we had so many jokes. There he is. There he is. Hmm. But fucking fucking he obviously, obviously. German Luke is like I mean, I don't know if he did did that for any of the other languages. Probably, maybe. Uh but German Luke uses the uses the uh I forgot the word. You know how we have two different you pronouns. One of them being the e that we, you would use with someone you know well, and the one that's more formal. Formal you is what I was searching for. Jesus Christ. Well, it's such a frightening place. Sincy! <laughs> the 
das da? Das da auch. Das muss alles noch geputzt werden. Yeah, I want to watch the movie again. <laughs> hey there, fellas. I'm in a real bind here. Help an old girl out, will you? This seems to be the problem, man. My sweet little bird fell down a hole in the ground. I want to help the poor thing, but I just can't reach her. Do you have any ideas? I believe there's something we can try. Oh no! The trapped bird. Oh no, our lord's poor little bird has fallen down a long winding hole in the ground. In front of the bird are three paths labeled A, B, and C. Which tunnel should the bird take in order to make it back above the ground? Oh no. Let's see. Oh, well, that doesn't fucking matter which place, which way you go. Wow. Hold on. That doesn't seem right. Line. I am. I am. It's fine. It's B. <laughs> like, what do you mean? This is the one that. I mean, if ah, I start from the. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. Got it. Very nice. The bird can safely escape what underground confines by following tunnel B. Any other tunnel will lead to deep underground or into the mouth of the very humble sheep. My boy, he's so cute. That's my little birdie. I was worried she'd be stuck down there forever. I wish I had some way of thanking you properly. I know. Here, you can have this tea set and these lovely herbs. Take them, I insist. Looks like our new mini game. Well, we make tea. Because this game was not British enough yet. <laughs> Your son, boy. He is the best boy, loveliest boy. To access the tea set, touch, touch, touch the trunk icon. <laughs> touch the trunk icon and touch the tea set icon. Tea set allows you to make some brew a variety of herbal teas and multiple measures of a herb to increase the herbs effect on the tea. Tea set mini game is a lovely mini game. I love it. Combine, co combine the ingredients together to make a variety of delectable teas. Tea ingredients currently in your possession can be found in a box as shown on the touch screen. Touch an ingredient to learn its name and the properties it can give you a tea. When you are ready to make tea, touch the ingredients you want to use and direct them into the teapot. You need to put three measures in the teapot before you can start brewing your tea. Keep in mind that you can use more than one measure of the same herb in your concoctions. Once you put your third ingredient in the teapot, the lid next to it will start to wiggle. Place the lid on top of the teapot to start brewing your tea. If your creation turns out well, it will be added to your list of tea recipes. You can check your list of recipes at any time by touching tea time. Viewing your list of tea teas, touch a teacup to see the tea's name and characteristics. Once you find a tea you'd like to serve, touch serve to pour a cup for anyone who's thirsty. There are 12 recipes in all, try to discover as many as you can, they're sure to come in handy. <gasps> no! You're asking these British gentlemen to make coffee? How oh, dare you! Berry and citronia seeds. Ta -da! It's a little sour and a little sweet. Yum. I certainly have to tip my hat to this tasting ability. I imagine it would be delicious ice as well. Yep, and since it's nice and light, I'm sure just about anyone would be happy to have a cup. Mm, yes, I'm myself impartial to this lovely fruity aftertaste. You made so many awful teas back then, for real though, it's like, oh, you know how you can just combine some of them, or like use more than one? I made so many awful teas too. Delicious! I just love how sweet this tea is, Professor. Well, it's a bit too sweet for me, but I understand why so many children enjoy it. I think I could drink a whole pot of this stuff but by myself, just watch me. <laughs> You've got quite a sweet tooth, Luke. Just try not to drink it too fast. Nice. Well, right then. <laughs> I would 
would like to show this one. a hamster minigame. Ah, there we go. Being less than my best, will you make me a tea with aces? Leave Chris Bear and on your seat. Absolutely, here you go. This is a splendid look. This is truly testament to the restorative power of tea. It's a good tea. Layton seems restored and is in, and in high spirits. Got a hint coin at the bottom of the teacup. Huh? I think I want to drink a tea that has a hint coin in it. Come on, Luke. Let me give you a tea. I give you the tea? Yeah! Oh. So I said, could you make me a tea with some oasis leaf and a double dose of brisk berry? Absolutely. I'm there. <laughs> Tea sure hits the spot. It's sweet and it's got me ready to start walking again. That's a good tea. Looks seems so sore and is in high spirit. There we go. They're like, haha, you also need to give these teas to people for even more hint cards. <laughs> Hello. You don't have enough stuff for the for the hamster mini game yet though. Hello there, you do. Your timing is impeccable. See, I'm trying to wrap this flower I grew to give to a friend. I've got green fingers when it comes to plants, but I'm all thumbs when it comes to wrapping. Have an old guy, would you? Of course. It's a frigid hamster. Should I have a hamster pattern for real? <laughs> Laurel is very particular about wrapping this flower as it is a gift for an important friend of hers. She would like it to be wrapped as shown below, but has no idea where to begin. In order to wrap the flower, just like the leftmost drawing, how could sh how should you begin your wrapping? Touch A, B, C, or D to answer. Um. C. Consider this puzzle solved. Oh, this game. Make me use my brain. Ah, wonderful. Yippee. Excellent. Were you able to follow the paper's transition from a flat shape into a 3D one? Yeah. Well, that's about the finest wrapping job I've ever seen. You served me a world of pain. You got a new hamster tie. There we go. Now we can. Let me turn the favor with a few helpful tidbits about the tea set I gave you. I'm sure you know the basics of brewing, yes? Put in one measure of each of the three ingredients I gave you to make a nice cup of citrus classic tea. However, there's a lot of room for experimentation. For example, try brewing two parts brisk berry or one part something else. Get it right and you make a sweet crisp tea that is just wonderful. If you happen to pick up any other tea herbs, try creating more blends of your own. There's a whole world of complex flavors waiting to be discovered. You just need to find them. Thank you, ma'am. I literally made both of those teas already. Go, let's help Dilbert. <laughs> let's help them out. Anyway, three sets. Three. I'm not so good at moving and stuff. Oh my god, the hamster had a voice, right? I remember. He had a German voice as well, I think. Funny if 
by exercise, it'll just make me hungrier. <laughs> well, Billboard, we gotta get you into shape. <laughs> He's a cutie. Look at this crazy looking tree, Professor. It's all what? With a structure like that, it must be quite old. I wonder how long it's been here. Oh, Luke, a little conversation reminded me of a puzzle I know. Care to hear it? Why not? Sure, yeah, why not? The country road you see is decorated with a single straight row of trees, each a set distance from its neighbor. Of the five trees labeled A to E, which two trees have the greatest distance between them? Study the image carefully and draw a line between the letters of the two trees you've chosen. A and E? Hey, game, what do you mean? Which which of these have the greatest distance between them? Well, the ones that are the furthest apart? <laughs> hmm. Let's see if this works. Mm hmm. Lighten's apprentice strikes again. That's right, no matter how you look at it, trees, I only e clearly have the greatest distance between them. Perhaps I should have prepared something a bit more challenging for you, Luke. Well, we'll save that for next time. For now, let's continue our walk about the village. <laughs> right. Born trip you. I mean, they're like, oh, there's, there's five of them. You have to go see how far apart they are each. And it's like, no, I don't know how far apart each of them is, but A and E are the furthest apart. That's for sure. Trick questions can be so bad though. Gracious, the weather couldn't be fine if we're celebrating Dropstone's fancy 50. My memory's not what it used to be, but you're not from around here, are you? Waiting for a train? How do I know you ask? Well, it isn't the first time it's happened. As fancy as a train is, it must be in rotten shape. Tune up, Sunny. More often than not, the train gets fixed in a few hours. What with the festival and all, there's plenty to see and do here in the meantime. Thank you for the information. If I could trouble you for a moment, though, I'd like to ask about the relic known as the Elysian Box. You may also know it as Pandora's Box. Oh dear me! <laughs> I mean, oh dear me, I've never heard of the dreadful thing. Never, you hear? Hmm. hmm. Well, I'm not sure I want to talk to you anymore. To be frank, I was in high spirits till you came along, now I'm grumpier than a cat in the rain. If you want to prove the story for ruining my day, solve this here puzzle. Huh? I love the character design. The, one, the, the thing I love about level 5 is they go fucking crazy. They're like, what do you mean? You think this is not realistic that this man is like three cheeses high and has a nose the size of a football field? Who cares? Why is this bottle so fucking... Okay, there we go. Yeah, three cheeses high. <laughs> Thank you for the idea time. I said three cheeses high. A pro golf has the amazing ability to consistently put distances of 3, 5, 7 and 11 meters. Strangely enough though, those are the only distances he can put. Currently our golfer stands on a green with his ball 20 meters from the hole. What's the fewest numbers of strokes he can use to get the ball into the hole? Assume that if the ball is hit farther than a distance remaining to the hole, it will roll over to the other side without going into the cup. No, no, you definitely heard it right. That's a thank you. I'm unsure, but I said thank you for the high retirement in the pad. <laughs> you three cheese high. Five, 
I mean, you can shoot a diag- like... Just a little... This should do the trick. Huh. Wonderful. Ah. Good job! If our friend is a pro golfer, if our friend the pro golfer puts two diagonal shots shown above, he can sink the ball in two shots. No one ever said the golfer had to put directly towards the hole, did they? Sure, in order to sink the putt using the methods shown above, you need to calculate the angle for each shot perfectly, but that's probably why they call him a pro. They are only asked for the least amount it would take. He could also just keep shooting them at like five straight, but then he would need more of them. Yeah, you have to find the truth about a whack box that kills anyone who opens it. And also our good friend, uh, Dr. Schrader, presumably has opened the box after he got it into his possession and we found him dead. So now we're trying to find a whack. Try to get in four if you play straight, but why would you? Yeah, <laughs> that's a ticket. Very nice. Get a good hat on our shoulder, Sonny. Mind you, you didn't want to wear that hat. <laughs> you need a good hat on your shoulders if you wanted to wear a hat just like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look at all these stalls, and this is what I call a festival. I just love all the hustle and bustle. It's so wonderful. Shall we take in some more of the plaza sights? Then? Definitely. Hmm, a spot of sightseeing in front of the village hall. Nice. She's adorable, isn't she? I love her with all my heart. I wish she... <laughs> she actually was in the games and more. Bye, she quit 7-Eleven. Yeah, you could do a lot, but they only asked for the least amount. And the least amount would always be at least two strokes. Hello! How are you? <laughs> Parting with one so dear to your heart is even more painful than the tightest wig. When she was a child, I used to read to her until she fell asleep. She looked just like an angel. Nothing cuts so deep as separations though. <laughs> Rapes? I don't know about that. I've never really given it much thought. Oh, Fred, Dad, I wasn't expecting one as young as yourself to fully understand my life. Your what? Oh, my I'll just excuse myself now. Do you think he just got dumb? Actually, he seemed sad in a different way, didn't he? That's not to pry too deeply into the private affairs of others, Luke. It's not becoming of a gentleman. You're right, Professor. Are you? Fellows, pleasure to meet you. My name's Ellen, I'm beautiful Dropstone's number one fan. I heard you've been running around Dropstone's asking questions, but you haven't talked to me yet. If you solve this puzzle, then I, the king of Dropstone trivia, will answer your questions. Oh. Well, that's nice. Below is a wheel of male and female portraits. Select a portrait, and counting that portray as one, move six portraits either clockwise or anti-clockwise and cross out the last of these six portraits. Repeat this pattern, starting from the next available portrait, and always moving in the same direction. Remember to skip the ones you crossed out. If you started the right portray, you can remove all the women in the wheel, leaving only the six portraits of men behind. Which portray is the circle you answer? Remember, you can move clockwise or anti- What? <sighs> if you started the right portray- Huh? Hold on. Counting- Select that portrait and counting that portrait as one, move six portraits either clockwise or anti clockwise and cross out the last. Ugh. Okay, so. So, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, crossed out. And then repeat this pattern starting from the next available portrait and always moving in the same direction. Okay, so I start here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I got it. to start with this man this man consider this puzzle solved Jesus <clears throat> and there we have it very nice if you begin counting from this man and proceed anti-clockwise around the wheel you eventually remove all the female portraits what the hell? Expertly solved, though it gave me chills, I really did. Ask away, if you got any questions about the village or its history, I'm your man. <laughs> you have no idea what happened, my laps, okay? That's, that's fine. I feel like that sometimes too, with these games. It's slightly off topic, but do you know anything about a relic known as the Illusion Box? You may have heard people referring to it as Pandora's Box as well. Mm, it's hard to believe, but you've gone beyond my area of expertise. I've never heard of the thing. What I can tell you is that all the people in this village jump at the very mention of the supernatural. From what I gather, it seems to have some connection to the village in the days of its founding. Unfortunately, that's all the info I can really give you on that subject. Sorry to let you down. Oh, okay. Kinda <laughs> so silly wants to remove all the them. Mm -hmm. You wanna be cats? Yeah, okay. The <clears throat> <laughs> Puzzle. Look at this little monument here, Professor. It appears to be commemorating something. Let's see what's written on it. Yeah. <laughs> the wrong date. Dorpstone was founded 50 years ago and the founders commissioned its own sculpture to commemorate the day. Unfortunately, the Dozy sculptor managed to engrave the wrong date onto it. The whole village had delivered the erroneous sculpture until some bright spark realized that converting it in a certain way would enable the correct date to be displayed. Think about what the sculptor could have been converted into in order to display the correct date. On which date was Dropstone founded? Answer and four digit day! day. Yeah, first the date and then the month. You remember this puzzle? Yeah, this one is different depending on where you play the the European version or the American version. <laughs> Fun, right? Yeah. Because for us it looks like this and then the American version has a different... It's not a gravestone, no. This is the one? This is the one you were talking about? Ah! Japan's is different as well, probably, yeah. Honestly, though, uh, the Japanese have quite a, I feel in the later games they have quite a lot of puzzles are very different. I just found the brain fish. It's fine, it's fine. But yeah, the, how it works is if, if there's water in here, this is just gonna... Um, not gonna look like a two, but instead like a three because it's not a very nice three. So it's found on the 13th of August because this is gonna look the same regardless. Unless this kind of still looks the same. I think the American version has something, something completely different though. I know, I only know it like this. This should do the trick. Hey. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Brilliant! When converted into a fountain, water fills the bowl, allowing the true date of Dropstone's founding, the 13th of August, to be displayed. The intent of sculptor must have been relieved at getting away with such sloppy chiseling. <laughs> 
According to the bargaining here, this village was founded by its first settler 50 years ago. 50 years sounds like a long time for a person, but I suppose it's not very long for a village. Quite so. But this fact just invites more questions. Why did the settler come here in the first place? It's hard to believe he or she simply set forth from their old residence to found a new village. Young me would like to relay a message to this puzzle, updated to modern vocabulary and meme standard. I believe it goes something like, GET FUCKING BANNED! <laughs> You really didn't like this puzzle, did you? <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, this building must be the village hall. Yeah, but it looks like it's closed for the day. Well, they probably wanted to give everyone the chance to enjoy today's festivities. Look, this reminds me of a puzzle set in front of a village hall like this one. You had to give it a go. You know I do, Professor. <sighs> I have a headache. Ooh. Three people are odds with one another running for mayor in the upcoming town election. They are all locals of the town, which has a voter population of 40. In order to win, a candidate must get more votes than any other candidate. If each of the 40 voters casts a single vote and every vote is recognized, what is the fewest number of votes a candidate needs to secure victory? <laughs> Hold on. 40 people. Do they count as well? The ones running for mayor? Can they also vote? Y yeah. Okay, okay. You specifically remember the hand <laughs> I see. Wait, wait, wait. 40 people. But each of them are gonna... Not for themselves. Plus you need one more. Yeah, 40. Oh, I see. So 20. You need 20 votes to be to be able to win. Just Interesting. Give it to me. That was almost too easy. That's right, the winner needs at least 20 votes. Since each of the candidates dislikes the other two, they will probably all vote for themselves. 40 votes minus those three votes leaves 32. Uh, 37. What? 37 votes. The winner will need over half the votes or 19. Add the winning candidate's personal vote to that and you get 20 votes. Even if another candidate gets all the remaining 18 votes, that wouldn't be enough to overcome the candidate with 20. Interesting. This is why people running for office aren't allowed to vote. <laughs> the whole voting for themselves thing, I guess. Now we really should get back to investigating the village. Please. I want to get to 50 solved puzzles this stream. I don't know how far along that is, but I want 50 solved puzzles before I stop. <laughs> at least. Look at those gigantic cow balloons. Looks like the villagers are setting up for the livestock competition. Livestock competition? That sounds like fun. Yes, I'd certainly like to see the competition myself, but it doesn't appear quite ready to start yet. While we're waiting, can we go and see more of the village? Certainly. We can return later when the competition commences. Yay! Is your sleepy British village infested with so many puzzles? Oh, oh, that, that's just how it goes. Don't worry about it. Like, why, why does this point and click game have so many things you can point and click at? Why does this puzzle game have so many puzzles everywhere? Like, that's just how it goes. <laughs> it would be weirder to not have any puzzles. Yeah, can you see her here? This is everyone who is with us right now. 
Flora is here. Flora is here very much. She just doesn't say everything all the time. Which is kind of sad because she's a lovely character where she would get more uh, screen time. I'm in a mother's room out of a puzzle at the moment. They see literally anything. Very true. Very true. I love Flora. She's my baby. Thank you for the hi. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Hydrate time. Health, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I don't have any allergies as far as I'm aware. I do not know what I have to see so often today. Hey. <sighs> Also, thank you for the hydrogen. <laughs> what are you buying me for? And just come up to me and start talking like you know me, okay? Streaming out the world's most amazing happy. You came along and you wrapped my train of thought. I did. I'm sorry about that. Sorry, I... Well, let's just say it. Prove it. You're solving this amazing puzzle I thought of. Bruh. I like the people that complain that we walk up to them and talk to them. Like, I mean, I didn't know you were stuck in thought. Like, sorry about that. <clears throat> There's a fellow with very particular rules about when he wears his hat. When it's sunny, he always wears his hat. When it's rainy, he doesn't wear his hat. When it's cloudy, he doesn't wear his hat unless it's been cloudy for two days in a row, in which case he wears his hat on the second of these days. Below is a schedule of when his fellow decided to wear his hat over the course of one week. Use the panels to fill in the weather for each day of the week. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Chicken taxes makes you allergic to rat meat and dairy if it bites you. Sorry, what? What are you doing in Texas? <laughs> okay, hold on. So, when it's rainy, he doesn't wear his hat. It's rainy. When it's cloudy, he doesn't wear his hat unless it's been cloudy for two days in a row. In which case, he wears his hat on the second of these days. And then when it's sunny, he always wears his hat. Sunny days, sunny days. Unless it's been cloudy for two days in a row. So imagining that this Sunday here was also cloudy. Then he would wear it on the second one. This being the second one. Because we don't have that many uh, sunny days. <laughs> Strange things that go down in the sun. <laughs> Very interesting face when it's raining, but it's also sunny out. Oh, please share. His hair is so big. Such a tiny head for such big hair. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Excellent! If you assume that the Monday show was the second cloudy day in a row, then our friend must have worn his hat on that day. The rest of the solution then falls right into place. Huh! I did everything else first. <laughs> hi Raiders! Hi Zion! Welcome in! Gee, I wonder what game you were playing. Totally didn't talk about that earlier. Hmm! <laughs> Also, hi, I'm Nui, like the color pink vision of us in GOPGs. We're currently playing Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box, or whatever you want to call it, the Pandora's Box, because there's like 500 different versions that this game is called, depending on which version you play. I hope you've had a good stream. The Cold Sun Show is the devil beating his wife. <gasps> that doesn't sound nice. Gossiping about me? Yeah, <laughs> actually. <laughs> You should say the devil is beating his wife when it's sunny but also raining. Ooh, that doesn't sound nice. Also, Pikachu for the Raiders, of course. <clears throat> the 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 yeah! How fun is your garden, then, uh, Mad Father? 
I heard it's your first time playing. An RPG maker game. Especially an RPG maker horror game, which is fascinating to me. That you have never played any of them before, because they were a very big part of my growing up on the internet. <laughs> So, Wix, since you solved that for me, you're back in my good books. Besides two snappy dresses, I guess shouldn't fight. We get our clothes all day. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm way more snappily dressed than you are, my good dude. You growing up on the internet was World of Warcraft. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. What is happening? So I said to my dad, I was like, Dave, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> well, Dave, we shouldn't be talking about beating any anyone's wife out here. Up here in the north? I, I've played a few of the RPG Maker horror games myself. The most, most, mostly I've watched. Watched other people play them though, to be fair, yes. Yeah. Hello. I never forget a face and I don't know any of yours. You must have come on the Monetary Express. Since you're new in town, let me clue you in a few key facts about Dropstar. I know you're interested, so don't act all bash when reserved to my account. Listen, if you only know one name in Dropstar, make sure it's Mr. Anderson's. Not only is the man swimming in money, but he basically runs Dropstar. He's a top bloke who treats everyone with respect, even a boss man. That'd be me, by the way. I never would have guessed! You can tell a lot about a man by the way he treats his local postie, but even nice guys like him have troubles, so he spends all his time worrying about his daughter. That reminds me, I just saw a pair of unusual characters head up towards Mr. Anderson's house. They said they were policemen from London, but something about them seemed awfully fishy to me. Two people, huh? Maybe referring to Inspector Chelmy and his assistant. Chelmy, you say? That sounds right, he said he was here on official police business and needed to see Mr. Anderson. Do you think there's a connection between his Mr. Anderson and the Illusion Box Professor? Well, it seems that Mr. Anderson serves as the head of this community. It's only natural that he'd know about who and what passes through his area. Oh, fuck damn it! He's a big fish, all right. You bang on the money about the bang on the money. Why is he? That's it properly. I mean, even the owner of the Monetary Express stops in to pay him a visit when he's in town. So about those two officers being waited on like kings at Mr. Anderson's as we speak. Enough chit chat. We got a festival going on now, so go and have some fun. Thanks. 100% retirement in the World of Warcraft from 2005 to 2012. Damn, okay. I have never played World of Warcraft in my life. The only World of Warcraft thing I ever had in my head was the, the One Horde song. And specifically the German version of that one that is still stuck in my head. I'm like, yep. I don't fucking understand what you want, but... Still there, living in my head rent-free. Also, thank you for the follow, Dave. <laughs> I assume it is okay to call you just Dave then. Well, yeah, I'll solve this with a puzzle. Not yet! Not yet! Finish <laughs> it. Mm. What? I don't think you'll be touching World of Warcraft ever again. I love this cat. I want a plushie of this cat. That's so fucking adorable. You need to scope him. <laughs> I don't think I have good news for you. It is over talking about that song. It's almost 20 years old. Yeah, I mean. I'm 25. <laughs> I do not- I've not known that song since I was five, but it was on the internet and I was friends with people who played World of Warcraft. Boom! <laughs> it's okay, we're all boomers here. Coworker called me millennial. Not millennial. Coworker called me Gen, Gen Z last week and I was like, what the fuck did you just say to me? The 
were called being interested in just don't have the funds to get into World of Warcraft. Yeah, I, listen, I already have one MO that I've absolutely ignored lately and I feel very bad about, so... <laughs> Good afternoon, hello! Must be hard being over 24, yeah. Every year it gets harder. <laughs> I hope you're good. Greetings! I don't think I've seen you around these parts before. May I ask your name? First, my name is Social Layton, Professor of Archaeology, Gresnella University. Charm, sir, welcome to drop some, Professor Layton. My name's Dorothy and I'm a maid in the service of the Anderson family. Tell me, what brings you to our humble village? My companions and I are after an artifact known as the Illusion Box. Have you heard the name before? Ah! Oh! Wait! Early on in the game they wrote artifact with an I! Now it's written with an E! How dare they? Both of these are correct, but how dare they? Yes, his name is Herschel. Mm, can't say that I have. But the master's quite knowledgeable about curiosities such as that. The master, madam. Yes, excuse my thoughtlessness. I keep forgetting you're new here. Never spelled with <laughs> I've also never seen it spelled with a four. You see, adventure, there's not a single resident of the village who doesn't know Mr. Anderson. You see, well, if it's possible, we'd be very grateful for an audience with Mr. Anderson. Normally, I'd say he'd be glad to receive you, but lately he's been preoccupied with his daughter. I don't mean to pry, but has there been some issue between Mr. Anderson and his daughter? <laughs> well, Yes, just between you, me, and the wall, his daughter has been stupidly planning a trip alone. Clearly it's filled with a four in lead speak. Artifact. <laughs> You're making me read lead speak in a good year of 2023. I am going to cry. We had a Homestuck update, like, yesterday? And you're making me read lead speak in the good year of 2023. What the hell is happening? She's not planning to run away. What's worse is that the master started to suspect something is going on behind his back. But after much discussion, we servants have decided to give her a warm send up. So you're in support of allowing this girl to go off on her own. Why is that? Because the purpose of the trip is to fulfill the wishes of the young lady mistress's late grandmother. Yeah! Yeah, Homes... Homes had some kind of update. I don't actually know what the update is, but the Twitter account was like, boom, update, and everyone was like, what the hell? Fun little actions. Most ancient of ancient things. Ah, yes, good old lead speaker. I see. May I inquire as to what those wishes might have been? Oh my god! What the fuck? <laughs> oh, I could. If I if I didn't know what word we were talking about, I don't think I could read that. I'm gonna make that my next game attack. Next game, I start playing. Hold on, I have to write this down. I'm gonna name myself. <laughs> oh yeah, you cannot forget the X's and the uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. yes, 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 yes. Wait, hold on. Let's put an, an X, X on both sides. There we go. Good. I have my next game attack. <laughs> We'll be finished by a different writer, it's an update. Oh, okay! Listen, uh, listen, I'll let you in on a secret. I'll let you in on my secret. I've never finished reading Hope Stack. 
I'm a fake Homestuck fan. <clears throat> no, I stopped. Uh, Dolly, do you remember that big scene where we... What's, what page was that on? Like, where we saw the entire ship and e there was people everywhere. I stopped there because I waited. Uh, I, because I wanted to wait for, like, everything to be out and then I, I never finished it. <laughs> Toxic Taco, that's cute! Are you by any chance born in the year of 1995 or was the 95 just there? Because I can proudly say I've never had a single username that could, like, included my birth year because I always hated that, always. No touch homes that you've only heard about recently. Honestly? Good for you? It's not polite to ask a lady your age. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave. It will happen again. <laughs> I'm not polite. <laughs> oh yeah, Steven Universe, I've also stopped at some point. Like, I thought it was over, but it wasn't. And then now there's a movie, and I'm like... Pfft. Hmm. It happens in Homestuck, like I'm looking at a different language. I feel like a lot of stuff in Homestuck has not aged well. Like if you start reading Homestuck, you can still read Homestuck, I guess. They, some, somewhat they saved all of the Flash stuff. Uh, Homestuck was a thing before Tumblr, I think. But yeah, it would. I read Homestuck a long, long time ago. I always wanted to cosplay from it, never did. We go with Rock, you big World of Warcraft Rock, that's fair. Okay, okay, you, you know what? Let's focus on the game we're actually playing. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there's there's some spin spin off games now too for oh, Homestuck, so there's a lot. I myself have only heard scraps of the story from other people, so I can't say much. But whatever they request, it's one that the young mistress seems to feel is extremely important. Look at that! I hear him gasping away when there's supper to prepare. Please excuse me if I'm so late, and I need to get back to work. Uh, wait a second! Rats, she's gone. Is it just me, Professor? Or does it sound like Mr. Anderson's father's planning to leave home? If she is, doesn't it seem strange to you that the family servants are cheering her on? Yes, very. And think about the consequences should Mr. Anderson find out what's been going on. The servants must have a truly solid reason if they resolve to keep a secret like this. Could it possibly be? I'm getting the feeling Dropstone isn't as ordinary as it looks. You're not the only one, Luke. But enough speculation. Let's go and explore more of the village. Okay, Professor. <laughs> Let me show you the world. I found another... Mosquito bite on my arm. And now that I found it, it's gonna hurt. Owie. I hate mosquitoes. These guys should be dead. It's October! Leave me alone! Never! Ow. Ow. I cannot keep my hands off of stuff like this. Ow, ow. Being yummy to mosquitoes. <laughs> I'm sorry for having tasty blood. Mm. I wish mosquitoes were like vampires. You'd have to invite them in, and this wouldn't happen. This cat sculpture cert certainly is expressive. Yep, he's a cute one. If you like cats, Professor, I've got just a puzzle for you. Ready to cost at the moment. You're MMO free. Oh, you're not playing 14 right now? Mmm. Chemical coconut scent is good against mosquitoes. Oh! Only female mosquitoes? Wait, wait, really? <sighs> I think there was something, but I, I'm unsure. 
but I'm honestly unsure if that's an actual thing or just a myth about certain blood types being more desirable by mosquitoes. 20! Wow! That it is. Not as much as I'm paying for it. Getting bit by mosquitoes like toxic Yuri. <laughs> this too is Yuri. Staying in your room. Mm. Ow, ow, ow. Uh, <laughs> I scratched shit open. Ow, we, ow, we, ow. That's what I get. One of the three. Of one of the three colored pictures, A, B, or C, is the same picture as the black and white one displayed on the far left. Can you find which one? The only difference is that the picture on the far left has had its content flipped off to right and its colors inverted and changed to black. Ah, so the same as the other. Yeah. I think. I don't remember what the last one is that I got. Actually. Uh, the last subscription so i think i'm running i'm probably wasting a bunch of money by not playing <laughs> again <sighs> okay wait hold on so mm -hmm. one of these only one of these is right well this one has different stripes And this one doesn't have eyelashes that are as long, so it's gotta be B. <laughs> also, floor is there occasionally. Yep. I will do the trick. Have a fun time. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Well spotted. B is the picture you are looking for. The cat's eyebrows in A, and the pattern of the lines in the background in C are different from the picture on the left. You always make it look so easy. Oh, Luke, that's because it is easy. Oh. No, it really depends. Sometimes sometimes I see something immediately, and some other times it's like, Ooh, I need new glasses. Hi. Hey there, I'm a world traveler, but I'm stuck here until I can score a ticket on a monetary express. I was hoping for a freebie, so I told Mr. Beluga one of my puzzles to break the ice. Unfortunately for me, he got all hard on the collar when he couldn't solve it. Yeah, maybe you have better luck with it. I don't think giving someone a puzzle is going to get you a ticket to what seems to be a very exclusive and expensive train, but I... Worth a try! Hard rot luck. While trying to pick up your luggage, you find that your bag is at the very back of the pile. The porter... Unloading the luggage claims the other boxes in the hold have prevented him from unloading yours. Use your wits to move all the blocks out of the way and reclaim your luggage. Oh, goodness me. Why is it always the fucking sliding puzzles? And now to test my theory. Ma. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Very nice. Be sure to show the porter how you did so he can get your luggage for you next time. You club a lot, aren't you? People like you around maybe even actually solve the mystery of the Monetary Express. People say that the train occasionally makes a stop at a phantom town found on a map. Just be a wild rumor though, who knows? An uncharted town? Wow, I wonder if that's true. Yeah! What? Clearly, that has nothing to do with us. We should completely ignore that. What a cute little farm. Yes, and the weather's so nice that even the animals grazing in the field seem to be in a good mood. Mm, seems like the perfect time for a quick puzzle. See if you can solve this one. Your four horses, all of which travel at different speeds, and traveling from point A to point B, these horses take one, two, four, and six hours respectively. 
One day you decide to move all your horses from point A to point B. However, you can only move a maximum of two horses at a time and you need to ride a horse back to point A each time you return to move your other horses. No, you can only move as fast as the slowest horse you're traveling with. What's the fewest number of ho horse how hours it will take to move all the horses? Oh god. I can... <sighs> I should start with the one that's the fastest, right? If I move... These two, it's gonna take me two hours. Okay, wait, let me write them down. A, B. First round, I'll take horse one and two. So it's gonna take me two hours. And then I'm gonna take horse one to go back. It's gonna take me one hour. And then I'm gonna take the horses it takes some four and six hours so it's gonna take me six hours and then I'm gonna take the horse wait now I have wait now I have four and six and two on this side and then I can use the horse that only takes me two hours to go back and then I can just take horses one and two which is going to take me another two hours. I think I will just will. This, take, this takes me two hours. Three, nine, eleven, thirteen. Thirteen hours. That is not a five. Thank you. Just leave it to me! Piece of cake! That's right! To start, take your one and two hour horses, then ride your one hour horse back. Next, ride on your four and six hour horses and return on your two hour horse. At this point, you've been moving horses for 11 hours, three in the first excursion and eight in the next. Now you should be back at point A with your one and two hour horses, ride them both across to point B to finish the task in 13 hours. Or you could ask someone for help because running, riding horses for 13 hours straight, especially when some of them are so slow, is not fun. Like what is happening with those horses that one of them can make the trek in one hour and the other in six? The animals out on the farm look like they're really enjoying the sun. Of course, Luke, animals enjoy nature's glory as much as you and I do, if not more so. size of the mansion. I bet you could get lost in there. That is impressive to say the least. I'm sure the massive manor belongs to Mr. Anderson. That's why Inspector Chami and his assistant went, right? I'd like to see this place for myself. Can we go and take a look? No, for now I think our best course of action is to gather what information we can in the village. Besides, I imagine the Andersons already have their hands full with the current guests. But we will go there at some point for sure. Just not a little later, perhaps. A little later. <laughs> uh, uh, that should do it. Good afternoon. What are you doing there, sir? Me? Oh, I'm just doing a little fishing in this here lake. Sounds like a lot of work. Have you had much luck? Actually, that's a good question. Now I think about it, how many have I managed to catch today? Oh! Well, if you don't know. A large net has been cast out in a pond to catch some fish. The pond's surface is small, but it's actually wider underwater, so parts of the sunken net are no longer visible from the surface. Assuming there are no tears in the net and that the whole rim of the net is constructed of a single length of rope that ends on a shore, how many of the fish visible in the pond will be caught when the net is pulled out? <laughs> okay. The net goes like... This is inside. 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 I don't 
of these two are inside me. This one is inside me. This one is. Seven. Seven fishies. Nice. What? Hmm. The fastest horse in the world, according to a quick Google search, ran at seven kilometers per hour. And these are unlikely to be the horse of race horses at all. And the average horses ride at 40. But the single one is still really fast for horse standards and goes at 60. So play, you can outrun the six hour horse. This is everything makes me. Horse are horse of 40. Before I walk the slowest. Hold on, Sarah, I gotta be a bit. Okay. Drop some facts on us and then just leave. <laughs> That's right. To solve this puzzle, you need to imagine how the unseen parts of the net connect, which should look something like the illustration above. As you can see, the net will catch a total of seven fish. That's pretty good. Woo, what a haul. Tonight, a feast like a king. You going to eat all seven of those? One go. Hello. It's Inspector Chelmy. No look who it is. Hello, Inspector. Why are you returning from the Anderson estate? <laughs> I don't know where you get your information laden, but you're sly as a fox. As a matter of fact, I did just come from there, but Mr. Anderson himself wasn't home. Seems he's off presiding over some livestock competition or other. A likely story, I'm sure. Curious, have you found a connection between Mr. Anderson and the case you investigate? Not that it's any of your business, but perhaps you can be of help. I'd heard rumors that he had tried to find his illusion box in the past, so I went to talk to him. But when I got to the house, the butler told me he wasn't home and that I should leave at once. You believe it? Mind you, I wouldn't be surprised if he was just pretending not to be home. I went out of my way to go up and see the man, and the least he could have offered me a cup. Well, why would Mr. Anderson be interested in the illusion box in the first place? If anyone's guess, Luke, we won't know more until we can ask him in person. In that case, I suppose we should head over to the livestock competition Mr. Anderson is judging. Hm, fine. Let this barren ship roll around the mud with his precious cows. I shall be elsewhere. As far as I'm concerned, the whole thing's nothing more than a frivolous distraction for the rich. I can only assume his obsession with the box stems from the excess of time and money on his hands. If you see anything that might help this investigation, report it to me straight away, you hear? Okay. We're always happy to cooperate, Inspector. Now, please excuse us. Fine. Well, off you go. Come along, Barton. We've got work to do. Hmm? Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Alright, we better hurry back to the competition grounds. We should. We should hurry back to the competition grounds. Why the fuck did But before we do that, we're going to talk to this random man who was not here before, who certainly is going to have a puzzle for us. Oh, oh, he's sleeping. Maybe he's sleeping. Goodness. You ever have those, those websites that you're actively using, and then suddenly they always decide to lock you out for no fucking reason? You're like, I was using you just fine until like two minutes ago and now you're going to lock me out why when that happens professor i think this chap here fell asleep standing up judging by his uniform he must be a security guard i certainly don't approve of sleeping on the job i'm pairing with a secure please confirm with anybody solving this puzzle <laughs> <coughs> right Three loops of rope are tangled together with a single red rope that has been tied in a very loose knot. Can you work out how many of the smaller loops of rope would get caught in this knot when the red rope is pulled tight from both ends? Remember, even if a loop sorry, even if a loop passes through the knotted part of the red rope now, it might fall away when the red rope is tightened. <sighs> mm -hmm. Even if the rope are tangled together has been tied in a very loose knot, can you work out how many of the smaller loops? Okay. Oh, I have to imagine how this all looks. Blue one? 
No, the blue one is just gonna hang on it. The green one is not gonna be in there. None of them. They're asking how many smaller loops would get caught in this knot, but none of them are gonna be in the knot. Zero. Zero. And now to test my theory. Yeah, baby. Huh, wonderful. Good thinking. Not a single loop will become truly entangled in a knot that forms. When you pull the red rope and form a knot, one loop will fall away and the other two will hang from the red rope free of the knot. That's what I'm saying. Correct right, answer confirmed. Well done, sir. You must be hopelessly addicted to puzzles if he's talking about them in his sleep. Even I don't. <laughs> Even I don't do that. <laughs> All right. Hello. Boy, oh boy, I'm in a tight spot. I wanted to make a clean cut in a sport, but I botched it right up. It's pretty much useless as it is. Can you think of a way to turn the piece into a solid square? Okay. Here we have an oddly shaped board. Since this board is rather unwieldy as it is, you decided to cut it into two pieces and rejoin these pieces to form a square. Assuming you aren't allowed to flip either of the pieces over once the board is cut, where should you make the cut in order to make a square out of the pieces? Easy. This is easy. Probably gonna have another version of this that's gonna be way harder. And there we have second. it. Easier than it looks, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh, that's so that the track. Thanks. Now I can finally get back to building that shack. Yes. Oh. Hi there. I've got another board problem on my hands. It's a shame I'm going for this time. <laughs> I should have shut my mouth. <laughs> Well, here we have yet another inconveniently shaped board. This one's even more unwieldy than the last, so you need to cut it into two pieces that you can reassemble to form a rectangle. Assuming you're not allowed to flip either of the pieces over once the board is cut, where should you make the cut in order to make a rectangle out of the pieces? Oy, oy, oy. Oh, wait, 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 got it. Here? And here. And then you can just push this into here because this is the same shape, right? This here? The same shape. And then you have a rectangle. This should do the trick. Hmm? And there we have it. Welcome back. Very nice. On these board cutting puzzles, fun. They are. You're really something else, something amazing. I thought I'd have to scrap this board, but now I can use it to build my shack. You should think a little hard about where you're cutting your boards next time. My good man. Alright then, competition time? My goodness, look at this place. Phew, we made it back in time to catch the competition. If you've been informed correctly, Mr. Anderson is judging the entry. So you should be somewhere around here, right? Indeed, I wonder which of the gentlemen walking around here is our man. Uh-oh, looks like the two men over there are getting pretty hot under the collar about something. I wonder what the matter is. Well, let's ask them! Just look at the man behind! Any more two eyes can see there's no bovine of mine. Bovine? Bovine? I know what's going on here, someone swapped my price cow for this low-class hyphen. What do you want me to do about it? Can you at least point out which cow is yours? And how do you expect me to do that? Yeah, this is going to get ugly. What's wrong, mister? 
This fellow here seems convinced someone swapped his prize cow for another cow. Telling you that ain't no cow of mine, my girl was perfect from horns to tail. See what I mean? It's just no convincing him. I can start the contest with him carrying on, but I don't know how we can clear the situation up. I'll take care of this. The cows are sure to know if any monkey business has gone on. Of course, why didn't I think of that myself? I'll leave this one to you. Excuse me, ladies. Can you help us out here? I see. Did you find out anything of use? I certainly did. If I had to sum up our conversation, it would go something like this. Oh, vine, like in vine plants was right. Equine, feline, canine. Okay. Five cows are grazing at the festival. Two of them are true moo cows, a breed that only tells the truth. The other three are no way cows, a different variety that always lies. Use the following statements from each cow to work out which cows are liars. Touch a letter to mark it with an X. These are no way, I promise. And now C isn't a true moo cow. A ain't a no way cow, no way. These are no way if I've ever seen one. B's definitely not a true moo. Goodness, okay. Well, A is saying that D is lying. And D is saying E is in no way. Okay, hold on. I'll think about this one. I'll be right back. I need a very short break. Okay, so A, C, and E are the liars. <clears throat> These three are saying. These three are telling lies. Again. Nice. Copying answers of idiot. <laughs> uh. That's right. Cows A, C, and E are no ways. If you assume each cow to be a no way or true and run through each of the cow statements, you eventually realize that the only time there can be three no ways is if they are A, C, and E. <sighs> I like that one of them is wearing a straw hat. Reminds me that I. Still haven't finished the life action. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Looks like these two ladies swap places while waiting for the competition to start. Things should be all sorted out now, though. You betcha, look at that build, a lustrous scene, that's so full gaze, that's my cow, no doubt. Everything's okay then? Better than okay, Kate, with my darling back, I'm a shoe in for that blue ribbon, thanks. Well, Luke, you certainly have a way with animals. Ah, oh, it's nothing really. <laughs> look over there, you two, they're about to announce the winner. The winner of this year's Dropstones Dairy Crown is... Da -da -da, guys. Oscar Show Stopping Bovine Beauty Mutilda! Hold on now, you mean to tell me my sweet behemoth didn't do it first place? <laughs> you shouldn't have swabbed your cow back, Clubber. If you'd kept quiet, you'd be the winner. Eh? That was robbed! Robbed! The competition must have been rigged! Rigged, I tell you! You think he went through all that trouble to get his cow back and ended up losing because of it? <laughs> so I suppose it goes to show that things don't always go as planned in life. Right, you are, Professor. Say, shouldn't Mr. Anderson be around here now? It's going to take some effort to find him in a crowd this dense. Let's look around a bit. <laughs> Imagine you getting your own cow back only to lose against a cow that was swapped for yours. But also, what do you mean? The other guy won with that cow and he was like... He didn't realize that they were swept? That's ah, yeah. Let's not think too closely about the cow. About the cows. <laughs> you ever hear the old saying, the clothes makes a man? Well, from the look of your duds, I say you've got your act together, so try this puzzle on for size. <laughs> mm. Mm. Thank you for the pat and the posture check and the Irish time with you. <sighs> a, B, and C each started off with shirts and trousers of the same color. A wore red, B wore blue, and C wore white. They were then blindfolded and swapped items of clothing. After they took the blindfold off, here's what they said. No one's shirts and trousers match. Looks like C's the only one of us who didn't keep any of his original clothes. I don't know if I like these red trousers. Touch the people to change their clothing and assemble the current outfits. Okay, hold on. So C is wearing the red... How do I do that? Oh, okay, I just clicked them, okay. And C didn't keep any of his clothes. And it doesn't match, so he has to have the blue shirt on. No one shirts and trousers match. It looks like C's the only one of us who didn't keep any of his original clothes. It looks like... Okay. So you kept your original clothes? Because you need to keep to be wearing something else? And someone has to have a different... You should have C's pants then if you have them. Right? That's a massive I've ever seen one. Consider this puzzle solved. Yay! Huh, wonderful. Hmm. <laughs> Nicely done. You notice he is the only one not wearing something from his original outfit, meaning he's not wearing anything white. You also know he's red trousers, so his shirt must be blue. Since A and B are each wearing one item of their own, you can deduce that A is dressed in a red shirt and B in blue trousers. With all that settled, all you have to do is place your remaining white items on the right places and the puzzle is solved. Nice. <laughs> Shirts and trousers that don't match are the epitome of Turkey. That's fashion rule number one. Rule number two? No one can pull off sack wings. Oh, with a swish suit of yours, you're golden. No swanky nightclub will turn you away, I guarantee it. I don't have any swanky nightclubs to go to, but okay. Whatever you're saying. Mm -hmm. 
He never did manage to meet Mr. Anderson in the way. Yes, what a pity. I had a feeling he'd provide us with a lead on the illusion box. Hey there, fellas. I haven't seen you around these parts before. I heard you chatting about Mr. Anderson and thought to myself, hey, I can help. Here, point him out. I just saw Mr. Anderson around here a minute ago. He shouldn't be too hard to spot with the bed, that bad and hat. Yep, he's a real gentleman. He always looks smart with his cane and a dapper little bow tie. Oh, and he doesn't wear glasses, in case you're wondering. Look, there he is now. Using the clues in the above statement, can you find a circle Mr. Anderson in the crowd? Crowd, crowd, bed, bird, bed, 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 bed. Very smart beard. Okay, so right, hold on. He has a cane? Let me see. A cane and a bow tie. Cane. I'm unsure if you're wearing a bow tie. Cane and a bow tie? What? You, 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 you don't have a bow tie. You don't have a cane. You don't have a cane. You don't have a cane. I can't fucking see you. <laughs> you're not a guy. You have a cane and a bow tie? I think I can work out her. Hmm. This is Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. Good eye. Looks like the wind tried to carry off Mr. Anderson's hat. <laughs> Good day, sir. I'm searching for one Mr. Anderson. Might you be him? The one and only, my friend. I'm with him to have the pleasure of speaking. The name is Herschel Layton. My friends and I have come to find ha have come to this fine place in search of the Elysian Parks. I thought a man of influence such as yourself might be able to offer some direction. The funniest thing I think is that his hat is almost like the same color. Like he's extremely bald in the first place. Look like wait, did he even lose his hat? Or is that just his actual <laughs> human head? <laughs> the illusion box, you say? Why would you want to go chasing after a thing like that? I take it you're familiar with it? Familiar? No, I've heard the rumors of course and I know it's referred to as Pandora's box. I also believe my dear mother once searched for the very box of which you speak. Interesting, please elaborate. <sighs> well, my birth mother died when I was very young. The mother I speak of is actually my mother-in-law, Sophia. She founded this village way back when, the kindest soul I've ever met. Sharp too. I married into her family, but she treated me like her own flesh and blood. And I never knew my own mother. Since I never knew my own mother, I suppose it would be fair to call Sophia my real mother. Even after my wife passed away, Sophia continued to treat me as one of her own. Sophia looked high and low for that box, but she never could find what she was looking for. So she made efforts of her own to search for it? Fascinating. Tell me, where might Sophia be now? She... she left us last year. In her last day, she spent a lot of time holed up in her room, writing. Sadly, I never found out why she was so intent on getting her hands on that box. I see. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Well, my mother may have known something about the subject, but she's... gone now. Now you know as much as I do. I regret that I couldn't be more help to you, sir. Not at all, Mr. Anderson. I've learned a great deal from our conversation. You have my thanks. Oh, one thing before you go, Mr. Layton. Please take a look around you. These picturesque hills, these happy people. Drepstone has been blessed with so much. Sophia built this place from scratch into a village full of warmth and camaraderie. Dropstone must never be allowed to wither and die like so many other villages. After all, this play place owes its current prosperity to the many sacrifices she made. Ah, oh, forget my ramblings. Once I start talking, I sometimes have trouble stopping. Enjoy your time in Dropstone and be well. Good day. Mm, looks like that was another dead end lead. I wouldn't say that, Luke. 
It would appear this village is inextricably linked to the Elysian box. I also find Mr. Anderson's choice of words interesting. I wonder what he meant by sacrifices. Well, that is something for us to ponder later. For now, let's make our way to the station. Alright, Professor. Oh dear, oh dear, the train's scheduled to depart any minute now, she's still not here. Everyone's efforts will have been in vain if she misses her train out of town, oh my, oh my. Maybe women just need more time to get ready for things like this, oh my, must she make me worry? <laughs> Excuse me, but are you waiting for someone? It's none of your business, we haven't even told the master about what we're doing. Look, perhaps it's best to leave him be. Sometimes it's best not to barge into the affairs of others. Well, if he doesn't want us to talk to him, maybe he shouldn't be thinking out loud. <laughs> You're not wrong, Luke. You're not wrong. Oh dear, I forgot to get apples for tonight's meal. Say, that reminds me of a puzzle I once heard. Would you care to hear it, sir? Oh, uh, what kind of question is that? Johnny and Thomas are each carrying some apples. If Johnny gave Thomas one apple, the two men would each have the same number of apples. Conversely, if Thomas gave Johnny two apples, Johnny would have three times the number of apples that Thomas has. Just how many apples are each of the men holding? Five and seven, because it's always five and seven. Mm-hmm. Just puzzle. I mean, technically, she met him earlier already, but still, it's just like, oh, I forgot to buy apples. Would you care to hear this puzzle, sir? Okay, sure. It wouldn't be absurd for Leighton to enter a room and immediately have a Rubik's Cube tossed at him. <laughs> for real. What I find so interesting is that we go into people's houses, into people's literal houses, and they're like, why did you come into my apartment? How, how did you get in here? It's like, okay, the door's open, but... Like, just... I wouldn't walk into someone's house just like that. Sorry. I'm... I'm eating. New stream where I don't eat something? Nah, impossible. Anyway, Johnny is holding seven, and Thomas is holding five. Because if Johnny gave Thomas one, they would both be holding six. And if Thomas gave Johnny two, he would be holding nine and three. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman. Just because no they put it unsolved. the different characters is still going to be the same numbers. <laughs> nice! Johnny has seven apples and Thomas has five. As you can tell, if Johnny gave Thomas one apple, both men would have six apples. Additionally, if Thomas decided to give Johnny two of his apples, Johnny would have nine apples in total, three times as many as Thomas. Hmm? That's the answer, right? So where will you be heading next, Professor Layton? Once our train is in working order, we'll be moving on to the next town. Oh, then I expect you run into the young mistress. She's leaving on the Monetary Express today. Should you bump into her, do say hello. And remember, please keep Miss Katia's trip a secret from the master. A very good secret you guys are keeping. Telling pretty much everyone about it. Or maybe they're just telling us, I don't know. The place is positively crawling with people, isn't it? Careful, Flora. If you don't watch where you're going, you're likely to run right into someone. Oh, sorry. This is also new to me that I forget to pay attention to where I'm going. Understandable. After all, it's quite different to what you're used to. Oh, Flora, you certainly seem to be excited. Just don't stand around gawking for too long or we might accidentally leave you behind. Is that 
Oh, look, there's another one over there. Oh, Professor? Luke? Where did you two go? <laughs> oh, no. Professor, floor is gone. Mm-hmm. Oh dear, we must have become separated in a crowd back there. Let's retrace our steps. It's going to be awfully hard to find out with all these people about. Now where could that girl have gone off to? <gasps> Flora, where did you run off to? Sorry, there were so many people that I must have lost you. I turned to look at something and before I knew it, you two were gone. Well, I'm relieved you found your way back to us. There's so many people around who know how long it could have taken us to find you. I'll be more careful from now and I promise. Although, you know, I, hear a few, I heard a few interesting things while I was wandering around over there. Oh, what did you hear? That a man in Bromi was asking around after the illusion box. If you can track him down, maybe he can tell us something we don't know. I heard from one person that he's been wandering around near the station. That is interesting news. So let's head to the station and see if you can find us wrong. Good on you, Flora. That's some top-notch intelligence you gathered out there. <laughs> oh, it's nothing. I mean, worst case, I would have just, like, if they actually lost each other for long, I would have just gone back to the train because they both, they, all of them plan to get back on the train, right? <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Gosh, I just can't, just can't decide. Hi there, do you need something or something? We are currently in search of an item known as the Illusion Box. Does the name ring any bells? The Illusion Box? Nope, never heard of it. But I do know a great puzzle about a box. Check it out. You have a box as shown below. Using the white cubes as standard units, the box is two cubes wide by three cubes long by two cubes tall. Two white cubes are permanently attached to the floor of the box. The of the four shapes A to D shown below can be placed together in the box to fill the box to the top with no gaps. Find a shape that doesn't fit into the box using the conditions described above and circle the letter next to it. I just said box so many times I did not even read like or comprehend what this thing wants from me. Well, we can put C down here. And then A and B on top so D doesn't fit. Is this puzzle a joke? A little. I think it would be harder if we hadn't, didn't have this picture. This should do the trick. And there we have it. <laughs> well, most games for a small kid, yeah, but then there's some of them where you're just like, that. no child will come up with this answer. Sharp thinking, D is the only shape of the four that doesn't fit. Was it hard to visualize the shapes fitting into the box? You must be some kind of puzzle genius. All right, what do you want to know again? I was wondering if you might know anything about illusion box. Let's see, let's see. Nope, haven't got a clue. If I were you, I'd try asking someone else. Let's see. <laughs> Thanks, girly. Big help. Hey there, good seeing you again. Tell me, how's the festival treating you? Make sure you enjoy it all while you can, eh? Truth is, I'd like to be out there having fun with you, but I've got posts to deliver. The directions I've received for my deliveries were a bit vague, though. Maybe you could help me? Oh yeah, sure.
Below our house is A, B, C, and D, each of which is a different color. Decipher each house's color from the following clues. Oh, the red house is closer to the pine tree than the blue house. The yellow house is closer to the lake than the green house. The green house is closer to the power line than the blue house. These are the yellow, blue, or green. Great, right, okay, hold on. D cannot be red, but the red house is closer to the pine tree than the blue house, so this one is red. And the yellow house is closer to the lake than the green house. Green house is closer to the power lines than the blue house. And now to test my theory. Ah. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Yeah, it's like you just go by okay, can it be Hmm. It can be three out of four options, so there's only one option left. That kind of thing makes it easier. That's right, this is one of those puzzles where you need to use the given conditions to deduce the answer. Is green was closer to a power line, and blue the closest house to lines of society? Not blue, yeah, definitely. Now I understand, right? I better get moving, no rest for the postman and all that. <laughs> done with my food so we can keep going i must admit i was skeptical at first but you really know how to communicate with those cows everyone's been busting a bunch to get drops so i'm ready for today's festivities thank goodness you saved the day it would have been a mess if that spat back there ruined the celebration yep everyone's been working like mad I spent all day yesterday making flags i'll put them up too and while i work we thought of a puzzle you want to hear it right of course of course i want to hear it you have a pristine white flag that you want to die into three sections as shown below. You have three dives. No two adjacent sections of the flag can be the same color. Each section can only be one color and you can change the number of size of these sections. If you aren't allowed to mix the dyes, how many distinct flag designs are possible? Oh god. Okay, well. I can go red green. Okay, well, let's see. I can go A, B, A. I can go A, C, A. And then I can also just leave it white. So A, let's call it D, A, D, A. I can go A, B, C. I can go A, B, B. I can go C B go D B I can go A C D I can go A D C One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mm 
And this is just using A as a starting thing all the time. I can do this exact same thing, but just use... Start off with B, so it could go B, A, B, B, C, B, 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 B. Math. I hate math. Stop making me do math, game. Here goes. I'm complaining about math, but this is the, still like the beginning of the game. This is not even the worst part yet. Stop thinking. Once you incorporate the white color of the unpainted flag into your designs, you actually have full colors you can work with. If you assign a color to the left section of the flag and list all designs possible, you get a total of nine variations. Multiply this number by four, which represents the number of colors at your disposal, to get the answer: thirty-six variation. The longest I've spent on a puzzle. <laughs> we did the extra puzzles for the first game. Um. One of the ending puzzles, the one where you had to... It was a weird shape. Wait, hold on. I, I can't write on this right now. Um, Game Plus Puzzle. Yeah, you have to imagine uh, where you had like some weird shape, like like this. Just imagine, right? Oh, oopsie, that counted. Um, no, 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 no. The one where you had to count what the perimeter is and was like, okay, you know that this line here is five and this is five, but then this here was longer. Yeah, the garden one, the garden one. I think we spent the longest on the garden one. I think we spent more than 20 minutes on that one because I could, like, even after knowing, even after knowing what the answer is, I couldn't understand how to get there, right? It's one thing to get the answer, but it's like, how do I get there? Pretty good, right? I may be getting older, but I can still cook up a mean puzzle. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, hi. This whole, ha a little, this whole, fast, whole festival is being put on by the Andersons, the wealthiest family in the village. As you're new here, let me fill you in on our family. Oh, yes, please. The Andersons live in a mansion at the north end of town. Makes you turn green with envy, eh? No. Anyway, Mr. Anderson has a young daughter who's grown up to become quite a beautiful young lady. Her name is Katya, and she's the most unusual combination of both beautiful and sweet. Plus, I hear she's very respectful towards her father, unlike most youngsters. The only thing kids these days love more than talking back to their parents are those baggy jeans! <laughs> oh! I'm sorry, I do believe you've gone off on a bit of a rant. Did you need something from me? Actually, yes. Tell me, madam, have you ever heard of a rare antique known as the Illusion Box? Hmm. That name's new to me. Hmm, I can't help you out at all, so will you leave me alone now? Oh, but you know, you did just remind me of a gem of a puzzle I know that concerns a box. What do you want? You want me to leave you alone, but you also want to give me a puzzle, like... Choose one! Two boxes shown below are actually the same box shown from two different angles. Using invisible faces as a guide, reassemble the pattern of the box by placing the tiles into the unfolded view of the box. Don't forget, each tile needs to go in on a correct place and face in the correct direction, so you may need to rotate the tiles with the stylus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. You go downward. God, okay, wait, let me let me think. What does this thing even go together? Go here. That means you go here. You go. How do I turn you? Mm -hmm. and this one. No, 
no, the triangle's correct. No, no, the triangle's fine. I think I got them. This should do the trick. Yeah. Huh. Wonderful. <laughs> Good job. Was it hard converting the 3D shape of the box into a flat 2D image in your head? <laughs> well, hand me, hang me on the washing line and call me a bath man. I never thought you solved that one. You seem like a nice man, so I'll be straight with you. I wouldn't talk about that box in these parts. But why? Well, it's complicated. Now I've given you my advice, so smart nap and follow it. <laughs> okay. Because fuck you, that's why. <laughs> what, you're still here? Tell me all you like, but all you get for your trouble is another puzzle. Okay. I won't complain about another puzzle, lady. In a far-off country, there's a king whose favorite pastime is showing off the latest possession he's collected. The subjects of the kingdom are forbidden from purchasing new items until the king has owned them for a month or so. Only once he's tired of his new purchase can the common folk finally buy that item for themselves. However, the other day, the king bought a new item that had him all but commanding his subjects to buy one as soon as possible. Circle that item. A telephone so he can tell all all of them immediately. This should do the <laughs> trick. Huh. Wonderful. Ah, wonderful. That's correct, the telephone is the answer. After all, the phone is much use if there's no one on the other end. Don't think you're hot stuff just because you solved some piveling puzzle. Still, watching you twist your brain for the answer was fun in its own way. Nice work there. Thanks, miss. Mr. Layton, do you have a moment? Certainly. How may I be of assistance? It seems you've done a great deal of investigating today. Tell me, during the course of your inquiries, you didn't hear anything about my daughter, did you? No, sir. I heard nothing. About your daughter Katie, who's planning on leaving this town behind? Katya, not Katie. Your daughter, sir? Yes, Katya. You see, she hardly ever comes home since her grandmother Sophia passed away. Sophia and my daughter were very close, so her death came as a great shock to Katya. If you should see her, would you please tell her that her father wishes she'd come home? If a fine gentleman such as yourself delivers the message, she just might listen. Unfortunately, our train is leaving soon, so I may not be able to be much help at all. Katya is my, no, our only child. She means everything to me, and I'd be forever in your depth if you could help me. I wonder what kind of person this Katya is. Your guess is as good as mine. But judging from her family and upbringing, I'd imagine she's both beautiful and refined. Steady on, Professor. Oh. I heard that you've been inquiring around the village about an antique known as the Illusion Box. Oh yeah, that thing. People say it kills whoever manages to price open its lid. Pandora's Box, they call it. Just found out about it during the course of my travels, but the box isn't what I'm really after. Well, then if I may be so bold as to ask, what are you looking for, sir? Found in town, it's nowhere to be found on any map. Place only the chosen may visit, the only way in I hear is on a monetary express. A train and its many mysteries have been a subject of my research for years. From what I can tell, this artifact you're after, this illusion box, is also tied to that town. Wow! Oh, so when can we set out for it? How do we get there? Yeah, that's the one detail I haven't managed to pin down yet. Maybe you whisper a password when you're on a train and whoosh, the track goes in a new direction. Anyway, it's probably something like that. Just have to keep searching until we find a way in. Interesting. Thank you for your time. Professor, did you hear that? I think we finally got a new lead on the illusion box. It's a bit early to celebrate, but it looks like our journey on the Monetary Express isn't over yet. Alright, you two. Let's start making our way back towards the station. Okay, Professor. Let's go. Hi. Yo, you got at least 30 puzzles under your belt? Well, who's a rock star now? Me! I solved 54! 
And I didn't say it wrong this time. I didn't mix up the four and the five. I'm proud of myself. How's the festival treating you, dude? Pretty righteous, huh? This train isn't ready to move quite yet, so while you're waiting, I'll lay the sweet puzzle on you. Oh, okay. Sammy has eight chains, seven links each. He wants to connect all these chains to make a necklace. The jeweler says that it will cost two pounds each time he opens and closes a single link. As shown below, Sammy could open one and each of the eight chains to make one long necklace. However, that will cost 60. And the truth is that there's a cheaper way to get the same result. Using the cheapest method possible, how much will it cost to make the necklace? What? Okay, hold on. Three says because each of me opens and closes a single link. I'm just no, I am. Um, I'm not understanding how he plans on making the necklace in the first place. I think that's what I'm saying. Because he's like, okay, he wants to pry open <laughs> to post one, one circular chain. <laughs> so like prying these things open and then connecting them, is that what they mean? It's like opening this, connecting it, so this will be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's why it will cost 16 because every time it costs him two pounds. And I want to make it cheaper. Opening one per sec. Okay, 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 okay. Thinking, I'm thinking. Jeweler says it's gonna cost just ah okay got it got it got it what if I just take these I open this one and use it to close these together so it's gonna cost me one two. If you just take apart one of the chains, you only need to open the, the one side. So you'd have one tire less chain because you used up the entire chain to connect these. And then it would cost 14. Because you only have seven. Seven that you connect. Please take my four. Yes! Thank you! This I feel like... Good. It feels like it would be more work Absolutely. on the other hand, I Leave guess. No puzzle unsolved. Mm? Score! Take one of semi seven link chains, break each link apart and use them to connect the remaining small chains together, as shown in the... Oopsie. As shown in the oopsie. Illustration. If Semi uses this method, he can get the necklace of his dreams for only 14 pounds. Good for him. Julia wants to be paid by the link. Yeah, right? Like, good for him. Get the necklace of your dreams, Sammy. Monetary Express is back in business, baby! Get ready to rock it, folks! Hey, you guys better hurry back to your seats, because this train is ready to rock! Hmm? 
Thank you so much. <laughs> Hmm? Half the town is standing there and they're like, oh yeah, don't let her dad find out that we're showing her. What's going on over away. there? Uh -huh. I believe we may have stumbled upon Mr. Anderson's dear daughter. Did you see how many people that was? That's a cracking send-off she's having. Cracking send-off. Considering the size of the party. I doubt she's just going on holiday. <laughs> Katya is the only daughter of Dropstone's most influential man, Mr. Anderson, and has boarded the Voluntary Express. Several villagers came to see her off, yet she travels alone. Where is Katya headed, and why is she making the journey there by herself? Oh! Look around and find out. I haven't saved in over an hour. <laughs> A diverging path. I just can't stop thinking about this phantom town we heard about. Could the rumors be true? Well, the next stop on this line is the perfectly normal town of Luxon Bell. Well, then, how do we get to the phantom town? That's an excellent question, but I don't have the answer, Luke. If the Monetary Express does indeed head for parts unknown, the crew will know something about it. Anything's funny, she just is. She's a very good character. Also, she has a lovely design. But I may be biased towards uh, purple hair. I beg your pardon, sir, but we're not open for business at the moment. Do visit us later. You're really close? Yes, you see, on the way to Luxembourg, there's a long, unlit tunnel we have to pass through. While in the tunnel, none of the scenic views our restaurant affords patrons will be visible. It is Mr. Beluga's wish that all patrons be able to enjoy the scenery while they dine, hence our temporary suspension of service. Wow, talk about a classy operation. Mr. Beluga has really thought of everything, hasn't he? Yeah. How's my little guy doing? I know it'd be tough without him around, but I didn't realize how lonely I'd get. Is he happy at least? Don't you worry, he's doing great. He'll be as fit as a fiddle before you know it. That's really good to hear. Don't let him be down, okay? I'm actually about to close up the kitchen and rest until we get to Luxon Bell. Also, the train shuts down for the lack of the trip, so you might as well go rest in your room. Okay. Not before I've talked to everyone else on this train, though. Yo! Finally, time to get down to business. It's been ages since I got to do some real work. What do you mean? Didn't you just finish repairing the train? Sort of, but before I can kick back, I've got to do- Oops! Oh, I mean nothing! Things are good! Uh-huh! Things are good, are they? Hello, child. Good day, sir. The name's Conrad. I'm a student from the village of Dropstown. I'm headed to Luxon Bowl, so it seems we'll be traveling together for a while at least. Here, yeah, uh, have you heard about the long tunnel on the way to Luxon Bowl? When a train passes through it, every light on board is switched off. Stranger still, once the train nears the tunnel, all access to the Lux carriage is cut off. What if someone needs to go to the toilet in the dark? Something very weird must be going on if they shut off access to the Lux carriage. Oh, is it all makes perfect sense. Why didn't I see it before? Look, I think I've worked things out quickly to the Lux carriage. Right behind you, Professor. <laughs> we weren't able to get in there earlier. Maybe we can get in there now. Probably not, but. Hmm. Mm. I so, so dearly wish that level 5 remakes these games, like HD remakes these games for Twitch. 
that the the map would work like it worked in a catriel and everything so they made that one work on one screen i mean i want it so badly <laughs> Next game does good. Yeah, hopefully. Good day, sir. I'm headed back to Election Bell where I teach the sciences. Where might you and yours be headed? Our destination is, well, flexible. You see, we're traveling in search of a relic called the Illusion Box. We've managed to find some anecdotal evidence suggesting the box is linked to a strange town. A random town not recorded on any map in human possession. Does this sound familiar to you at all? Oh, well, mercy me. You've got quite an adventure on your hands, haven't you? While I can't say I've heard of the particular town you speak of, I can offer you another tale of hope. Some say the Monetary Express stops at an eerie town of terrorized by a vampire. First rumors of a vampire and now fandom nouns? Goodness, it's like we're living in a mystery novel. A vampire? In my fandom town? Surely you just. Here we are, the deluxe carriage. I don't think it's written on that sign on the door. Actually, it appears to be a puzzle of some sort. I have a hunch that if we can solve the puzzle, we can gain access to the carriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, one second. To pass through the store, Luke and Leighton must arrange the symbols according to the following rules. The star must be next to the moon, the X must be second from the top. Mm. The circle must be somewhere above the diamond, and the moon must be located two places below the diamond. Give it a shot! Okay, hold on. The X must be second from the top, that's easy. The star must be next to the moon. The moon must be located two places below the diamond. Two places below the diamond. Yeah, one, two. The circle must be somewhere above the diamond. The star must be next to the moon. <laughs> yeah, it seems right. Consider this puzzle solved. Huh, wonderful. You in? Good job cracking that coat. That was easier. If only it was that easy to <laughs> reach a deluxe carriage and a very expensive train all the time. There we are, the door's open now. Mm -hmm. Goodness, look at this place, it's off the scale. Yes, it's far more luxurious than the standard carriages. These tickets must cost a pretty penny. I don't see the difference, but maybe that's just me. Hello! Oh, Professor, this room is just breathtaking. And one and a half times as big as our room to boot. But she's look at how super squishy the sofa is. Come now, don't jump on the sofa. Luke, remember that discussion we had about how gentlemen should act in front of ladies? Oh, you're right, it's so squishy! Whee! <laughs> okay, let- Hey, what are you doing here? Radical surprise, dudes! Anyway, sorry to burst in on the party, but I'm just here to snazz up the rooms. Let's see, put them here. Negative side, that's not good. Mm. Are you there, smart looking dude? I mean you, man! Me, good sir. Uncle Beluga, uh... I mean, the boss told me she just the place up for some flowers. Can you work out where I should put these things to make the full area smell nice? Of course, it shouldn't be too much trouble to find a spot for flowers as lovely as these. I also like that, like, three hours ago, he was like, ooh, can't let you guys in here. You're not deluxe carriage passengers. And now we're, that we're actually standing here, he's like, we got in here. I wonder why. Hmm, I actually don't wonder. Can you help me real quick? <laughs> There's nothing like freshly cut roses to boost your spirits. Can you help Sammy fresh up the whole carriage with the fragrance? Touch the square where you started to place a rose. The fragrance of each rose 
reaches two squares in all directions but can't penetrate walls. With the fragrance of two or more roses of a lab, the resulting smell will be overpowering, so make sure to keep your roses spaced out. Touch an existing rose to remove it. Consider That's this some strong soft. roses. Huh. Wonderful. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those were just enough to freshen up the carriage. Yeah, how's that? Oh, pet delicious. It's not crazy, but it makes a statement. I'm sure it'll go down and treat with the boss man. Well, anyhow, kick back, relax, and enjoy the rest of your ride on the Molentary Express. It's lovely in here now. Mm, yes, quite nice, I'd say. Go back to our task at hand. We've given this place a once over and come up empty handed. A gentleman can very well go barging into other people's rooms, so let's return to our room. But, oh, Professor, do we have to? It feels like it's got so late. Can we just stay here for now? Even fluffing than all we've got. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's try to leave, right? It's the strangest thing. All of a sudden, I'm so tired. What's the matter, Flora? Uh, uh, all of a sudden, I'm sort of sleepy too. All right, you two. This is no time for jokes. Oh dear, I'm suddenly quite tired myself. Yeah. Gee. Hmm, I wonder how that happened. And what's going on out there? Am I dreaming? Two trains pass in the darkness of the long tunnel. Move them around so that each locomotive ends up on the opposing track while keeping its carriages in the same order. The only carriages that don't need to end up in the oppos opposing track are the number two carriages of both trains. You did not appreciate this puzzle. No. We'll see how that goes. One second. I had to resold these fries. There was not enough sold on these fries. Bah. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So the number two stays where it is, or is going to end up in the same place as it started. I have sold here. Yeah. No. No. Listen. I put sold on them because they were not salted enough. That's the entire thing. Okay, well, let's try. You don't have really have a lot of space where you can... Keep some of them. <laughs> Shut down! Mm. Oh, okay, okay. I get... Ah, oh, gotcha. What if I just... Move you out of the way and then I have the one over here and then two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh my 
I gonna get the four? Oh, wait. Ha! Ah. Let's use it on your bottom, please. Really on a latent train lately Let's while we're doing a latent train puzzle. Latent's apprentice. <laughs> Hi, Selig. <laughs> How are you? That's right. The two trains speed off into the darkness, each carrying the number two carriage of the other. Oh, I would just wish they would stop yawning. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm? My word, I must have fallen asleep on the sofa. How careless of me. Do you know what happened in that tunnel loop? Sorry, Professor, but I slept through the whole thing too. And I had the strangest dream. In my dream, part of the Monetary Express switched tracks while we were in the tunnel. Switched tracks? You mean to say one of the train's carriages is now riding different rails? It might not have been a dream after all. If one carriage did split off from the train, it would no longer be bound for Luxembourg. Maybe that carriage is how you get to the Phantom Town. I'm beginning to suspect that you ride on the money, Luke. I hope the Phantom Town isn't as creepy as it sounds. <laughs> no, Luke, no worries. Everybody get ready to rock! The next stop is Frozen! Come on, passengers, let me hear you scream! Frozen, <laughs> How could I have missed this? Do you recall how this ticket was missing a destination? Well, it seems that the destination was staring us in the face all along. Really? But where, Professor? <laughs> eating lunch now, that's good. I was eating too. <laughs> Friend of here is a ticket at Leighton and Luke found in Dr. Schrader's flat. At first glance, the ticket appears to have no destination written on it, but when you look at it in just the right way, the ticket discloses its destination, the town of Four Sons. The key to spotting the destination is the number that has been cut out of the ticket. Can you work out which number must have been there? Use the ticket in the instruction booklet to puzzle this one out. Oh yeah, sure, sure, hold on. Let me just, hold on. Let me just, <clears throat> I grab the instruction booklet. Yeah, that's right. Let me just grab the instruction booklet. Okay, let me just grab that one. Oh, yes, okay. This is how it goes, but yeah, there was a... The ticket was in there. In the actual physical game. Ah, the days of physical booklets. You wish they would still do that, right? <laughs> I have mine, definitely, but I, I don't have the game case here. That's at my parents' house. I wish they did that more often. I love... I love the little booklets that would also like sometimes detail game characters and or like short bits about the sto the story. Like, why do I even have such big game cases nowadays if there's nothing even in there? Like, why are the Switch game cases this big? They don't even put any booklets in there, and the game itself is so small. CD track. Yeah, I love. I have all of mine stuff left. Maybe you saw it had a coding number needed on the CD case. Oh, cool! That was cool whenever they did that, yeah. Anyway, we're missing a two here, by the way. This should do the trick. <laughs> huh, wonderful. Ah. Excellent! The missing number is two. If you fold the ticket as shown and line up the two sets of numbers, they form letters that spell out the word fold sense. Looks like the ticket's destination was there all along. You're gonna make a game, you make it so you need the extra booklet or something, you know, it's just a PDF. <laughs> yeah! I mean, that's, that's, that's also fine, why not? How much some characters was entirely written from a kid? Oh, yeah! Aww. It's so sad that they don't do that anymore. Actually. <laughs> you know what? Actually? For the... 
I don't remember if it was the first or the second. But one of the Atelier Rise special editions, the, Japan the Japanese edition, had an art book. Commentary, right? We don't have the art book. Like, not even the original, just not translated because I didn't have the money to translate it, but just straight up not. They just didn't give us the book. Because they would have had to translate it. I'm like, okay, so I'm buying a physical special edition of a game. And I don't even get what is in the original because, ooh, that would have needed more work. Gotcha! <laughs> Still mad about that. At the game with thick booklet and a huge map. I mean, the Nino Kuni on the DS, you actually had to have the physical thing because you get, got an entire booklet detailing the spells. Like, you couldn't play the game without that booklet. They changed that for the subsequent releases, but. Ah, yeah, 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 mad. I just like having something in my hand. I get it. Pertaining to the I game. I suppose that means we've almost reached our destination. Yes. Whoa, this is strange. When did it get so dark? What do you mean? <laughs> I do believe we've arrived at the next stop. I don't see Flora, Professor. Where could she be? Hi, you two. Glad to see you finally awake. Flora, where did you get off to? I'm sorry, but the carriage was really stuffy, so when we stopped, I went outside for some air. You went out alone? Are you crazy? It's dangerous out there. Who knows what kind of oddballs could be out lurking around? Well, I'll be more careful from now on. What's your tone, Luke? A gentleman always remembers to treat a lady with kindness and respect. Now, since we're all back together, why don't we get off this train and see where we are? They change some of the goodies to cheaper more. To cheaper. <laughs> mm. The ticket was for full sense, a destination accessible only to those riding in a particular carriage on a voluntary express. It would seem that Dr. Schrader must have visited full sense sometime before his murder. Get off the train. No! Gonna make this little man do some exercises. That's what we're gonna do. I'm not so good at moving and stuff. You're gonna be just fine at moving, my little boy. Kaboom! Poor man got blinded. I'm getting the hang of this walking thing. <laughs> this walking thing. Good job. If only losing weight was this easy. And now we do the exact same thing again, but just make him walk a little further. Got any snacks around here? Don't hold out on me. trying to make we're trying to make him lose weight so it's good that his level goes down oh oh hold on did i put it in the wrong oh fuck yeah hold on this way this one needs to go for that My got bad. any snacks around here don't go yeah down on me. i will life Man's getting blinded. Hey, 
suddenly I've got energy to spare. Wow. I need someone to put me into this thing as well to make me take some steps. I went out. I went outside earlier. But... Ew. <laughs> Ew, leaving the house. <laughs> Yeehaw! This place gives me goosebumps. Yes, I'd second that. I'm sticking close to you too. Oh, oh my God, these are the pictures of the town. Classic autocar. Indeed, and old ones from the look of it. Judging by their condition, I'd say they're at least 30 years old. Wow. How'd you know? Oh, that's right. You're an archaeologist. Of course you'd know. Now, Luke, don't tell me you actually forgot. You leave a trail of books for me? Aww. <laughs> well, we'd best press on. What is going on here? I don't know, but it's strange. <laughs> Minutes after Professor Leighton Luke and Flora's arrival in full sense, the Rembrandt train station transforms into a gleaming, ornately decorated building right before their eyes. What caused a sudden change to the station's appearance? Oh, I don't know. Following rumors of the Elysian box, the Professor, Luke, and Flora set foot in a strange town. But cautious as they were, nothing could have prepared them for the events to follow. Hmm. Chapter 4 The Phantom Town of Four Sons. So, this is the Phantom Town we heard about, huh? It's like something from a horror film. I found the place unsettling too, but we mustn't let that keep us from our investigation. Who knows what kind of valuable information we might find here about the Elysian box? You know... Is there no nicer word? Aside from box. Because the German word we use for it is Schatulle, and like that sounds way nicer than just box. This is Pandora's box. Fancy running into you here? Hello, howdy, hi, and all that. Hey, you're. Postman, yep. Post to deliver here, but it's always dark when I come, so it takes forever. No wonder the people here always seem so on edge. Well, that's all the more reason for me to bring a little sunshine into everyone's life at the post. Wow, you deliver letters all the way out here? I certainly do, and have a schedule to keep while doing it. So on, to the, on that note, I'll be off. See you around. It would seem our friend the postman works a very, very right area for delivery. How can you cover drops down in full sense every single day? Two towns are so far apart, it would be simply impossible. You might think so, Luke, but our world is full of inexplicable phenomena. This but more no money. I suppose so. Doors bogs. Could I really not have a nicer word? 
It's part of the game, it's like an honesty game. <laughs> to be fair though, me too. Early on, like a few hours ago, I said, oh, we don't actually spend that much time on the train. Yeah. <laughs> Do we? Do we not spend that much time on the train? <laughs> In my in my head, I was already here, thinking to myself, Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes! I'm gonna be here I immediately. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Are you alright there, Flora? You don't look well. I'm not sure, I just started feeling sick all of a sudden. You're as white as a sheet. We'll find a place for you to rest straight away. I didn't see any hotels. If there were any, you'd think there'd be a sign or something. Despite a lack of advertising, I'd say one of those buildings over there is a hotel. Oh! Okay. Memory speedrun again, kinda, yeah. Cover cask and jewel case, all of implications are different from what the box is. Containers too generic, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah! Because it's not a jewel case. Mm. Well, guess the German language is just better that way. Not four hours worth. To be fair, to be fair, obviously, I mean, I'm reading, I'm reading everything out loud. And I'm also just like, sometimes not really getting anywhere because we're talking about other things. So I would argue maybe it's not a full four hours until you get here, but it's certainly a little longer than you think. Like, we've solved 59 puzzles to get here. Yeah, no, it's a casket or coffer. You're very, very, very. This is an hour into the game for you. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. The room, what you've missed out so far on is that we are trying to find uh, the Elysian box, Pandora's box, whatever, because it um, presumably killed. Our good friend, uh, and Dr. Andrew Schrader, who was researching it and got it into his possession, and we found him dead in his own house. He sent us a letter detailing, like, oh, I finally got this box in my possession, uh, and I'm researching it, and we got that letter to, that was post them two, two days ago. And then we go to his place, and he's dead on the ground, and we found the ticket. To this train, so now we're trying to find the actual box to figure out any details because he asked us to continue his research in case, in the unlikely case, anything happened to him. The unlikely case. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> one puzzle per minute for one hour. Hey. Near the town station, uh, f near the town train station, are uh, four buildings standing in a row. One of these four is supposedly the local hotel, though it lacks a sign. Even so, if you study the area carefully, you should be able to tell which of the buildings is the hotel. Can you look at which of these four buildings is the hotel? This is an episode of Cena. I wish you were the friend. You think someone has to remind you to keep you from the in this too? <laughs> Pandora's box, yeah. Anyway, the building that is a hotel is C because this is H O T E L. If you look at this, I feel like it's a little hard harder to see on stream, but it's C. Here it goes. There we go. That was almost too easy. That's right. The windows, the clock, and the door of the building C spell out the word hotel. Oh, it's a new tea greeting. Yay. How are you doing, Flora? Any better? A little bit. I think that with some rest I'll be back to my old self. Flora, Luke and I are going back out to learn more about this town. Why don't you stay here for a while and rest? Yes, take it easy for a while, Flora. We'll be back before long. Thanks, Luke. Be careful out there. You too, Professor. You think Flora's going to be okay? I wouldn't fret too much, Luke. She may just be exhausted from our long journey. I think our best course of action is to gather whatever information we can and hurry back to the hotel. After all, a gentleman never keeps a lady waiting. 
I did not read that. Something about Flora has left the group. <laughs> is it ever really important who's actively in your party? I don't remember them, like, giving this much attention to it. The whole, ooh, this person's in your party right now, blah 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 blah. No one needs all the stuff on in the train! <laughs> Well, the one on the train was at the l in the luxury apartment. What an elegant flower! It smells so nice. All on the subject of flowers, tell me, Luke. Have you ever heard this puzzle? Is it another one where I have to put a bunch of flowers in? Yeah. Nothing smells quite as sweet as freshly cut roses. Can you fill the room with a delightful fragrance? Let's just go with your stylus to place a rose. The fragrance of each rose reaches two squares in all directions, but can't penetrate walls. If the blah blah blah, this exact fucking thing is the last one. Never really matters. Mmm, true. This covers a lot more than I thought it would. Here goes! That was almost too easy! Yeah, it was almost too easy! With those roses in place, the whole room will smell great! There we are, that takes care of that puzzle! Nothing creates a feeling of tranquility in a room quite like a fresh bouquet. I'll say, those flowers in the Monetary Express's deluxe rooms really relaxed me. Oh yes, the ones that the conductor place in the rooms are very soothing. A little too soothing! Gosh, it's so obvious, I can't imagine why I didn't think of it until now. What do you mean, Professor? Luke, think back to when our train carriage switched tracks. Can you remember anything? Well, honestly, I don't remember much. I dozed off during all that, so everything's a bit foggy. Of course it is. The sudden sleepiness we experienced was no coincidence. Furthermore, I don't believe it was mere chance that we awoke upon our arrival in full sense. No, I'd say our little nap was part of a larger plan. What plan would that be? Where to venture, I guess. I'd say Sammy's roses contain some kind of extra ingredient. We sent everyone to sleep so that one of the carriages could switch tracks. Precisely, my boy. I'll bargain that only those riding in the deluxe carriage were taken away to full sense. <laughs> Think they're easier than the first games? Eh. Mm -hmm. I feel like with these, I rem like uh, I remember more of them. Yo, I'll be here resting. You two be careful out there. We will, Flora. Do feel bad as soon. All right. Bye bye. There goes the little precious screen time you have. Everything I've seen leads me to believe that Dr. Schrader visited Full Sense. The Illusion Box and the facts we need to solve the mystery of his death are close by, I'm sure of it. Do you think whoever stole the Illusion Box might be hiding here as well? It's still too early to tell, but I know if I don't know if we can work out where Dr. Schrader ventured out here in the first place. Now our best course of action is to search for anything connected to the Illusion Box. Let's get to it then. Lead the way, Professor. <laughs> I say no, it's my boy, that's No, 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 pretty good. <laughs> Hi, Vani! <laughs> well, to be fair, my stream times have been all over the place recently, so it's it's no wonder. <laughs> How are you? Yo. Welcome to Full Sense, where you can dream big and make those dreams a reality. Want to get stinking rich? And Full Sense making a huge, huge fortune is Charles Clark. Let me guess, you two came here to get your hands on some of the hurts and money, am I right? Why did I say it like that? What hurts and money? Came all the way here and you don't know about the hats and fortune? Ah! It sounds wrong. No matter how I say it, it coupled with an English sentence, it just sounds wrong. Especially with walking sleeping? Ain't that a mood? That's <laughs> rich, Paul. Here's the story. A long time ago, the big cheese here in Full Sands, Duke Herzen, found the mother for gold deposits. There was so much gold, you couldn't spend it in a lifetime. 
Then, not too long ago, the old man croaked and now his money sits abandoned in his castle. How's that for an interesting story? Quite. However, we're not here for treasure. Rather, we seek an item known as the Elysian Box. You may also have heard it referred to as Pandora's Box. Pandora's Box? Isn't that an offer? Can't really help you, to be honest. Right. Worth the try. Mark my word, Samuel, it's here in town, I can guarantee you. You are to scour every inch of this place and bring it back to me as soon as you find it, okay? Come on, Uncle, do you really think it's everything people say it is? I don't know, it kind of sounds like a load of baloney to me. Am I just playing tricks on me? Could have sworn you just told me that my information was wrong. You're no position to be lecturing me on the subject, now get out there and start looking. Hey, okay, no need to blow a gasket, I'm going. Do you think Mr. Beluga and the train conductor were talking about, Professor? It would appear that they too are out on the hunt for something. Look, Professor, what on earth could that be? Some strange sort of book. Perhaps someone dropped it while running about town. Yikes, take a budget of this crazy symbol on the cover. Let's have a look. Someone seems to be in the shape of a goat. Well, whatever it is, it gives me the heebie-jeebies, but I do want to know what's written inside. It's hard to tell. These locks mean we can only read the first entry. So, the symbol intrigues me. Say, Professor, maybe somebody in that antique shop over there can tell us something about it. Excellent idea, Luke. Let's begin our investigation there. The old diary option has been ended to the trunk! Baloney's actually spelled Bologna when talking about the meat. I hate... How do you say lasagna? 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 In English? Beluga seems to be working semi like a dog, sending him all over town in a frantic search for some unknown item. It's unclear why Beluga would set up a secret terrain line connected to full sense, but it's clear this item is very important to him. Could it be? Exact same. Mmm, okay. Lasagna. Lasagna. Lasagna! Hey, the potato. The hamster mini game I would always do like in one go. Once I had all of the items for it. I met the most enchanting girl at the ball we held last night. These parties are usually a complete bore, but her presence changed all that. As a duke's son, the unfortunate reality is that most people are overly polite and fawning towards me. But this girl was warm and real, and treated me like she did everyone else. It was very refreshing indeed. I do hope to see her again. Lasagna. Lasagna is so good, it is. It is. But me personally, I feel like it's exhausting to make lasagna myself, so I don't have it as often as I would like. <laughs> Hi, Chelmy. Not for anything else, pasta. Oh, no, I love the sauce. I just love the Chanel sauce. This reads all the ways people are spells. <laughs> yeah! It's almost like the Am I Pregnant? Pregnant video, but for lasagna. Inspector Chelmy, where did you come from? Hm, took the words right off my mouth, laddie. Wasn't expecting to see you two in a place like this. After some feet walk and drop stone, I was able to deduce that this town and the Illusion Box are linked. The trade had stockpiled quite a stack of research on the Illusion Box. Criminal I'm in pursuit of more likely than not killed the doctor to get his hands on the box. So instead of chasing the man, I decided to chase the box. When I find it, I find the culprit. Brigante! Pergonant! Yeah? <laughs> Still video. Ah, that's a solid bit of reasoning there. I didn't think Inspector Chelly was that sharp. Eh, did you say something like that? Uh, no, sir, not a word. Good, because I've got no time for idle chit chat. Got a murderer to catch and cart back to London. Come along, Barton. We're leaving. I mean, yes, sir. 
Pregnant? Yeah. <laughs> so good. Good day. Are you out shopping for anything in particular? I apologize, but we're not here to shop today. The a few things we'd like to ask you about, however. Firstly, there's this book we found. We were also wondering if you'd ever heard of an antique known as the Illusion Box. Oh dear, here we go with the box again. You know, you're the third person to ask about it today. A third? The three detectives you saw were just asking about it, and half an hour ago there was a young lady. She seemed interested in knowing whether anyone had been searching around town for the box. Hmm, can you describe this young lady? Oh, she was quite a beauty. She wasn't a local, but she had a face that seemed somewhat familiar. And the officers, well, they said they were here on an official police investigation. Tell you what I've told everyone to else today. I wish I could help, but this box here after is news to me. One of my customers, I forgot who, mentioned something about the box having quite a history behind it. If the thing was ever in full sense, it could have been in the Hudson Museum. I suggest you check there. Where well, might we find this museum? Just look for the big building in the middle of town in the north side. The museum houses a wealth of documents celebrating the history of our town. This is all extremely useful. Thank you for the suggestion. We'll be sure to pay the museum a visit. Oh, before you run off, did you mention that you had also found a book? Uh, yes, that's right. Please, feel free to take a look at it. Hmm, quite an unusual construction for a book of its age. Lovely work and very rare, I'd say. Do you happen to know anything about the symbol on the book's cover? I was just about to comment on how familiar that symbol seems, though it has no significance I'm aware of. I must confess that what drew my eye to the book was its locks. All gadgets of this sort always fascinate me. Its instruction is very basic, so you might be able to open the locks with any old key you can find. As a matter of fact, here, why don't we see if this one has to try? Think of it as my way of thanking you both for showing me something interesting. Many thanks, my good man. Oh, it's too bad we didn't find out more about that book. It certainly would have been nice, but we'll have to put the book aside for now. It's time to pay a visit to the Hudson Museum. I wonder who came up with that last name. Who in the right mind thought, yes, this is what we do. I had the great fortune of bumping into that girl from the ball again today. She's the daughter of some fancy lord or another, and it shows. Her intellect is smashed only by the grey she displays. To be honest, I'm quite taken with her and have already started courting her. However, I fear the father seems less than pleased with the idea. Father! Let me go! We're all about you, Missy. I know you've been asking around town about that box. Oh, but I just... And before you say anything, I don't care who your old man is, no one's above the law. In my eyes, anyone out chasing the illusion box moves to the top of my list of suspects. Oh, you've got it all wrong. Um, sir, if you wouldn't mind. What is it, Barton? Can't you see him in the middle of something here? Uh, yes, about that, sir. The criminal we see killed a man to obtain the illusion box, so the villain should have it already. If the young lady was our culprit, she'd have no need to ask around about the box, in my opinion, sir. I said so now, Barton. <laughs> I don't recall ever asking for your analyze analysis of the situation. I'm terribly sorry, sir. Please forgive my momentary lesson judgment. I'll just be going now. Martin, get back here this instant, you pilcher! <sighs> hey, that's the girl we saw at Drapstone Station. What was her name? Katie? No, that's not it. I believe you're thinking of Mr. Anderson's daughter, Katya. Yes, that's the one. I wonder what she's doing here. You can't want what she's doing here. I <laughs> got good balls. Good balls are not going to help me here. This game doesn't feature a casino. Oh no! <laughs> ah, my good sir, how did you get in here, huh? European day stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of monks I've seen before. Hey, I know you. And I know Faye, because that's what brought you, me, and that swankly tea set of yours together. Now that we're all reunited, I say we celebrate with a cup of tea. Brew me something nice, would ya? You want us to make tea for you? I 
trade with a snapper, but nothing fancy. A cup of soda's classic will do the trick. So easy to make, even a baby could do it. So easy. A uh, baby with a magic tea set, that is. Anywho, all you need is some ice to leave, a little roast berry, and a sprinkle of citronius. Oh, I know, I've made that one. Fantabulous! A smile spreads across Duncan Garden's face. He seems resto restored and cheerful. And not a bad cup of tea you make, shorty. Of course, you couldn't have pulled it off without my expert direction, so don't get caught. You know, this town is filled with thirsty folks. You've got the tea set, so the way I see it is your responsibility to help people. You managed to help everyone out with a tea break, good things will happen. This I promise. Gosh, Professor, what do you think? How much good can we really do with just a cup of tea? Oh, a fair bit, Luke. A gentleman never underestimates the power of a hot cup of tea. Hmm, well, when you put it like that, I suppose it couldn't hurt to spread his unhappiness. It's stashing, scarfing. Yeah, I think you told me last time as well because I was like, I have no idea how to pronounce this man's name. And I never remember. You sure did! Don't, don't hard, purple heart me. There's only so many pronunciations I can remember at one time. There are you boys are from out of town, am I right? Certainly, yeah. How do you work that out? There are, because I'm too. Plus, I've got a trick for working out who's local and who's not. Oh, that sounds handy. Can you teach me how to do it too? There sure, why not? Enough of it. The only one I've been feeling a bit down lately. If you can make me go her, her, her again, I'll show you how to do it. Well, I imagine we might be able to whip up a classic cup of tea that will excite your taste buds. That sounds delicious! I haven't had tea in a, a, a very long time. Ages. What's something that's got a uh, classic tea taste? Classic tea taste. Pink carpet. <laughs> there we go. Now that's good too. Your smile spreads across Derby's face as he lets out a contented her her. Her her, now that's the stuff. I told you the classics really are the best. That goes for tea too. Well, about end of the deal, so spill the beans. How do you tell outsiders from locals in this town? That's a piece of our pudding. Let's get up real close and give him a sniff. Seems like most people from out of town smell like roses. I see. Purple has a ward in the yes for injury sustained and war no good critically injured in pronunciation. What well, damn! Okay. I'm a veteran. <laughs> I'm a survivor. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> ah, golly, you two are running around a lot. Makes me tired just watching you. Her, her, her. Thank you for that. Why don't you rest a while with, with this puzzle I've got here? I'm a survivor. Here, four circular flower pads, each with a radius of 10 meters. The way to arrange forms the space between them. Can you find the area in meters squared of the section color red below? You know the width of the border around the flower beds when calculating your answer. What the fuck, actually? Just imagine that this one has uh, one as well, but hey, the mouse sure doesn't like me. Nope. Do we have the we hate math because we're gay thing in the cool thought? I don't actually know if we I don't know. <laughs> you 
<laughs> yeah. What's this? You have so many quotes nowadays. I love the quotes, they're really good. No, we don't have it on the quote board. We have, ooh, we have 59 quotes, by the way. But very good. Yeah, you clipped it back then, but I didn't have the quote board yet. That's why. Ugh. I don't like this puzzle. Consider this puzzle solved. Huh. Wonderful. Ah. Nice job. The red section has an area of 400 square meters. If you quarter the space between the flower beds and fit the pieces to the circle as shown on the diagram on the right, you can turn the circle into a square. Once you do, the size of the square will have the same length as the diameter of a single flower bed, 20 meters. Square this number to get the area in your answer. I don't need to shut up. I don't think anyone's ever wrongly accused me of not being funny. I think I'm hilarious. Dolly, you went through that puzzle so fast it made my hat spin. You're just one of those people who does everything, huh? I got tired just thinking about it. And I can make more tea now. Spicy, my whole mouth is tingy now. So it's quite a healthy dose of pepper cherry in there, no doubt about it. I kind of like it, it makes me feel very chirpy. Next time I'm feeling down, I know what to reach for. Yes, a good cup of cherry boost can be quite nice every once in a while. Alright. What a peculiar blend this is. Subtle and spicy all at once. And sweet at the end as well. Especially like how the initial heat helps to balance out the sweetness that comes later. Never imagined spicy and sweet could work together so well. Mm. This one, <laughs> it's Dream Spice, sounds a little like one of the drinks we could have made in uh, Coffee Talk, actually. Ah, Coffee Talk. My beloved. You have the courage to use reading greens to showcase the wonders of ILT. <laughs> yes, I've just seen Inspector Chelmy over there. No need for alarm, Luke. He's likely just gathering information about Dr. Trader's case. He says he's finally worked out that the key to solving it lies here in full sense. <laughs> Maybe the inspector's almost got a grip of the situation for once. So let me confirm. This here is the man you've witnessed asking around about the Legion box. Know that about it? Yep. Man, the photograph is the one. I remember that face anyway. Well, that seals the deal. Just as I suspected. My instincts are never wrong. Come along now, Barton. We're moving on. Hmm? Oh, yes, sir. Right behind you, sir. This man looks like if someone drew Donkey Kong as a human. In my personal, humble opinion. I like games where you mix things for customers. Monkey Donkey Chicken! Like, you cannot tell me this man doesn't. Like, look at him! Look at him! Also, to be fair, I feel, I feel like his hair looks like the top of a banana, so. Ugh. Who seems to be ailing you? 
Every day I stand out here for hours and hours, almost standing makes my knees creak like crazy. I should really start scheduling a mid-shift break or something. That's a lovely idea, actually. Being a doorman does sound like an exhausting job. Perhaps a cup of tea would help restore your spirits. I'd be happy to brew you some. Okay, but I should warn you, working at a five-star restaurant has made me a fuzzy drinker. If you can brew up something that tastes mild with a hint of spice, I'll be a happy camper. My nana. My nana. to learn to keep my hands away from these fucking mosquito bites. Ah! <laughs> mm, that's a good tea. Felix seems restored and ready to do some karate kicks. I know a good tea when I taste it. This tea, my friend, is simply out of this world. Working as a doorman in the best restaurant in town, I have to be on the ball 100% of the time. I mean, back in the day, even the Duke's son and his fiance used to come here. You've got customers like that, service has to be perfect from the second they turn up. Wow, oh, Fulton's is elite, eh? That's right, little man. Come to think of it, I haven't seen those two for a while now. I really hope they visit us again sometime. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure kicking would be his strong suit. was in this room, Jesus Christ, I can't see. But I can't let you in like that. We got a dress code, see? Now, if you'd be so kind as to hand me your hat. Very well. You're saying that we can't enter if I give you this hat? What? Why is that a puzzle? Since Felix has requested that you hand over a hat, can you find another hat buried in the pattern below? The hat you're looking for will be the same shape and size as the black one shown below, but may not be facing the same direction as the example hat. Use the stylus to outline your answer and touch submit. The dress code must be where he's outside. they gonna see what I mean yeah. you think this was going to count I'm so afraid it's not going to count A safe state. I don't care. <laughs> Consider this puzzle solved. Yeah, okay. Whew. And there we have it. Listen, I don't trust any circles that I have to draw in this game anymore. Sneaky! Good job spotting a hidden hat. Now the professor has a hat to give to Felix. There we are, as requested, I've provided you with a hat. Huh? Uh, Professor, I don't think that's quite what he meant. Be it as it may, I'm not taking this hat off. Let's go, Luke. I was really looking forward to dropping in for a snack. It takes a very special occasion for this hat to come off. That's all I have to say on the matter. I think this is too deep for me. <laughs> 
Yeah. There's only some very special occasions for this specific hat to be anywhere that is not on his head. to never shop for furniture in his presence? Why? Why furniture? Because you're doing mighty fine. Oh. The man doesn't subconsciously include the hat in bed. <laughs> Maybe. Have a look at these photos of the town, Lou. Whoever took them has a fine eye for detail. If you look closely, you can see that the pictures aren't quite in chronological order. Do you think you can work out the order in which a picture should be displayed? Walks into someone's someone's workshop immediately starts scrambling pictures. Four photographs decorate the wall of Joseph's photo studio. Each photo depicts the same area and was taken at the exact same time of day. However, each photo was taken at a different point in time, and if you look carefully, you can work out the order in which these pictures were taken. Enter your answer using the letters attached to each picture, starting with the earliest, like so. A B C D. Mm. I wonder why the photographer is called Joseph. Photographer is called. Okay, let's see. What's the difference in all of these? In B, there's someone in here. C doesn't have a street light yet. There's some. What is that? The A in restaurant doesn't work anymore? So that would be. Last one. Wait, no, there's no one in there. It's broken. I thought it was a shadow of someone standing in there. I guess the window got broken, huh? So this building is not here yet. So C D B A. Never been able to spell restaurant. Restaurant. That. What the hell? B. A. <laughs> hmm. Let's see if this works. Leighton's apprentice strikes again! Good job, Luke. Good eye! The correct order is CDBA. In C, the street light has yet to be installed, but indeed a light has been built. In B, there's a new building in the background and the restaurant's window is broken. Finally, in A, the broken window seen in B has been patched up and some of the lights in the restaurant's sign have burned out. What's more, the door of the photo studio has been painted a different colour. I didn't even see that. There we are. If these photos are any indication, Full Sense has quite a rich and lengthy history. Sure, with the number of these pictures, I bet you should you could see exactly how the town developed. Bring up an interesting point, Luke. But if these photos are that old, why do they look so new? Now did you mention it? I suppose they do look quite new. Photographs this old normally show some signs of deterioration. I wonder what method the studio uses to keep these photos so immaculate. Blimey! Time to build a camera. Touch the camera parts at the top of the touch screen to enlarge them. Once in the area, drag the selected parts around to place it inside the camera's body. Draw the orientation position of the parts within the camera by using the stylus. Touch the swim. Blah 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 blah
to go make some food, charge your phone. Okay. <laughs> it's some good food. Is half of this. Assemble the camera, now you can take photos! Use the camera to find secrets hidden around the game's locations. While walking in certain areas, a camera icon will appear on the screen. When it does, touch the icon to snap a photo of that area. View an album containing all your photos by touching the camera icon in the professor's trunk. While viewing the album, touch any of your photos to play a Spot the Difference minigame. The goal is to spot the differences between the touchscreen photo and the real place. The actual location is shown on the top screen. Touch any suspicious locations to erase a circle and then that touch here to submit your answers. If you answer correctly, the area you selected will be marked with an icon. Each photo has three elements that are slightly different from those of the actual location. When you find all three in a single location, visit the area where you took the photo. Touch the part that's indicated in the photo, who knows what you might find. More hint coins, I think. I think you could find more hint coins. I don't fully remember though. Oh, me too. I love the camera bubble. Also made you very, very okay. I'm gonna g find all the secrets and then go back. Yada yada yada. It was good. It was good. These photos look stunningly new for the age. How do you manage that? I'm flattered, but really, I take no special measures, measures in that regard. Oh, well. Thank you anyway, Joseph. Appear to be in a very good mood, Lou. Let me see if I can find out what the problem is. Uh, hi there, fellow. <coughs> ah! Good heavens, Luke, are you hurt? I don't think he's in the mood for conversation right now. Indeed, let's find another way through town. Passing through here seems rather difficult. Good heavens! Tight, it must be closed. I was hoping we'd find some useful information inside, but there's no sense in standing around waiting. For the time being, let's continue our investigation elsewhere. so bad you want to be thir thirsty 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 you want to tea so bad come on come on girl are you for real Fucking kidding me. Good 
heavens. Great heavens. Hello! Thank you! Oh, oh, did you see that? Huh? See what? Yours, of course. One just floated by old Oobie Dee Boobie Ding, I swear. God, I must have missed it. It's the 12th time today he's flown by. This must be the best spot for ghost watching. I've been here for hours. It's all just so fascinating. I'm utterly captivated. I'm sure it's all very exciting, but would you care to take a break and have a cup of tea? That sounds great. I screech like a banshee every time I spot a ghost, and boy, is my throat sore. If I'm going to make a tea break, let's. Uh, going to take a tea break, let's make it a mysterious one. Woo! Oh, uh, that means I'd like something sweet and kind of unusual. Yeah, here you go. Scrumptious! A smile spreads across Clarice's face. She seems restored and cheerful. Is there really something a little mysterious about the way this tea tastes? Good job! Glad you liked it. Yeah, it was great. Let me thank you by telling you where all the spookiest ghosts in town hang out. Old Sons has got lots of great ghost watching spots. Thanks for the offer, but I'm scared enough as it is. <laughs> Reading stranger, let me guess, you come here seeking fame and fortune. Actually, we're searching for an item called the Del Illusion Box. Does that name sound familiar? Wow, oh, now that's a fantastic name. Here's a puzzle for sharing a great name with me. Thank you for the absolute non-answer. <laughs> a yellow photograph shows three couples. In the photo, no one man is standing directly above his spouse. Of the three women present, two are sisters and are sitting next to each other. The older sister's husband is the man without a moustache. Everyone in the picture is wearing a hat except the husband of the younger sister. The woman unrelated to the other two is sitting in front of the younger sister's husband. And you find the man in this lot who is married to neither sister. Okay, hold on. Slowly. No one man is standing directly above his spouse. Okay. Of the three women present, two sisters are sitting next to each other. So either these two... Hold on, are these two sisters or these two sisters? Do we know? The elder sister's husband is the man without a mustache. So, the elder sister's husband, so he, it's not him. Because we're searching for the one who's not married to a sister. Everyone in the picture is wearing a hat except the husband of the younger sister. Everyone in the picture is wearing a hat. Except the husband of the younger sister. Him. Bum bum ba dum bum bee. Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. When I catch you, okay? Great job! The answer's B. Finding the answer to his one just requires close reading. You know the eldest sister's husband has no moustache, so you must be A. You also know that the youngest sister's husband has no hat, so he's obviously C. With those two choices eliminated, the answer's clear. In case you're wondering, the eldest sister's E, the little sister's D, and the last woman, F, is married to B. To B? Or not to B? Good job and good luck finding out what you call it. You know the thing with the great name? But when you open it, a genie pops out and I'm grants your wish or something. Nifty. Yeah, the the gift of that. That. Full <laughs> sentence, my love. Yippee. Mm -hmm. oh, Mr. Baluk, it's been ages. I haven't seen you in donkeys. Did you find a thing in here? I wish. I told Sam to track it down, but the boy is about as useful as a chocolate frying pan. Oh, don't fret like that, love. You get wrinkles in a distinguished brow of yours. Hey up then, Mr. B. Jack. How about coming inside for ketchup? I said, did you see that? Mr. Beluga just went into the cabaret. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Yeah! Let's have this 12-year-old go into a cabaret! <laughs> Why? Why ever the fuck not? The entire series? Oh, It is. It's a very melancholic sounding... Uh... song? It's nice. 
I love the Leighton, Leighton soundtrack so much. Come on. Stranger, my horoscopes are promising. <laughs> um, you coming to see the show, aren't you, Ducky? I apologize, madam, but we're in the middle of. Uh, you're going all shy on me, are you? I see, can see you blushing under the big hat. And who's your little friend there? He's a red strapping lad, isn't he? Aren't you, love? Me, yeah. Sorry to change the subject, but I couldn't help but notice Mr. Beluga entering your cabaret. Oh, uh, one of Mr. B's friends, are you? Something like that, yes. Tell me, does this Mr. Beluga visit here often? <laughs> well, you could certainly call him a patron of the arts, love. I don't know want to go chatting about the customers with just any old charmer who walks past. Oh, but you're a handsome devil, aren't you? Charming, deaf, and such a gentleman. Show me you get some brains behind that pretty face, and I might get a bit indiscreet. Girl! Jesus. What did composers even do before the play? <laughs> Lane series of men to the violin, the accordion. Real. That is old necklace that's not really to my taste anymore. I decided to sell it, but when I was getting it valued the other day, really something strange. Each stone is worth a different amount, but there's a way for me to break the necklace up into three smaller ones that are all worth the same total. Can you work out where to make the cuts? Why would you break it up, girly? This should do the trick. <laughs> and there we have it. And now we have it. That's right. Each turn of the gems is worth 3,600 pounds. Not a bad wretch. Oh, brains and beauty. I hope you don't solve puzzles for all the girls. <laughs> now then, Mr. B is definitely here looking for something, but I don't really know what. I can't be having much luck because he's had a right carb on whenever I've seen him lately. Aww. And you're thirsty! And you're thirsty. You're quite alright, ma'am. You look a bit fatigued. I was in a world of my own, though, love. Sorry, pa. I'm just a bit tired and thirsty. It's right dead in there and all. I think a nice sit down is what I need. Your job must be very taxing. Make sure to allow some time in your schedule for recuperation. Oh, don't go worrying about me, love. You get wrinkles. You're right, though. I need to schedule some maritime. If you'd like, I think we could prepare you a nice cup of tea. How does that sound? Oh, you're a man after my own heart? I'm gasping for a cup. I need a lift after the day I've had. Could you make me something refreshing? I want to make sure you sweeten it right up and all sugar plum. Sugar lump? We might be able to make something that fits the bill. Let's see. <sighs> something sweet, huh? Absolutely delightful! A smile spreads across various face. She seems restored and in high spirits. Ooh, now that is divine. I do like a man who knows his way around a teapot. There's a lot of new faces passing through town these days, but yours is the best of the lot, love. In fact, just a little while ago, an older gentleman came to town with a box all studded with gems. Looks nice he didn't hold a candle to you, of course, but he had a touch of class, I'd say. Now, if you two ever get tired of running around, stop in any time and say hi, you dear. Are you here? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Have a good evening. Mm. Use the camera mini game in a trunk to examine the photos you've taken. Well, let's see. So the top one is what it's like, and the lower is or something's different. Okay, I can do that. Ah! Consider this puzzle solved. Do I have to go? 
One by huh. one every time? Wonderful. Oh god, okay. There's one here. Here goes. Piece of cake. Yep. This should do the trick. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Nice! I found a hidden... Oh, a hidden puzzle! Oh, okay, 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 okay. Ah! I spy a hidden puzzle. I think this might be our first hidden puzzle, actually. On the edge of a forest lives a particularly massy mole. His burrow is so clocked with rubbish that he finally has to tidy up. However, being lazy, he decides to clean his place while doing the least amount of work possible. In order to pick up all the rubbish in his burrow without passing through any on one tunnel twice, from which of the holes A to G should the mole start cleaning? When moving through any tunnel twice is forbidden, he can pass through any junction between tunnels as often as he wants. Oh goodness. Okay, well. Oh, I'm in you for the plastic tag and a pen, I need it time. To test my theory. Yeah. Huh. Wonderful. Good job. Our friend the lazy mole should start his cleaning from hole C. Starting his cleanup effort from any other hole will cause him to go through at least one tunnel twice before the job is finished. Or if he kept it cleaner all the time, he wouldn't have to. There's so much cleanup in one go. Ha ha ha. I'm the same. I always tell myself, just don't let it get as messy in the first place, and it's not as bad, but he... Oh, hi, girlie. Are you all thirsty by any chance? Nope. Just you wait, you're gonna be thirsty at some point. Yeah, there we go. Hi! I love sweet stuff, but there's not much of it here in full sense. Do you think you could help me? How to satisfy a sweet tooth? I know, why don't we make you a cup of tea? Capital idea, Luke. Tea? Gosh, I was hoping for sugar coated choco cookie cupcakes, but I suppose tea could be tasty. Just make sure it's extra sweet, okay? Damn. How do you get this picture of me? <laughs> How do you get this picture of me? Now that's a tasty cup of tea! Johnny grins violently. She seems restored in her high spirits. Mm, you know, that wasn't half bad at all. Actually, it was pretty tasty. Thanks a million. That's the first sweet thing I've had since Mama had me give up cola. She says it rots your teeth. <laughs> Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was at the long face. It's not very grown up of you to soak like that. Honestly, I can't stand to see you looking like that, so here's a little puzzle my friend told me. The difference between mom's age and dad's age is the same as my age. On my big sister's twice my age, which happens to be one third my mom's age, and one more thing, in five years I'll be my sister's age. <laughs> her big sister's twice her age. And in five years she'll be the same age. So sisters turned you five. 
you're five, you're ten, the mom is thirty, and there's a five year difference between the two of them. This doesn't work with any other numbers. If I can show a bit, okay. Consider this puzzle solved. <laughs> and there we have it. Nice. Not bad. The girl's father is 35 and her mother's 30, meaning the difference in their ages is the same as the girl's age as she said. As she said. As for a big sister, she's 10. So I used to go all age and third of the mothers. In five years to go, we'll be 10, which is her sister's age now. Kissy says grow up so quickly. I do, don't I? Pretty good, Smarty Pants. So good, in fact, I think you deserve a reward. Oh? What kind of reward? Best kind of story. Okay, here goes. See, a long time ago, there was another family in town as rich as, rich, as, rich as the Hudson's. As rich as the Hudson's. One of the younger daughters got her heart broken by some boy and decided to leave town. It could just be a story somebody made up, but if it's real, that boy must have been a total loser. Oh, It's probably not some, just some story. Can't tell you that much. Very nice that he's thirsty, but I don't have the tea he needs yet. <laughs> uh, there we go. Oh my god, this is just a mess. What's the matter, sir? I had a set of cards that were arranged in a very specific way. Unfortunately, I seem to be all thumbs today and I dropped them while this thing though. Until I can put the cards back in the proper order, there's no way I'll be able to sell them. This looks like a job for me. I'll have those cards back in order before you know it. Cards labeled 1 to 6 are arranged in order as shown below. Rearrange them so that they satisfy the following conditions. The sum of the numbers on the top row must be 1 less than the sum of the numbers on the bottom row. Two cards in the right column must add up to 5. The 5 card must be, the t must be to the immediate left of the 4 card. The 1 card must be placed in the left column. Oy, oy, oy. Okay, hold on. Two rows. Some of the numbers on the top row must be one less than the one in the bottom row. So this one minus one. Whatever is in here, this one minus one. Okay. Two cards in the right column must add up to five. So either one or four. One plus four or three plus two. But the number one card must be placed in the left column. So it has to be three plus two. Okay, hold on. Three plus two. So this is five. Five, nine, eleven. Oh yeah. Okay, eleven, ten. Okay, wait. Right. Eleven, ten. The one must be placed in the left column. Okay. Five card must be to immediate left of the four card. Well, I can just turn these around. So nothing. The six just stays here. Here we go. Just leave it to me! Yeah! Piece of cake! Piece of cake! The job is one of those puzzles where the answer becomes clear as long as you remember to follow the conditions you've been given. Ta da! There we go! A splendid work, young man! You've got quite a way of puzzles for a boy you age! Thank you! <laughs> now we can help our little hamster. Out. You start here. You go run towards this apple. And you go run towards this. And you run until over here. You put a house here. And you have to run back the way you came until he bumps into something. And if you was here and then he bumps into absolutely nothing until the end. Got any snacks around here? Don't hold out on me. You can do it, my boy.
Look at me! I'm fit and sassy! Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! They will now sniff out hidden coins for you. Never miss another coin. Ta da! Luke and Dilboy are now best friends. The animal lover's house has been added to Layton's challenges. Look at him. Good job. Fulton's used to be home to many families of noble birth. Then Duke Hudson has discovered a vast gold deposit on the outskirts of town, which changed everything. Fulton's developed rapidly, but what if the gold brought in all sorts of unsavory types? It's such an awful shame. This used to be such an enchanting town. I mean, to be fair, it's still very enchanting. There's a very mythical thing about it. Hi. Come on. Ooh, you want to drink so bad. Ooh, you're so thirsty. Come on. I'm hypnotizing you. Ooh, you're so thirsty. Yes, there we go. Something the matter? You look rather downtrodden, my good man. Don't mind me, sir. I just get a little gloomy when I think about how slow business has been lately. To be honest, just thinking about it puts a rank thought over my hand. Well, how would you like a cup of tea? I'd be happy to make one for you, and you'd be surprised at what it can do for a sour mood. For your mood. Appreciate it. Maybe something spicy will cure me of this case of the blues. Ooh, spicy tea. <sighs> okay. Smile spreads across Grant's face. He seems relaxed and cheerful. Oh my, that is delicious. Hmm, each sip reveals more flavors. It's like the tea I drink as a child. Back then, Duke Hats mm, would visit our hotel often. No one spread ridiculous rumors about vampires. Yes, yeah, there are simpler times, but when you look at what gold is to the people here, well, let's just say I prefer the days gone by. Hmm. Hello, oh, sirs. May I inquire as to how your search is going? You must be tired from walking so much. May I suggest a light puzzle to refresh the body and mind? <sighs> sure. Two cards sit on a table, each has a different single digit number written on it. When set side by side, they form a two digit number. Then, by flipping that order, you can make another two digit number. Adding the total from these two two digit numbers gives you one of the total shown below. Which one is it? Sorry, what now? Two cards sit on a table, each has a different single digit number written on it. Set that by side for the two digit number. Flipping the order, you make another two digit number. And total from these two. Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. Good job! 12 plus 21 is 33, 35 plus 53 is 88. As you can see, the sum of two two-digit numbers with inverted digits is always a multiple of 11. Of the six options presented, the only multiple of 11 is 44. Oh. Spot on, sirs! Can't imagine how exhausted you must be from your search. Full sense is rather sprawling. When you're ready to retire for the night, your rooms will be warmed and waiting for you. Thank you, my good man. You and Fold Sands now get so go on and dream big, cause anything's possible here. Let me welcome your newcomers with a little riddle. Celebrate a plaza like the one you and I are sending in right now. There's a big old statue in the middle of this plaza. When you take away the area occupied by the statue, the plaza looks sort of donut-like in shape. What you have to do is divide this donut-like plaza into two identically shaped parts using only one line. Oh, and before you get any big ideas, the dotted line shown below won't cut, but it has actually two lines. Three on the touch screen. Okay. 
What if I just make another? What if I just draw another circle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time they want a circle from me, I'm gonna do a safe state. I don't care. <laughs> this is one line. Boom, donut shape. to test my theory. Yeah! Ha! Huh, wonderful! Nice! If you draw a circle around the plaza about one third of the way up from the middle, your diamond will divide the donut shape into two identically shaped figures that are directly proportional. In geometrical terms, shapes like these are known as similar figures. Okay. Lots of folks come to false sense dreaming of wealth and glory, but you two seem different. Take it from someone who's seen it all. Stay away from the forest to the northwest of town. Uh huh. Yeah. I know what. <laughs> I know where I'm going next. People tell you to stay away from someone in a latent game. Okay, sounds like my next destination. Have you seen a watchtower, Professor? There's something very suspicious about it, isn't there? Jackpot! Oh, fuck. I keep forgetting that the hamster can talk. Like, at least the dog thingy would only, uh, would only bark. It's not every day you see new faces. Are you visiting from out of town? Yes, in a way, but we're not here to sightsee. We're searching for an antique known as the Legion Box. Have you heard of it? No, that's the first I've ever heard of it. I wish I had some information for you. Just can't let visitors to our great town go empty, go away empty-handed. Here, it's not a key ring, but please take this puzzle of mine as a souvenir force. Why is this already puzzle 85? Sometimes I'm so confused with the numbering of the puzzles. Like when you run into them. Five shapes are arranged in a sequence, but the fourth shape is missing. Use the four visible shapes to determine which of A, B, or C should be inserted as the fourth shape in the sequence. Ugh. This this one looks and like a four. To test my theory. Huh. Wonderful. That's right, B is the answer. The number hidden in each shape determines the sequence of this order. When you turn each shape 90 degrees clockwise, the number becomes visible. In case of B, turning it sideways reveals the number four. Nice work there, fellas. I hate to burst your bubble, but if you lead on this illusion box and you hear you may be out of luck. See, many of the residents who were false and acts were skedaddled a few years ago. It all started over a strange room and it spread through the town like wildfire. Uh, so even if we are in the right place, there may be no one left to ask. Tell me, what was this rumor? Some silly thing about a curse. I, well, I'm not entirely sure what it was, to be honest. But I often find myself wondering where all those people who left false ends ended up. Silly professor, what's making an awful racket? I don't know, but I think it's coming from right above us. Quick, Luke, up the stairs. <laughs> Quick! No, first I'm going to take a look at all of those mirrors. Hmm. And then I'm gonna do the cameraman <laughs> thingy because there seems to be something hidden here. <laughs> Luke, up the stairs now! <laughs> Never! <sighs> okay, let's see. Uh, this is a difference. Consider this puzzle solved. 
And there we have it. And... There's no spilling... Spill, spillage? Mm. Let's see if this works. That was almost too easy. Okay, um... is different about this one. This one. There's the, it's missing the top one. Jesus Christ, that's so small. This should do the trick. Yep. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Still solving puzzle. Pin puzzle. We had six and a half hours. Hey, this is not yet Persona tier. <laughs> Shakul, they found a hidden puzzle. The ten coins in each of the five bags below. One of these bags is full of fake coins that are lighter than the real ones. A real coin weighs ten grams, but a fake coin is one gram lighter. If you're using a skill that can register up to a hundred. 200 grams, what is the fewest number of times you can use the scale to find the one bag filled with fake coins? Oy, oy, oy. 10 coins in each of the five bags. Hello, one time. How the fuck did they get a nine Consider out of this? this puzzle solved. Huh, wonderful. You got it. You only need to use the scale once. From every bag, remove the number of coins indicated by the bag's number. Then you just waste 15 coins once. If all of the coins are real, the combined weight will be 150 grams, but you end up with a weight less than this. The difference between his actual weight and 150 grams corresponds to the number on the back of fake coins. Oh, so you can remember where you take me home. Puzzle actually made me break a sweat. That's why it's a hidden puzzle. Hello, random sir. That is apparently just up 
here in this little tower and has garlic hanging around everywhere? Clearly, you're not afraid of some kind of vampire that may or may not even exist. Ah! Blast the vampires, get off my property! Are, are you alright, mister? Huh? Who goes there? Wait, you don't need to tell me. I know vampire henchmen when I see him. Oh, wait a second. What are you talking about? We just heard a scream and came to investigate. Say what you will, Sonny, but it won't do you any good. I see through your vampire lies. You really want me to believe you're not vampires? You solve this puzzle and you do it quickly. Sir? In one quiet town, there's a tower that commands a view of the whole town. Since you can see every building in town from the tower, logic dictates that you should be able to see the top of the tower from any building in town, as you can see on the map shown below. However, there's one building in town from which you clearly have no chance of seeing the top of the tower no matter which window you look out of. Can you find this building? Oh yeah, the tower itself. You can't see the top of a building you're inside of. Here goes! <laughs> that was almost too easy! Good thinking! From inside the tower there's no way to see the top of it. You may be able to stick out your neck out of a window and look up, but you still won't be able to see the top of it. Pretty good for a vampire, unless you're not one of the bloodsuckers underlings after all. That's how it is, and listen to me when I tell you you'd best keep away from the castle over yonder. Oh yeah, that looks extremely inviting. The nest of one of the most fearsome under creatures around, a real, uh, life vampire. A real life vampire, you say? Don't make me say it again. Okay. Rumors have surfaced regarding a vampire said to live in a castle at the edge of town. Terrified by such talk, not a soul in full sense dares to go near the castle. Would a vampire actually be living up in Hudson Castle? Running a lead out here is slow going, isn't it? Indeed, perhaps our only real choice is to wait for the Hudson Museum to open. But if that's the case, maybe we should revisit the museum. You never know, it might have opened up while we were away. You have a point, Luke. I hope the museum proves more useful to us this time than it did the last. Russ and Luke decide to pay another visit to the Hurt Cats and Museum. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, this whole place is covered in garlic and it definitely smells like it. Blech. Yes, it's very pungent. It's a good thing I brought a handkerchief. My eyes are watering. My nose hurts. My nose hurts just being in here. Finally, some customers. Come in, come in. It's been months since anyone came by. My shop's been out of favor with the townspeople recently. I can see why, or rather, I can spell why. Okay, my shop is metal. So what? It's not for the good of my health, you know. It's for protection. Got what you might call a bit of a vampire problem here in town, and garlic keeps them away. See. Vampires, seriously? You don't look like I'm joking, boy. You've seen a castle over there, haven't you? That's where the vampire lives. At least that's what people say. I'm not saying I believe to talk, but you can never be too prepared, you know? Yeah, you clearly don't believe that the vampire might be an actual thing. That's why you're extremely fucking... Good. Jackpot! Stop saying jackpot. Hello, you too. Nice to see you again. Heading to the north side of town, are you? Hi, what's up there? Oh, nothing really. Just some old houses. Got letters from Falkland Drops and to deliver there. Oh, there are people from Dropstone sending letters all the way out here? I was surprised at first too, but there's some sort of connection between Dropstone and this place. Not to describe it in words, so I'll just leave it at that. Oops, and I've got to dash. The post can be late. Mr. Purcell, please wait a moment. 
Oh, she didn't even look back once. Quite a perplexing individual, that one, but never mind. For now, we must focus on our investigation. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's get back to the museum then. Look at that, the gate is open now. Now we can finally go inside. Yes, now we can finally go inside. Now I can finally close my blinds again. Because it's not being able to look into my apartment. The closing is... Let's see here. <sighs> Why are these two always arguing? I know there's a unicorn over here. You can't hide. Thank you. Mm, Luke, do you hear that? Sounds like the conductor and Mr. Beluga are rowing again. Nothing. You don't even have so much as a lead on it? I thought I told you to find it and find it fast. Uncle, you gotta cut me some slack. It's no piece of cake sneaking around with the fuzz on my tail. What's the professor dude from London has been out playing detective? Being a little profile takes it out of a guy, you know what I'm saying? So my feet are killing me from all this running around. How about you let, you let me take a break? Besides, if I get caught sneaking around like this... You always will lay about Samuel. Stop moaning and get back to the task at hand. Do you find a box? I better not hear the word break coming out of your mouth. Gosh, Mr. Beluga really let him have it. You think he was the one who opened this gate? I'm not sure, though it appears that while the gate is open, the museum itself is still closed. But let's put this discussion aside for a moment. Tell me, Luke, do you recognize the symbol at our feet? Yep. The stone has been worn down over the years, but I've definitely seen this design before. Oh, it looks like a symbol in the book we found lying out in the street. That it does, but I'm certain I've seen something like this in another location too, but where? Yes, now I've got it. What is it, Professor? We must locate Inspector Chomi at once. I need to see the photo he acquired from the crime scene. This town is so big, how are we going to track him down? It's quite late now. He may have returned to the hotel for the night. What do you think? I think you're probably right. Quick, let's head back to the hotel. We literally just got to the museum. Hello? Before we do any of that, I'm gonna look at the museum. At the part of the museum I can actually reach. How would you the name's Gregorio and I'd rather run around in a chicken suit than go one day without chess? You want to get on my good side and hear what I have to say? Fine, but first a little chess. Should be interesting. Oh no! <laughs> no! Chess puzzles again. Lead the knight on a trip around the board. Chess knights move two squares forwards and one square perpendicular on each turn. The initial direction can be up, down, left, or right. Move this knight around the entire board, landing on each square only. Ooh, woo, woo, woo. Right. <laughs> Consider it's like a block of cheese. Solved. I don't think that's quite how you play chess. Huh. Wonderful. Oh. Is everyone and their mother try to reach me today? What did I do? Hold on.
Seems like my neighbors are planning to watch Barbie tomorrow. Very nice sunny boy. There's lots more where I came from, but let's take a breather for now so you can hear my spiel. Back in the day, this town was full of aristocratic families, but one day they all just upped the sticks. The Hudson family is pretty much the only upper crust of family left in town. There's something I need to ask you. Can you spare just a moment? Later, I see you've been busy. I didn't think you'd manage to solve 50 puzzles so soon. Ha ha! I'm at 75, my good man. I hear you've been very busy sniffing around town for clues. Tell me, has your search yielded any genuinely useful facts yet? Another missing dog, perhaps? Perhaps. Would you mind showing me the photo you recovered from the doctor's flat? Oh, you might understand that there's a clue to be found in that photo. Huh, well, I see you've solved 50 puzzles already, so I can tell you a series about the investigation. My top priority is solving this case, so if you think you can help, I might as well show you the thing. The devil? Is something the matter, sir? There's a hole in my blaster pocket. Oh no. Ooh, that's a big hole. I've been scaring the pieces about without even noticing this. This is a low point in my career. It seems that all the remains of this photo is just one scrap. Yay! Doesn't look like we'll ever see that photo again. Perhaps not. The piece as well is still in my pocket when we entered full sense of that much, I'm sure. Inspector, do you recall the path you took around town over the past couple of hours? It's a fit, yes. Let's see. You stupid fucking idiot! How are you and Inspector Scotland Yard? Here's what the inspector remembers to find the path he took through town. It took, a f it took a few turns, but only one at a junction I had a cafe on it. Also passed in front of one hat shop. Oh, and one flower shop too. And I didn't walk any farther than necessary. Now that you've heard this week's collection, can you trace the route the inspector took through town? <laughs> Ooh. Only one at a junction I had a cafe on it. Also pass in front of one hatch. Oh, well, this wait. This is where he ended up. And one flower shop. Last one is the flower shop. So here. And before the flower shop was in front of a hat shop. Here. And before the hat shop was a junction had a cafe on it. This should do the trick. Yeah! A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. That's right. You may have walked out the inspector's path through town, but the search for those photographs is just beginning. Sure is. And then, after leaving the northeast corner of town, I came straight back to the hotel. There should be enough information to get us started. Thank you. Come look, let's see if we can recover the pieces of the photo by retracing the inspector's steps. What's so important about that photo, Professor? I'm unsure of the photo's content, but I have every confidence that it will lead us to the Legion box. Say no more, I'm sold. After all, orientation never fits. Let's hurry to the northeast of town. I think we can get there through the little path where that bulldog was sitting. Yes, let's. Here, I'll lead the way. I like when a list is empty because that means I have done every single puzzle I've come across. Chapter 5. I don't remember how many chapters this game has. 
But it has another, a little over 150 puzzles, so... We've done half. I'd say. Welcome back, sir. Still busy with your investigation, I see. Though lovely, our town is quite vast, so take care not to tire yourselves up. I'm sure your feet must be sore, so why not sit for a moment and enjoy this puzzle I've prepared? Oh, yay! Lucky you! You've inherited a five square plot of land that's rich in precious metals. Each chunk of copper ore has a value of one, each silver chunk has a value of three, and each gold chunk has a whopping value of five. You're allowed to pick five squares of land for yourself, but the five squares must be connected to each other. Squares diagonal to one another don't count as connected. Your task is to claim the most valuable five square plot possible. Can you do it? <laughs> yeah. One, two, three, four, five. And this is five, six, seven, ten. This, this one would be one, two, three, six, nine. And this one would be five, six, nine. And this one is even less. And now to test my theory. Yippee! And there we have it. You're rich! The plot of land to spare is the only one that it, that it achieves! Achieves! Oh! Oh! <laughs> a value of 10, the highest value possible given the conditions of the puzzle. Well then, sir, should you begin to feel weary from running about town, do stop in to rest. Great. Buttock breaks can be quite refreshing for the mind and spirit as well as the body. That's very nice. Father has always done what he wants, regardless of who may object. He's done away with everyone, even his sons. It's no wonder my younger brother always seems so irritated with him. Even so, he and I must endure our father's whims because it's the next in line to rule false and we cannot leave this town even if we want to. We are stewards of this town and we must stay here to watch over him. Ooh. Well, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun, does it? A little more. I feel like it's kind of impossible for me to play through the whole game in one go, but also <laughs> I don't want to stop yet. <laughs> Keep this under your hands, but you know the hole in the inspector's pocket. A dog did that. A dog officer? Which dog? Inspector Chalmy had an um, altercation with a canine by a path to the northeast corner of town. Well, dogs can sniff out mean people, you know? There's just more proof that he needs to be nicer. He may seem a bit prickly at times, but he's actually quite kind. Having said that, this story I heard about him concerns one of his less friendly episodes. Ooh, 50. Shelmy sent a squad out to investigate an incident. Before leaving, he said this. I want you to search the entire area shown on this map. Take any route you want, but report how many times you turn in the process. You're free to turn left or right, but U-turns are strictly forbidden. The bobbies completed the shift and returned to report their turns. Judging by the reports, though, it seems at least one man was loafing on a draw. Touch the number you th numbers you think are suspicious to mark them with an X. Whee. Okay. Okay, wait, we start here. One, two, three, two, three. Mm. Has to be an even number. This one and this one don't have even numbers. Consider this puzzle solved. Ha! Huh, wonderful! Aha! Uh -huh. 
Sharp thinking! The two men who took 105 and 130 turns must have been sucking off. Since the men started on a horizontal path, you can infer that if they turned an odd number of times, they'd end up on a vertical path. Conversely, if they made an even number of turns, they'd end up on a horizontal rope. Any Bobby who did his job properly would have to turn an even number of times to get back to the station, which is at the end of the horizontal rope. Sir, now I must be off. The inspector and I need to sweep the area for more clues. Do you watch yourselves when out on the street. There's no telling what's out there. Likewise, officer. Ooh, another diary key. No longer able to tolerate father's selfish ways, my younger brother has left full sense for good. So, in she enough, father doesn't seem affected by it at all. If anything, he only seems more focused on activating even more gold from the mine. His own mis miserable ore worth so much to him. I'm beginning to think that I will never understand that man. Hmm? Miss Flora? Ah, you startled me! Why don't you get off to Flora? Hey, I will... Um... Come now, Luke. A gentleman never forces a lady to say more than she wants to. Oh, of course, we're my men is sorry, Flora. Well, then give it a second thought. Say, how did your investigation go? Did you find out anything more about the Legion box? A bit, but nothing concrete. What we need more what we need is more time to calm the area for clues. We should we could be quite a while, so if you feel tired, go ahead and turn in there. I will. I sure hope you two find a good solid lead soon. Yeah. Good solid lead would be nice. But now we have to find 15 photo scraps. Oh, and you're thirsty. I'm sorry, I don't think I have the tea for you yet. Yo. As much as I love antiques, I adore puzzles even more. I've got a vintage puzzle that I'd love to share with you if you'd like to listen. Oh, of course. We'd be honored to hear it. Wonderful. This puzzle involves a certain rare vase in my collection. It's on this plate just over there. Hmm. Stones in a vase. This vase holds 101 stones, each identical in size and feel. There are 50 black stones and 51 white stones. Now put on this blindfold, reach in and pull out as many stones as you like. When you're finished, if you've removed an equal number of black and white stones, you'll receive a number of gold coins equal to the number of stones you pulled out. How many stones should you remove to give yourself the best chance of getting the most money possible? A <laughs> hundred. The best chance of getting the most money. We have 101 stones, each identical. There are 50 black and 51 white stones. A hundred. A lovely hundred. This should do the trick. Huh. Wonderful. Yeah. Well done. If you remove 100 stones from the vase, well, only one will remain in sight. If that remaining stone is white, it means you've successfully removed 50 stones of each color. Of course, removing just two stones will give you the same chance of winning the coins as removing 100 stones, but the amount of money you receive for successfully removing 100 stones involves the reward you'd receive for two stones. Nice! Deftly solved! The brain of yours is a real collector's item. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna say next time too. My brain is a real collector's item. There's only one of it in the world. Special edition. Limited edition, actually. Change your mind, have you love? I take it you want to come inside and have a look around? Uh, no, I... Aw, oh, look at those red cheeks. No need to be shy, Puppet. Here, try this puzzle out. It'll relax you. A boy and a girl are chatting at a local cafe. Looking up from a string, the boy says, 
You know, I'm 20, which is twice the age you were when I was the age you are now. Isn't that interesting? As you can see, this boy isn't the most concise of speakers, but using what he's saying, how old is the girl he's chatting to? What? Hold on. Sorry, what? I'm 20, which is twice the age you were, you were, when I was the age you are now. Isn't that interesting? Fifteen. Twenty. And twice the age is ten. So... She was ten when he was fifteen because they're five years apart. So he's fifteen now. What the hell? Good sir, please. Just leave it to me! That was almost too easy! Nice! A careful read of the puzzle reveals that when the boy was a girl's current age, her age was half of the boy's current age. The boy's current age is 20 and half of that is 10, so the girl must have been 10 back then. Once you realize this, it's obvious that the girl must be 15 at present. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're a clever one. I do love clever boys, me. They make me very weak at the knees, honestly. Clever me. Ooh, you're getting all right again, aren't you adorable? You can come back anytime, love. And you can stop flirting with a literal 12 year old. <laughs> Please. <clears throat> mm -hmm. We found a new ore down in the ground that father thinks we can refine into a precious metal. Personally, I doubt we'd be able to turn something as stolen dead as our rock into something of worth. Not that it stopped father, the digging has advanced to the point where it's formed a massive crater under the castle. I have visions of the whole castle tumbling down into that abyss. Oh. This is husband slower than a snail riding a tortoise, as the saying goes. No customers, I don't really have much to do, unfortunately. Do you have any other duties here besides watching the door? Hmm. <clears throat> some small tasks, for instance, the boss requested that I make some extra copies of the menu. To be honest, it's a rare bother. Would you mind helping me out? Ah, uh, would I? Hee <laughs> hee, 69. The menu you see here has been folded into thirds with print on both sides, meaning in total there are six pages to it. The boss needs lots of copies, but unfortunately, your copy machine can only copy a maximum of two menu pages at once. To save time, you're trying to complete a copy of the menu in a few passes through the machine as possible. What is the fewest number of passes through the machine you need to make to make a full duplicate of the menu? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wait, let me think. If I fold it... Good thing I have a piece of paper here, right? If I fold it like... piece of paper and I fold it like this A and B one
that's still a lot. Yeah, leave it to me. But oops, if a copy machine can do the full thing in one go, then I Piece guess. Of cake. It's better than nothing. Good job! If you fold and copy the menu shown above, you can make a complete duplicate of the machine in just three passes through the machine. Yay! Is that all there is to it? I was sure there'd be some fancy technique involved. There are probably nicer ways to do it. Are you sure your boss is okay with you doing it like that? <laughs> no one's gonna notice. Everyone's usually busy picking what they want to eat. If you say so, mister. Tell me, have you ever worked up the nerve to wander out past the edge of town? Tales I've heard about what people see out there would make your blood run cold. I recently went out there myself to take a few pictures with my best camera. I my was, well, here, see for yourself. Come back! Yikes, it's a ghost in the forest! So you thought, until you realized that the spectre hovering in front of you was just a figure cut out of wood hanging from a branch. Looking around the area, you noticed four pieces of wood scattered in the grass. From which one of these wooden planks was the ghost cut out? You have four choices, A, B, C, or D. Beware, the correct board may have flipped over in the grass. <sighs> okay. Well, certainly not A. C has his hands the wrong way round. The difference between D and B, what am I missing? Oh, D has the, the squiggly on the wrong side. D. And now to test my theory. And there we have it. Good eye! The ghost was cut from board B. The board must have flipped over as it fell to the ground. All the other boards have slight differences that set them apart from the correct one. Sure do. Hey, I thought you were going to show us a photo of a real ghost. <laughs> Sorry to get your hopes up, friend. I do so love pulling that one on customers. All joking aside, no one dares enter the forest now. The whole place is overgrown and perilous. Oh. oh, wait, that's where I came from. I want to make my way over there, past the dog. The bulldog is blocking our path to the northeast corner. To get through. Ah. Our friend the bulldog seems to have had a change of temperament since we last met. Ah. He looks really hungry, Professor. I think you'll let us pass if you bring him a snack. <laughs> Very well. I seem to remember a grocer's beneath the watchtower. I'm sure we can find a suitable snack for our friend there. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Hi. Why does everyone make such a kerfuffle over warning people away from the castle? Even if you wanted to go, it's impossible to get up there. The forest gate is always locked. I take it that's the sole path to the castle then? <laughs> you actually want to go there, don't you? It's a weird and scary place, but I know the feeling. The gate only opens to let us all stagecoach through. If you hide in the bushes and wait for the coach, you might be able to sneak in behind it. So the gate does open. Do you know anything about the stagecoach? Got me there. It heads up to the castle every day at about the same time. Maybe delivers raw steaks and blood for the vampire's dinner. I really have no idea. But hey, all the stock of stagecoaches reminds me has reminded me of this puzzle about horses. Horses! Again. 
Teams of horses are participating in tug of war matches. All teams are drawn from an eight horse stable. The first three matches end in draws as shown. Match A is ABCD versus EFGH. Match 2 is HCB versus GNA. And match 3 is DA versus FHE. If you want a fourth match to, to result in a draw as well, which horses should be on a team pulling against ENF? Match a horse to add to the team. Whee. Okay, wait. A, B, C, D, and E, F, G, H are the same. Also, H, C, B, and G, and A are the same. And then D and A are the same as F, H, Here goes. Legends Apprentice strikes again. Well then, of course, other matchups might work, but the only one you can be sure will end in a tie based on this information is horse D. Oh, horse doesn't even get a proper name, only D. No, I get it. Thanks a million. Like I was saying, if you want to go through that gate, sneaking in with the stagecoach is the only way. But you never know what kind of dangerous stuff could be hiding in the woods, so I stay here. I tell other people that they may check it out, so they get in danger. Oh. Today is a day to celebrate. At long last, a girl I love has agreed to give me a hand in marriage. I must begin preparing for arrival at once. I'll gladly change every fixture and fitting in the castle so that she feels at ease. I'm also commissioning a special dress to be made for her. She's going to look stunning in it. I just know it. Stunning! She's going to look stunning in it. Stun, 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 stun. I cannot talk. Hi! That shop is so smelly that I have to play out here and pass out. That really, uh, stinks. It's okay, I brought some snacks with me to nibble on, so at least I'm not bored. Here, let's share them. Oh! Yay! You have a box of four different kinds of sweets arranged in no particular order. Your job is to divide these treats into five equal portions. To do so, you need to make sure each portion contains the exact same number and variety of sweets. Get it? Good. Then get started. Okay, hold on. Four different kinds of sweets. Okay. That doesn't mean I can only have four, though. Just need to make... Oh, five equal portions. Oh, sorry. Five equal portions. There's a lot of these everywhere. Ah, oh, like so. Two of these in every, everything. Yeah. 
Here you go. Hmm. Let's see if this works. That yes. was almost too easy. Sweet. A puzzle solution shown above. Now remember, those sweets are for everyone, so don't forget to share. Yay, it's all divided up now. Here's some for you. Oh, thanks a lot. Ugh, these taste like raw garlic. Oopsie, all the garlic and shop must have made my snack so weird. I'll have to throw them out. Oh. Oh my god, sir, there's too much garlic in here. Hello there, gents. How can I help you today? We're in desperate need of food for a hungry dog. Do you have anything that fits the bill? Oh, that's the most interesting request I've heard all day. I don't have anything in a tin, but this leftover beef skank will make Rover sit up and back. Should do nicely. Would you be willing to part with it? Of course, I just hope your dog likes garlic. I'm sure that won't be a problem. Good, good. Now I won't charge a penny, but you have to solve this puzzle I've got here. I've been mulling it over for days and I'm starting to lose sleep. Okay, yeah, I'll solve a puzzle in exchange for a piece of meat. Garlic is a wonderful seasoning when used in moderation, but the smell can be pretty potent. Someone put garlic cloves in these intricate content cloves in this intricate container and they're really stinking up the room. Use the two corks below to help our friend deal with the smell. That's just being the place you want to put the corks, you ask must use no more than two corks. But yeah. Why don't put them in your nose? And you will not be smelling any garlic anymore. Hmm. <laughs> you will be smelling absolutely that nothing. Too easy. Sweet relief. Each of the three holes in the container is connected to the garlic, so there's no real way to seal off the container using two corks. With no way to contain the smell, our friend had no choice but to plug up his nostrils. Hopefully, he had the good sense to stay inside when no one would see him like that. You got to be a real garlic lover like me to solve that one. Yeah, you work for this beef skank. Shank, so it's all yours. Shank. Yay. Just running around with a bunch of beef. Mm. There's something about the aroma of this tea that's quite soothing. You hit the nail on the head, Professor. I think it's making me sleepy. No! I suppose that's for the proof of its relaxing effect. It does seem rather potent, eh? <laughs> Just taking that aroma, it's incredibly relaxing. Sort of makes you forget all your troubles for a minute, eh, Professor? I must confess, this is rather nice. It's like the tea drove all the variness from me. Wow, all that with just a couple of sips? The good cup the, the good a cup of herb tea can never do fails to amaze me. Yep. Getting there. Slowly but surely we're getting a bunch of tea. And hidden puzzles. Whoa, all this garlic is starting to make my head spin. Oh, well, we can't have that. The first puzzle just the thing you need to refresh the mind loop. And we appear to be in luck. I think I see a good puzzle right there. Oh god. A long line of jars and cans sits on a counter. Your job is to rearrange these items so that both jars and cans are grouped with items of the same type. However, in doing so, you must always move two containers at once. Move items around by touching a red icon between two containers and dragging the selected pair of items around with the stylus. Okay. Oh, it was one of these. Gotcha. Oh, 
Eureka. And now to test my theory. Huh. Wonderful. Ah. Well then, now the jars and cans are sorted neatly. If only people would organize things properly in the first place. What do you think, Professor? Pretty good, right? Even so, I don't think that puzzle was enough to take my mind off the smile. Souls out if you keep running around like that, fellas. Rest your feet for a minute while you solve this puzzle of mine. Okay. You stack three dice in a column. At the point where two dice touch, the faces that are touching add up to five. If one visible face of the bottom die is showing a one, what number must be in the top face of the top die? Each die is identical, and all sets of opposing faces on each die add up to seven, just like any other die. Before, before I play another Professor Layton, I should just solved. get a set of dice. And... <laughs> At this point, no puzzle unsolved. just to try it out. That's right, since you know that the sum of each set of opposing faces is seven, you can easily narrow down the possibilities. With a little smart thinking as detailed above, you'll soon arrive at the answer. Six. You're no slouch at this. So what's the story? What do you think you're going to find here in full set? I don't mean to sound ominous, but they're true sl best left buried. Get me? I don't even know who you are. Bye! I don't know. It's a chance Luke throwing the beef shank. Ready on it, here goes. Huh? <laughs> Why does a dog have. What's dog is this? I think a little offering at the trick. Huh? I don't think this dog is going to be doing any snarling anytime soon. You can finally explore the rest of the town now. Yay! Finally! Good thing we only have like 15 photo scraps to find. Okay, boy. Say, Professor, could that be. Is it the photograph? I'd say so. Sure, bye, so I'll place it in my trunk for safekeeping. Okay, 14 left. Woohoo! Right, so Oh, yeah, sorry. Ha, ah, another one. Look, do you see the piece of the photograph over there? I do, great, Professor. Hope it hasn't got all soggy from lying on the ground down there. Don't worry, Luke. It looks more or less intact. That's good. But I need this woman to be thirsty. I got some new drinks. Come on, lady. You want my tea, I know it. You want my tea! There we go! Oh dear, oh dearie me. Are you alright? What's the matter? <sighs> well, pancakes are good for the soul, all that serve just wax havoc on my complexion. Nonsense, madam, you look lovely. Just look at the skin, it's dull, dull, dull. Well, if it's troubling you that much, may I suggest a cup of radiance boosting tea? Really? You'd be my hero if you could make something like that? After all, worrying about my skin is only going to make it worse. Yeah. There you go. Lovely. A rosy glow returns to Gertie's face. She seems restored and cheerful. And now that was just wonderful. 
Does my skin look better? How much better? Two times better? Five? For what it's worth, I think the best thing you can do for your skin is to stop fretting so much. I'm sorry, it's just that these past few years I feel like I've suddenly aged a great deal. I mean, I'm obviously still a knockout, but somehow I just feel older, you know? <laughs> okay! I don't like to brag, but I make the best pancakes you've ever tasted, guaranteed. Thing is, while the flavors out of this world, I have trouble getting the sizes to be consistent. So if you give me such a pain, because I need to stack them just so. Here, I'll show you. Bells of pancakes, two. Uh, yep. Okay. Go pancake pushing. I love pancake pushing. Ah, oh, pancake pushing is always fun. No, that doesn't seem quite right. Consider this puzzle solved. <laughs> ha! Wonderful! Yummy! On an extra pancake for those who solve this puzzle in only 15 moves. No! <laughs> no pancakes for me! Wow, your hands moved so fast that it looked like you were juggling those pancakes. Next time I grease up my pan, you're welcome to as many as you can eat. Go for some pancakes. I haven't had pancakes in what feels like forever. Another one! Look at that! There's another shred of the photograph sitting on a pile of rubbish. You stay here, Professor. I'll go and get it. Watch your footing, Luke. That pile of rubbish looks quite precarious. There it is! What I can't work out is why the inspector was rooting around in the rubbish in the first place. Do you really think that the criminal will be hiding out here? Hard to say. You could have just been sifting through it for clues or the like. Just for the hell of it. Ciao. This is clearly a different color. Just leave it to me. Cake. Nice. The light is on. And now to test my theory. And there we have it. And this bottle seems to be broken. This should do the trick. Huh. Wonderful. Good. I mean, I hidden puzzle then. Ready, hidden puzzle. Yay. Oh no. Oh no. Use the sound to move the rubbish to the bin at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> yippee yippee sliding puzzles. Don't we all love them? Not really. Well, sometimes. To an extent. I mean, there's worse. There's worse parts than just sliding puzzles, but also. God. <sighs> Why do I push you? Getting there, we're getting there slowly but surely. Not 
<laughs> Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. Nice and tidy. Do you part to keep your tongue clean? Right. The puzzle hurt my hat. <laughs> oh, come on. We've had worse puzzles. Oh, it's you two. I yeah, know you. You're Mr. Anderson's daughter. Yes, my name is Katya. What brings you to a full sense? I'm sorry, but I can't really talk about it. Excuse me, I have to get back to my search. Goodbye. Katya, wait a minute. What are you looking for? Wow, she moves fast. So Katya was headed to full sense all along, just as we were. Luke, I believe we've uncovered the identity of the third party asking around about the Legion box. Katya's looking for the Elysian box as well. That would seem to be the only possibility, yes. She also is the only one that fits the description of a young lady who's been asking about the box that the owner in the antique store said in the beginning. Professor, I see a piece of the photograph over there. Nicely done, Luke. I'll just tuck this away in my trunk so we don't lose it. Unless you lose your the entire trunk. We should be good to go, yeah. Alright, there's something here. Consider this puzzle solved. Huh, wonderful. This is too low. This should do the trick. Huh, wonderful. And what else? What else? Oh, they added another window here. Just leave it to me. Piece of cake. <laughs> Look at that, it's a hidden puzzle. Oh, you folks were spotted in the night sky. Looks like there are four distinct shapes floating in the sky, but each of these is actually made up of four identical parts. Which of the following is the base part used to make all of these shapes? Oh, you, you. So that means there weren't four youths in the night sky after all, there were 16! Very disturbing. <laughs> Very disturbing. Hmm. That one was a toughie. Oh, to be fair, it is a hidden one. The hidden ones are always supposed to be toughies. mean when I say when I replayed these games I would play them through all of them in one go like in one day <laughs> this is how we're like halfway through I don't say hi Paulson's to get all the town oh hi that's what I used to call this place when I was a little one 
Used to work down the mine and gave the town its nickname, see? Well, I did till they closed it down a few years ago, isn't it? Even though I sometimes catch crooks sneaking down into the mine to see if anything's down there. They always come back with nothing, though. Count and down, boy. Certainly heard rumors of the great fortune Duke Hudson left behind. You treasure under two, boy? In that case, take it from me. The real money's not in that mine. It's in Duke's castle, isn't it? You might have a bit of trouble getting in and mine, considering there's a vampire living up there. Alright, enough moitering. Gotta do it. We'll get back to working out what a scrap of paper by ear is. I know, I know, it's a scrap of a photo. It's a scrap of a photo of you looking all over for. Oh, so this thing's yours, is it? Well, I'm gonna use for it, so you better take it, isn't it? Oh, thanks. Only ten more pieces. Another scrap of the photo. If I could show me, certainly got around. Okay, nine. Nine more pieces. Sure, some unusual art. I don't even know what to make of this picture. Hmm? Which picture are you talking about, Luke? This one here. Are these weird shapes some kind of coat? It seems as if you stumbled across a puzzle. Look here. A series of figures are arranged and numbered as shown below. As you can see, the figure that shouldn't go in space one is missing. That should go. It should go in space one is missing. Can you draw the figure that belongs in this space? Let us tell us over the guidelines to draw the figure. Hmm. Oh. I got it. Like this. Mirror it. This is a B, C, D, E, F. This one should be an A. Here goes. Thank you, <laughs> yeah, boy. Good job! The peculiar sequence of figures is actually the first six letters of the alphabet displayed as is in a seven-segment LED style and mirror as shown above. Since you have letters B to F, logic dictates that the missing figure should be a mirrored version of the letter A. See how it works? And we are able to make more tea. <laughs> We're only missing one more ingredient after this. Nice. Though I don't remember where you get that specific one. See, it seems like just a thing for driving away chills when you feel a cold coming on. Maybe, so, Professor, but it's a little bitter for my taste. <laughs> now then, Luke, no good medicine is ever easy to drink. That's how you know this is effective. Oh, I think you might be onto something there, Professor. I feel all warm inside now. Nice. Yes. Exquisite. There's a depth of flavor here that is lacking in most other teas. Really? Gosh, maybe my tongue's just broken or something? I don't see what all the fuss is about. <laughs> you may be a bit young for this one. It's what some might call a tea for the experienced palate. Well, I don't know about that. As far as I'm concerned, it's too bitter to be tasted. <laughs> I don't like bitter tea either. I'm a sweet tea kind of person. I'm a sweet tea. <laughs> See, we've picked up seven scraps so far, but I suppose we've still got more work ahead of us. Man, it looks like something, almost. Yes, yeah, so the job's far from over. It would seem we're about halfway there, give or take a piece. We've talked the length of this we've walked the length of this alley, and I think it's safe to say we won't find anything else here. I say we focus the remainder of our search in other places the inspector might have visited. Besides, are you? Have you heard of the Hudson Museum? It's got all sorts of antiques from Fulton's his most important family. I recommend you visit it, but the curator, Grinko, is almost never there. If you ever find a place open, consider yourself lucky. 
Yes, we noticed. We were hoping to visit, but the museum was closed when we passed by. Where does the museum's owner ordered Pinko to lock it up and run around town looking for something? The owner, you say? Do you happen to know who this person is? Of course, everyone does. It's the same fellow who owns the Voluntary Express, if you can believe it. Maybe building museums is some weird hobby for the rich, but it seems like a waste to me. Hmm, I would say Mr. Beluga owns not only the Voluntary Express, but the Heads Museum as well. How oh, odd. What use would Mr. Beluga have for a little museum like that? Who can say? For now, what's clear is that Mr. Beluga may have ties to the Heads since he's kept quiet about it. Dan Chin wagging you too? Good, then look here, there's litter I picked up off the ground. Oh, that's a scrap of the photo. You were looking for this thing? Then by all means, take it. Here, it's yours. Thanks! It's one less. One less piece we need. My good sir, would you like a drink? I assure you. Very good. Yes. I'm begging. Let me make you some tea. All right, there, boys. What kind of place does Fulton seem like to you outside? Just I'm curious. See. Well, it seems to be quite a resplendent place to me. Resplendent? What? If you're trying to call it fancy like that, I'll be agreeing with you. But now the mine's been shut down, we can kiss goodbye to the sound of income source in my job. Sounds dying. I just doesn't know it yet, see? That's a rather bleak to thing to say. Honestly, it sounds as if you need to lift your spirits. I'd say I'll make you some tea. Well, I can't say no to an offer like that, but I gotta tell you, I'm picky about what I drink. I like my minus tea with a bit of cake, see? You got anything a bit spicy? Oh, yeah, sure. A bit spicy. That's a good idea. A smile spreads across Dylan's face. He seems restored and in high spirits. Proper minus tea that is, boys. Tastes good and strong, just like what we brewed down the mine. Glad to hear that he meets with your approval. Much obliged, boys. But listen, take it from me as an old boy who knows. Closing down the mine like we did is more dangerous for this town than any man had. With no money coming in from gold, it's just a matter of time before full sense turns into a ghost town. Ooh. Well... You already have a vampire. I think adding a, uh, a ghost to the mix could maybe attract some people. Who knows? Not me. Hi. Okay. Hi again. Yes. Vampires are overrated anyway. I like myself a good vampire. I've run three rolls of film today while trying to develop them and frankly it got me hurt. Perhaps it's simply that I've run out of coffee today. You sound like you could use a cup of tea. It might just take it might just take the edge of things for you. It sounds wonderful. I'd be most grateful if you'd make me a cup. I'm not picky. Make me a tea that's a little bit bitter and a little bit sweet and I'll be a happy man. Leave it to me, sir. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. Thank you for the pass. And I did time. Oh. That hit the spot. The smile spreads across Joseph's face. He seems refreshed and cheerful. Goodness, tea does good almost makes you consider trading in my coffee mug for a teacup. You're too kind, sir. I'm glad to hear you enjoyed it. And truth, the reason I've been down is because every photo I've taken recently has come out strangely. Things that shouldn't be there show up. I never had problems with this back in the day. Oh, that doesn't sound good. <sighs> also, thank you for the pet. Look at the amount of hint coins I- Oh, you cannot see the amount of hint coins I have because my hat's in front of it. I have 160. Out of 160. Because I'd never used them. <laughs> Look at the thing you cannot see because I am in front of it. finish the whole game today, but also... Hmm, hmm. 
just found this piece of rubbish on the ground. Ugh, literally is the most boorish habit I, uh, one can have. Look, Professor, it's part of the photo. Yes, that appears to be the case. Seems the pieces really are scattered all over town. What a huge pain. It may take some lab work, but each piece brings us closer to the answer. We must retrieve them all. Sorry to break up the tea party, but I'm the one who picked it up, you know? If you want it so badly, you have to solve this puzzle for me first, okay? Okay. I know blocking the game is always- You don't need to see! The only important thing on this screen right now is me! <laughs> the board shown in the picture on the left is wired on the underside so that holding contact points A and B together turns the light on. Now look at the board in the center. This light has the three contact points, A, B, and C. No matter whether you hold contact points A and B, B and C, or A and C together, the light stays on. In a case, how must the wires be connected on the underside of the board? For the solution, it requires the fewest number of connections. The dotted red line indicates a known wire. This should do the trick. Ha! Huh, wonderful! Great idea! All you really have to do is connect the light bulb to the battery. The puzzle tells you that the light stays lit no matter which combination of contact points are held together. Naturally, the light will also stay lit when none of those connections are made. Ha! <laughs> Don't try me, game. Hm, you're sharper than I thought you'd be. Here, I didn't want a silly thing anyway. Oh, suddenly you don't want it anymore, huh? Duke. Oh, but you want a tea, don't you? <sighs> Seems to be the matter, young man. All this stressing about something that happens up, happened a while ago is nothing, really. All the same, how about a cup of tea? Who knows, you might feel a bit less glum afterwards. Well, it won't do any harm. But you should know that I won't drink just any old swill. I might look young, but I've got an extremely fine palette when it comes to tea. Duly noted. I'm sure we can whip something up that will please that sophisticated palette of yours. I do not know how to say that word. Even though I'm trying to. Here you go. Now that's good tea! A smile spreads across Duke's face. He seems restored and cheerful. Mm, I have to give it to you, sir. You do know how to work. As things, let me slip you a little tip. Stay clear of the paranormal when talking to people in town. Ever since that rumor about full sense being cursed, everyone's terrified of stuff like that. Oh. Okay. Well, keep that in mind. Professor, there's a piece of the photograph. Excellent. I'll put it with the rest. And you're thirsty immediately, so I don't need to be going back and from. Is somebody there? C can anyone help me? You're right there, madam. Your legs are shaking. My circulation isn't very good, so I get the ch chills really easily. When it gets bad like this, my legs wobble so much that I feel like I'm standing on ice. That sounds terrible. Indeed it does. Might we offer you a little tea to help you overcome that chill? Finding a good space to really stop the game. Either. <laughs> I don't want to stop. So here we are. Tasty! Leela beams a rosy glow returning to her cheeks and her chills disappearing. <laughs> Things are million you too now. Toasty to the tips of my toes. Glad to see it help. Are you now fully recovered? No, oh, not exactly. Hmm, I suppose the tea wasn't as effective as, effective as I had originally thought. Oh no, the chill's all gone, but now I've got a cramp from all the shivering. Oh well. Hey, something's moving behind your shoulder over there. I don't see anything back there. Oops, it's probably just a trick of the light, hey? <laughs> Seems to happen to a lot of people in full sense. Anywho, never you mind all that, and thanks so much for helping me out, I mean it. Why does everyone make such a kerfuffle about warning people away from my castle? Even if you wanted to go, it's impossible to get up there. The forest gate is always locked. Oh, wait, you told me about that before. Uh, 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 behind the bushes and wait, blah blah blah, blah blah 
Yeah, no, she, she told me about that. I already read that. That's not that good. Let's finish the game. <laughs> Finishing the game in one go is quite a few more hours, though. I think there's part of our own photograph. Well done, Luke. I'll hold on to it. We almost got them. Only a few more pieces of the, of the photo, at least. Oh, looks like the inspector has found a new victim to grill. But the only way into full sense is through a narrow mountain pass on a monetary express. In other words, no one gets in or out of town without getting on a train, correct? Oh, I see. Someone's been up late doing the homework. I think you've got your facts straight, love. Each takes a stall in the memory, you know. You could never tell by looking, but I'm no spring chicken. That's quite enough, madam. If you're sure about the route into town, then we're finished here. Martin, let's go. Hmm? I mean, yes, sir. Who oh, blow me down? He's dashed off. Some boys can sit still for five minutes. <laughs> I hope I didn't embarrass the poor lamb, but I only wanted him to come in and see a show. I love this lady. She's so much fun. Professor, I think we've stumbled across another piece of a photograph. Indeed we have. I'll hold on to that for now. So... <gasps> oh! You knew. Hey guys, what you doing there? Hello, young man. We're looking for pieces of a torn photograph. Have you seen any pieces around? Yeah, the wind blew this thing by me. Is that what you were looking for? Love the playground is fine as keep is, but you can have this. It, have it if you solve this puzzle. <laughs> oh! Here's a classic puzzle. The rules are simple. You can move any ball on the board below as long as it satisfies the following conditions. To move, jump, you select a ball over an adjacent space occupied by another ball into an empty space on the other side. You can't jump diagonally. Once you've made the jump, the ball you jumped over disappears from the board. To complete the puzzle, you must remove all boards of all balls from the board except for one. Enough rules? Try it for yourself. This is the thing I talked about last time. Yay, this is it. This is the one that I never figured out at my grandma's place. Okay, let's go. And now to test my theory. But usually it's like the entire fucking board and is filled. There we have it. Kinda. Well done! This is one configuration of a puzzle known as Pack Solitaire! As the name suggests, the traditional version of this game is played with packs that you insert into holes in the game board. <laughs> I get it now! Thanks for your help! Here's the photo scrap, just like I promised. There used to be lots more people in Fall Suns way back when, but then everyone just up and left. It's a little sad, huh? Hi! Hey, whatever you do, don't play in the forest on the edge of town. Oh? Um, why is that? It's what I heard from the people who went treasure hunting in a dusty castle outside town. I also said that a vampire with big fangs lives up there. Thanks. Are you talking about the vampire who say lives up in Hudson Castle? Gosh, if you knew what I was talking about, why'd you make me explain it? Anyway, even though the whole fang thing sounds creepy, that old vampire is nothing to be scared of. As long as you have a cross or some garlic, you'll be right as rain. Actually, I bet you a slice of garlic bread would be enough to do the trick. Garlic bread? Listen, I meant to ask you to. Do you know what this is? The wind blew it over here earlier. Oh, that's one of the photograph scabs we're looking for. Oh, then you should have it. Thank you. Hi. Hmm, damn it. I can finally make him the tea that he wants, but he's not thirsty. Come on, my good sir. Ooh, you want my tea so bad. Ooh. Ooh, you want my tea so bad. Mm. <sighs> sir. Ha <laughs> 
I'm going crazy. You want my tea? Yes! Thank you! This is a sticky wicket. Can I help you with something? I have all these new items to appraise, but I'm so fatigued that I can't seem to make any headway. You do seem to have ever had a daunting task on your hands. I think it'd be more productive if you took a short break. Can I interest you in a cup of tea? That would be heavenly. I'd really appreciate it if you could make something relaxing but spicy. Ooh, relaxing but spicy. What about this one? Now that's a good tea. A smile spreads across Dawson's face. He seems restored and in high spirits. Mmm, the herbs in this tea are outstanding. Would it be herbs or antiques? Items of great quality never fail to inspire the human heart. One prime example of this is a rare and ancient text I have in my personal collection. The puzzle hidden within its pages has fueled the imaginations of men for generations. Still not convinced? Here, have a look. You know what they say, seeing is believing, eh? Oh yeah, yeah. I make him a tea and he gives me a puzzle, okay. An ancient map depicts the possible spots of a vast fortune along with these directions. Inscribe the numbers 1 to 6 in a map's blank spaces so that each set of numbers in a straight line has the same sum. And this sum must be the largest one possible given the condition described above. Then grab your shovel and race to the spot mark 1 for it is there that your treasure resides. Number 4 has been filled in for you. Circle the spot where the treasure is hidden. Ay 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 ay. Having a little fun opening and closing your door. <laughs> <laughs> Four here. And the six here that makes a ten. And five. Use me. Use me. And now to test my theory. And then I want all of those fucking photo scraps. <laughs> you did it! The treasure is buried in roughly the center of the map. The sum you need to work with was 10. You could organize the numbers so that each line ended up to a total of 9, but that is not the highest possible sum. Well done! You have a wisdom that gives me newfound hope for society. In a town of steeped in great as false sense, meeting someone like you is a true breath of fresh air. Aww. That's sweet. Two more scraps. One more scrap. Look, is that another one of the missing fragments of our photograph I see? Yes. Hi. Hiya folks, what are you two doing out here? Looking for something maybe? Indeed we are. We're looking for scraps of a toned photograph. Have you seen anything of the sort? So, rubbish then? Yeah. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I saw one over by the gate to the forest. Anyway, I just have to tell you how amazed I am at the number of out-of-towners I've met today. It's about a girl who wanted directions to Hertz and Castle and now I bump into you two. A girl, you say? She looks like a classy lass, probably in her late teens. She's not with you two then. You must be talking about Katya, Professor. She would certainly fit the description. You think she's after Duke Hudson's fortune? I didn't get that impression from our brief meeting, but something is odd, that's for certain. But enough talk, we've got to lead on the location of the final photo scrap. We must make our way to the forest gate before the wind blows our clue away. <sighs> sure. Tell me what, but please. How bad can it be? Sip of my tea so bad. There we go. I love citronia fruit and I put it in everything smoothies, pancakes, cakes, even spaghetti. 
I think I've pretty much run out of ways to eat it and that gets me down. Have you ever tried the seeds in a tea before? Oh, that's a good idea, but I heard that too much tea makes it hard to sleep. <laughs> Don't you worry, I'll put a little something in it so you won't have any trouble sleeping. Thanks, mister. Since I don't have to worry about going to sleep, I'm gonna drink a bucket full. Maybe don't drink an entire bucket full. You get one cup, okay? One cup. Mmm, Nas has found a new way to enjoy Saturnia food. Oh, that tea was great. I wasn't really as stressed out before, but now I'm super chilled out. Yeah, I was hoping you'd like it. It's nice of you to share your tea, so let me tell you a secret in return. Most people will tell you to stay away from the forest because it's scary, but I know a trick. As long as you tell yourself that nothing scary is going to happen in the forest, it won't. People only see spooky stuff in the forest because they're scared. It's weird, but it's true. He's not wrong. If you tell yourself uh, that there's going to be something scary, you're more likely to, I don't know, mistake some kind of shadow for something actual spooky. No one in this town ever wants to hang out with me, so I'm always all by myself. Hmm. What do you say? Another pretty good game called Solve the Puzzle. Wanna play? <laughs> sure! I love solving the puzzle. A number of identical cans are hanging from a tree. While all the cans here may look empty, one is actually filled with water. See if you can find it. Reducing your answer, ignore the weight of each string and stick. Ooh. Rats for eating flesh. <laughs> Okay, big stick. You know what a weight of each string and stick. Only think about the cans. Okay, sure. This should do the trick. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Yeah, boy. Nice learn. The answer is A. The biggest stick connects to the branch at one at, at a point left of the center of the stick. Four cans hang from each side of this big stick, but because the string holding it to the tree is left of center, the set of four cans on the left must be heavier than the ones on the right. A, B, C, and D all hang from the left side of the big stick. However, judging by the number of cans and the positions of the strings, it's easy to see that A is the heaviest. I knew that puzzle was going to be too easy for you, but I'm just a kid, so what did you expect? I don't know any harder ones, but some of the grown-ups in town might... I think that was a really good puzzle for a child. Don't worry about it. Ooh, just a kid. That's fine, my good dude. Don't worry. Meanwhile, elsewhere... What do you say he comes to town fairly often? Oh yes, I mean, think about it. He takes the Molentary Express for free whenever he wants. I suppose it's one of the perks of owning your own railway. <laughs> and whenever I see him around, he's always with some hippie in a conductor's outfit. Nine times out of ten I've seen him, he's having a go at the conductor about one thing or another. He seems to be searching for something, though I don't know why. Whatever it is, it must be pretty special if a rich guy like him can buy it. Hmm, so I'll see the fuzz over this illusion box. As far as I'm concerned, it's just a box. Inspector, pardon me, sir, but I've just received word from headquarters. His alibi checks out. I said so. And that's that, isn't it? Ha! Ha ha ha! Well, we've got our man, get all the suspects at the hotel, and we'll pull this case, and we put this case to bed. Hmm? But, um, sir, if we know who the murderer is, shouldn't we make the arrest and be done with it? What? Burton, sometimes I think you might be the thickest Bobby I've ever met. There's no greater thrill in the life of a detective than accusing the guilty party in front of a crowd. Just the moment this whole case has been building towards, get everyone up on the double. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, not before we found our stupid fucking pieces of the photo. 
and giving some more people some drinks. Come on, girlie, I know you want a drink. You're tired of, of smelling garlic all the time. You want a drink. Ooh, you want one. <laughs> Come on! Please! Who wants a drink so bad? trouble my dear a bit i'm trying to remember all the things mom said would help cure cold but i've forgotten so you need a clover and some kind of leaf and uh, there's one more sounds like your mother was talking about ingredients for a blended tea i think if what you told us we might be able to make a cup of tea for you to try if you'd like really that'd be great good let's see we'll need the two things you mentioned plus something that works on colds Yummy! Marina smiles widely. She seems restored and cheerful. Thanks, this tea is great. It makes my tummy feel all warm inside. I'm going to try making this for my dad. Sometimes when I look at him, he seems so old and tired. Maybe the garlic fumes from his shop are playing funny tricks on my eyes. Hi, room, Come back! I would say the puzzle... Puzzles... Puzzle... Puzzle... Puzzling is going well. Superpower to make people crave for drink is strong. You should sell the drinks. <laughs> Ooh, you want to drink so bad. <laughs> Look at that. Talk about a spooky place. Do you think the path beyond the gate leads to the castle, Professor? From what I can tell, yes. Gosh, anyone who would live out in the middle of a spooky forest like that must be a little baddie. No wonder people think whoever's out there is a vampire. <laughs> Show a little courage, my boy. We oh, what's this here? Something stuck on this fence. It's the last piece of the photograph. Yay! Now that we've got recovered them all, let's see if we can piece the puzzle back together. Photo back together. I I did not read what that actually said. I think it said photo. Professor Leighton and Luke have finally handed down all 16 pieces of that peculiar photo. Reassemble the pieces to reveal the contents of the image. Rotate a piece by touching a side and spinning it around. Be careful not to reassemble the picture upside down. Okay. Well, let's start off with corner pieces. Corner pieces are always a good idea. Mm, this is a corner. God knows which one now. And this is mm, That doesn't seem to... Ah. Okay. Would you let me the Oi 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 My corner pieces go like this, sorry about that. There we go. 
Here goes. <laughs> that was almost too easy. You did it. But what on earth does a picture up? There, that's all of it. Gosh, Professor. Look, we're at adventure. I guess I'd say that what we see before was this illusion box itself. Look, the design on the top of the box looks the same as the one in front of the fountain. Yes, I noticed the resemblance myself. What an unusual emblem. The imagery seems to resemble some sort of monster, doesn't it? Well, that seems appropriate, doesn't it? I mean, the box did kill poor Dr. Schrader, after all. Well, perhaps it did, and perhaps it didn't. We won't know until we have the actual item in our hands. For now, our best course of action might be to show this photo to the townsfolk and see what they say. Sounds good to me. Who knows, maybe the photo will help jog someone's memory, or... Ah! What are we going to do now? The wind blew away one of the photo pieces. This is quite an unfortunate turn of events. That piece missing the emblem looks completely different. That's even more like a... Um, frog. Well, if we lose any more pieces, it won't look like anything at all. Let's place the remaining pieces down so we don't lose any more to the wind. I keep thinking it looks like a frog, yeah. <laughs> Even though I know it's not a frog, I also keep thinking it looks like a frog. When we constructed the photograph depicts the illusion box, and the lid of the box is an ominous looking goat, which seems appropriate given the box's sinister reputation. So much pick around for that. Yeah! A large ominous symbol in the shape of a goat's head decorates the top of the illusion box. The same symbol can be spotted in a town of full sense. What connection exists between the box and the town? Oh! Resolutant, sir! Brighton, my good man. Whatever's the matter? The inspectors found the person responsible for Dr. Schrader's murder. I have strict orders to round everyone up at the hotel as quickly as possible, sir. Understood. We shall head there without delay. Come, Luke. Let's hurry. <laughs> so much for asking around town. Chapter 6. The Road to Hats and Cats. Hey, hey, hey. Going back to the hotel is quite a ways. I'm so late and so glad you could finally join us. With you here, we now have every suspect in the murder of Dr. Schrader gathered in this room. A few days ago, a renowned archaeologist, Dr. Andrew Schrader, was found dead in his London home. His murder is still at large, but look around you, you could very well be sitting next to the culprit. A suspect? Me? That's a nonsense. What reason could I possibly have to kill a man I don't even know? I'm a bit slow on the uptake, eh? Mr. Beluga, every person in this room is after the illusion box. The box ties each of you to our dead men, so there's no doubt that one of you here did the deed. I'm sure putting this case together has been a triumph of police work, Inspector. So tell me, what facts have you unearthed in these last few days? <laughs> now watch closely, Mr. Layton. This is how we unravel mysteries at the yard. You have my full attention, Inspector. Please, hypothesize away. I first learned a full sense through evidence obtained in the late doctor's apartment. According to his notes, Schrader spent quite some time here in town researching the Elysian box. When I learned that he died shortly after returning home to London, everything became crystal clear. I believe our criminal first spotted the doctor when he was inquiring about the Legion box here in town. Spying a chance to obtain the coveted box, a friend followed, the fiend followed the doctor to London and murdered him. Oh, now that's a deduction worthy of London's finest. So, how with it then? Who's our man? Hold your horses, I'm getting there. To summarize, the culprit must have been to full sense before. What's more, this person must have also had the ability to travel freely between here and London. 
Now, as we all know, only those affiliated with the Voluntary Express have that ability. And now, all eyes turn to Mr. Beluga, eh? Turn them back. Mr. Beluga stated he was in London conducting business that day and his alibi checked out. What? But if it's not Mr. Beluga... That's right, our murder stands before us and his name is... Sammy Thunder! Anyone want some tea? <laughs> ah, you gotta be kidding, man! I know Mr. Beluga ordered you to turn over every stone in this town to find the Elysian box. He walked you like a dog and you resented that treatment. So you decided to beat him to the punch and make off with the precious box. This is an outrage, Samuel! What do you have to say for yourself? I'm being framed! You're out of your guard, man! Now I see why the box eluded me for so long. You've been holding out on me, Samuel. No, I haven't. I swear on my favorite leather trousers. He's swearing on his favorite leather trousers? This man is not lying. Come on, Uncle, you know me. I'm a wild card, but I never do anything as crazy as that. You'll have plenty of time to make your excuses later. From your cell, that is. Come along. So the conductor did it. I didn't think he had it in him, but at least we can all rest easy now. Professor, do you really think Sam could have committed such an awful crime? Well, all we have to go on is this single tone photograph recovered from the doctor's apartment. Oh, so that's the Legion box. Very fancy. I like the cute gold design on the top. Yeah? Flora? You like the cute gold design? On the box? That you've never seen before in your life? Hmm? Thank you, Flora. I knew something didn't feel quite right, but thanks to you, it's all coming to focus. Really? You tell, Professor. Oh, come on, officer, man. My only crime is rocking, and rocking ain't a crime. Yeah. Let me go. You yeah. come along quietly if you know what's good for you. Just a moment, Inspector Shelby. I believe we've all committed a large and rather unfortunate oversight. Can't you see I'm in the middle of something right now, Major? Where are you going with this, Professor? No one here has ever seen the Elysian box that we've been looking for. The one and only piece of visual evidence we possess is this torn photograph. And? Get to the point! The point is this, Inspector. The only person who could know what the Elysian box looks like is the suspect you're after. And it is this person who must have stolen the box in the first place. Yes, and I've got the slippery fellow right here. You do not. Ow! Take it easy, officer. Put down, you hooligan. And watch the hair, will ya? Wow! Sorry to disappoint, but he's not the culprit. Score. What? Stop talking in circles and get to the point, Leighton. Who should be wearing the handcuffs? Isn't it obvious? If the criminal does indeed reside in our midst, he or she would be the only one of us to see the Elysian box in person, which means the culprit. Uh, huh? Must be you there. What? Flora? <laughs> Inspector, look here. That's the photo I dropped. Yep. Indeed. This, for those who don't know, is a piece of evidence recovered by the inspector. It's a photo of the Elysian box, and I have every confidence that this shot depicts the real thing. So, this little knick-knack here is what started the whole mess? Uh, to be honest, it's a bit outlandish for my taste. What with the bizarre frog head on it. I see you've put the pieces together too, Luke. Inspector, the emblem decorating the top of this box depicts not a frog, but a goat. A goat? Not by my eyes, it doesn't. That's just it. 
This photograph is missing the piece containing the goat's eyes. In its current form, the image looks like a frog to most people, as was the case with you, Inspector. Flora, dear, I believe you said the design looked like a cute goat, did you not? <laughs> well, that clears things up nicely. If you say you saw a goat, that must mean you've seen the real Elysian box before. Who are you really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well played, Leighton. I'm sure you're very proud of yourself for seeing through my disguise again. <laughs> and once again, he's cut in half. Who's you, Leighton? Who's you and a floppy shadow of yours? Don Paolo. I beat you to the box and given a little more time I would have beaten you to cracking its secret. And of course, the hats and, hats and fortune would have been mine. But the ship has sailed now. So you're the one who had the Legion box all along. Another brilliant deduction from Leighton's apprentice. Clearly he's learned from the best. <laughs> Oh yes, you're right, little man. I stole it off the old fool while he was snoozing on the floor. Jesus probably caught a cold sleeping on the ground like that. Not that I care one eel. Eel. I eel. Snoozing? I thought the Shredder wouldn't sleep on the floor. Hey, wait a second! If you've been posing as Flora, then where's the real floor? Now she's probably making very small crop circles and I'll drop some burner last in. Oh, she's just sitting there fuming because you bumblers didn't even notice we switched places. I must thank you two dolls for your help. You give me more than enough information. The jig may be up, but the dance is far from over. I'm so close to unlocking the secret of the illusion box, and I need merely take this box to the. Hold it right there, you scoundrel! Ah! Got a lot of questions, and you will answer them once I escort you back to London. Where do you think you're going? God, you slippery devil. Ah, you meddlesome move. You have no idea you're so slippery I can be. Ah, uh, don't you stand there, the woman's getting away! Yeah, <laughs> fool, did you really think a softball flat foot like yourself could catch me? So long, Leighton! Mmm. <laughs> think you can give me the slip, eh? I'll catch you yet. Wait for me, Inspector! My poor voice! <laughs> Good timing! <laughs> Good timing on that room. Oh, look at the pair of them shake a leg. I didn't think I had it in them. I must say, I never once suspected Don Paolo had been posing as Flora, and for so long. Just hope the real Flora is okay. We absolutely can't forget to pick her up on the way back to London. Of course we won't, but I'm sure Flora is having a grand old time playing with the cows. Another thing I can't get out of my head is what Dr. Paolo said about Dr. Schrader. The way he was talking, it didn't sound like he killed Schrader. But if he didn't, who did? I think you're spot on there, Luke. Something else is responsible for the doctor's death. Right now, I say the illusion box is the key to learning what that something is. And it looks like we've reached a dead end. <sighs> if only Don Paolo hadn't run off with the... Professor, look! Well, look at that. Don Paolo must have dropped it when he was running away from Inspector Chalmy. So this is it. The illusion box. Last the box. Inside sleeps the key to unlocking my family's fortune. I beg your pardon, sir? Mr. Leighton, I'm going to ask you to hand over the box now. As a son of the late Duke Hudson, I am the rightful owner of that box. This box belongs to the Hudsons? You're out of hearing, boy. Inside this box is the key to cracking the secret of the Hudson fortune. Seeing as how I share the bloodline, that box should pass into my hands and no one else's. No, oh my, that does change things. I suppose we'll have to. Mr. Beluga, listen to yourself. You're no more entitled to the box than I am, or any other person in this room for that matter. You listen here, Porter. This is none of your business, so I suggest you keep your cake hole shut. No, I'm sorry, but I won't stand by and watch you claim the box as your own. If anyone has a rightful claim to the box, it is the current Duke of Fultons himself. Besides, I've heard about you. You turned your back on this town and left of your own free will. 
In my book, your claim to the fortune was lost the day you walked out of full sense. Oh, she said so. You got some nerve, you know that. If what Cran says is true, I'm afraid I can't hand this box over to you in good conscience, sir. Hey, Uncle, will you say we give up on chasing this box? I'm sick of sneaking around all the time. Don't you dare tell me how to run my affairs, Samuel. I think you've forgotten how you got who got you your job. I never even wanted to be a conductor in the first place. Plus, playing errand boy is getting old, man. It's more than a guy like me can take. Sammy Thunder wasn't born to work a 9-to-5 gig. Sammy Thunder was born to rock out. Hey, Walt, I'm climbing back on the rock train and riding into the job. Yeah! <laughs> Samuel, what are you babbling on about? Come back here once. I'm sorry, Mr. Beluga, but I think I'll have to hold on to this box for the moment. Fine, do what you want. I hope the awful box curses all of you twice over. I don't think you really want that, but sure. The villain who made off with the illusion box was none other than Don Paolo, a brilliant scientist and Professor Layton's self-proclaimed nemesis. To find riches associated with the antique, he disguised himself as Flora and tailed Layton and Luke. Beluga was searching for the Legion box, which he believed contained clues regarding the vast Hudson family fortune. As a member of the Hudson family, he felt entitled to any family riches, though some people in full sense strongly objected to his claims. So it seems Don Paolo wasn't responsible for the doctor's death at all. Maybe it really was the Legion box that killed him. Yes, it sounds like he was already on the floor by the time Don Paolo arrived on the scene. Perhaps you're right, Luke. The box could very well contain a lethal element that killed the doctor. Without opening the box ourselves, how can we be sure? Surely you don't mean- I do, Luke. We must open the box. It's the only way. Just hold on a moment. Hmm? Katya. Is there any way I can convince you to let me have that box? It's of vital importance. Before I do that, I would need to know more first. Why is this box so important to you? I I'm sorry. It's not for me to say. But I must deliver that box to... to somebody important. I must. Who is this person? I... I can't tell you anymore. But once I'm done, I'm certain this awful curse will go away forever. The curse will end and... and everything will be over and done with and he'll... My dear, what is it that you're getting at? Help! Somebody! Anybody come quickly! Somebody else just got taken away to Hudson Castle! The vampire is going to suck his blood and deadly steal his soul! Why did it have to be him? Why? That guy had a heart of gold! What? No, that's impossible. Wait, Katya, where are you running off to? She certainly left in a hurry. Maybe all the vampire talk scared her off. You know what she was talking about, Professor? I could barely follow what she was saying. I'm as confounded as you are, Luke. But after our discussion, I'm doubly sure now that this box contains a greater secret. After understanding everything lies right before us potentially perilous. Opening the box seems to be the only course of action left to us. Understood, Professor. Good. Then let's take this to our room so we can open the box away from prying eyes. Dun 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 dun! Dun 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 dun! Finally, the Elysian box! The 3D model Elysian box. It was no second eye and peril, peril is perilous. Then it would seem my theory was correct. What do you mean, Professor? <clears throat> we must head back into town and do a bit more asking around. I need to confirm my suspicions. Good evening, sirs. Please forgive my early outburst. That wasn't very professional of me. Not at all. Your testimony was incredibly helpful. Listening to you talk, you get the impression that you are well versed in Hertz and family history. Well, I suppose you could say that. When he was still alive, Duke Hudson often favoured our fine hotel with his patronage. 
and very warm memories of his kindness towards me, even when I was just a lowly bell. Back when the Duke was still with us, the whole town buzzed with energy and activity. But once the mining stopped and the Duke passed away, Four Sons turned into a gloomy ghost town. Who was the Duke's successor? Did he have any other children? As I recall, Mr. Beluga's brother inherited the Duke's title. It's really all I know about the situation, though I've heard our current Duke is quite young. At the vampire rumors, which I'm sure you've heard, and you know everything I do. Blah, blah. <laughs> Thank you for the resub. Hi, good evening. Oh my god, I've been streaming for so long, I can finally say good evening to people. <laughs> How are you? to test my theory. Ha! Huh, wonderful! Here goes! That was almost too easy! Just hope we don't reach good morning! Here goes! <laughs> <laughs> that was almost too easy. I don't know what you mean. Aha, this puzzle tried to hide from me, but I found it. Three houses face a single common field. With the heads of these three houses, A, B, and C decide to work together to seed the field. Unfortunately, C injures himself just before work starts, so A and B do all the work together. To seed the entire field, A works five days and B works four. Feeling guilty, C decides to pay A and B for doing his part of the job. Thank them, C pays them a total of nine coins. Divide it up according to how much work each person did, can you work out how many coins A and B each receive? I wish you good morning is a trending. <laughs> <laughs> so it took them nine days to do the entire thing, but originally this was a three people job. Each person would have done like three. Oh, okay. Wait, so you did two more. And you did one more. And they get nine coins. Oh, okay, wait, wait, I got it. I got it. I got it. Six. And three. to test my theory. Depends huh. on when they start. Wonderful. It's also one of the reasons why most of my Saturday streams start sometime in the afternoon. Because that way, I, you know, I will not be staying awake throughout the entire night. <laughs> Smart! A received six coins and B got three. You might have been tempted to answer five and four coins respectively, but as shown above, that isn't quite correct. A and B both had to work three days to finish their own shares of the work. Since C wanted to pay A and B for the work they did for him, he had to base his payment on two days of extra work A did and the one day of work B did. Therefore, A should receive twice to pay B did. One time I really went. Most of the time I, I ended up like stopping the stream and then looking out the window and going, oh, I can see the sun again. But not often. It's always like whenever Room says, oh, it's almost time for me to go to bed, I know I fucked up because of our time zone difference. I'm like, oh, 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 you might want to just turn off. Okay. Computer's very subtly trying to tell me to go the fuck to bed. 
Safeness! If it is my main dudes, you're the only reason I didn't catch that bogus charge. To say thanks, I pulled some strings at the museum curator and got him to open the place up for you. So much, but maybe you'll find some righteous info there to help your case. Make sure you check it out. Thanks, Sam. It got pretty hairy back there for a little bit, didn't it? Still haven't got over discovering that Mr. Beluga is actually part of the Hudson family. Yeah, my uncle never, never really told me much about it all. I just know he had some kind of big bust up with his dad, the Duke, and decided to leave for good. He did talk a lot about the brother he left behind, though. He had a real soft spot for the guy. But now it looks like that gnarly vampire is running around the castle. I to say, but I doubt anyone survived that wicked scary monster with him. One's quite unique, so one you couldn't keep up pretty late. Oh, I know. I couldn't tell you. Okay, get some rest. Thank you for coming by. Staying for as long as you did. All around town. <clears throat> All around town, people are falling ill with a disease that has no name. Some of the common folk have been saying that our town has fallen under a curse. As the only sun remaining to wash over full sands, I can't even think of leaving. The thought will be more disturbing were it not for her. As long as she's by my side, I have the strength to stay and protect this town. Oh, let's get into that fucking museum! Maybe. Maybe not. Some more puzzles before that. Look at you two running around in a barn town like a dog chasing its own tail. <laughs> Actually, watching you reminded me of a fabulous puzzle I know about a dog. Listen up. Okay. Ooh, 50 pick her up. A young girl takes a dog out for a walk with her dad. The girl starts walking with the dog on a leash 10 seconds before the dad starts. The second the dad steps out, the girl takes the dog off the leash and the dog runs over to the dad. Upon reaching him, the dog turns around and hats for the girl. The dog keeps doing this until the dad catches up with the girl. If the dog moves at 5 meters per second, the father 2 meters per second, and the daughter 1 meter per second, how far does the dog run by the time the dad catches up to his daughter? Hey. Okay, sorry, hold on. She walks what? The daughter walks 1 meter per second. One. So she's already at a 10 meters. She's 10 meters away when the dad steps out. And the, the dad. Sorry, that. How much does. It? The father's 2 meters per second. Two meters. One second is two meters. Four meters. Six meters. Eight. And she keeps moving. Does she keep moving? Right. Yeah. And a dog. Yeah, she yeah, she's at ten before the dad even starts. And the dog runs how much? Five meters per second. So it takes him two seconds to get to where the dad is. And then back to her. And then back to him. And then back to her. Oh yeah, yeah. 50. How far does the dog run by the time the dad catches up to the 50? Consider this puzzle solved. Yep, the bear. Huh, wonderful. Woo! Perfect. The dog will have run 50 meters in total. The dog runs for the entire time it takes for the, daughter, for the father to catch up with his daughter. Since the daughter has a 10 meter head start and her dad gains on her at a rate of 1 meter per second, we catch up in 10 seconds. The dog is running at a rate of 5 meters per second, so the answer must be 50 meters. That's one very interesting looking dog. 
Ooh, nice work, you two. You may run around like dogs, but you've got it going on upstairs too, haven't you? You both love running around so much, I won't stop you. Besides, it's fun to watch. Why is she so rude, though? Hello? Girl? What the fuck? An interesting blend of fruitiness and subtle smokiness. Hmm. Heard you can use a tea leaves from this blend to predict your love life. I'm impressed, Luke. It hardens me to take such interest in the blending of tea. Of course, Professor. I couldn't rightly call myself your apprentice if I didn't. Aww. Alright. The first berry. And the joy room. One sip and I feel rejuvenated. It's smoky yet it has a wonderful sweetness to it. This is a whole new flavor for me, Professor. I've never tried anything quite like it. It's interesting, and I'm sure it's good for when you've worked up a thirst, but it's not quite my thing. Really? Well, I for one thing it's rather tasty. It's a bit odd. It certainly has a distinct taste, but you know, Lou, the more I drink it, the more I like it. If you're that fond of it, you're more than welcome to my <laughs> to drink my cup as well. Sorry to hear that Cinderfly isn't your <laughs> cup of tea, Luke. <laughs> Joy root, pepper cherry, and cinnamon. Oh, this tea is out of this world! I agree, Luke. I'm amazed that it's possible to make something like this with common ingredients. Well, it's just full of mysteries like that, isn't it, Professor? Indeed, my boy. Well, consider me mystified. Here we go! Now we have every single set of tea. Now we just need to actually give it to even more people. Ooh, everyone wants to drink my tea. Ooh. Get in there. Get in there. the fountain they have here. It sure is. Actually, it reminds me of a really great puzzle about a fountain. Shall I tell it to you? First! The fountain shown below has the unusual ability to indicate the age of those who approach it. For example, if a five-year-old child were to approach, the fountain would fire off water from spots A, B, C, D, and E in that order. For age 15, the middle sprout would fire, followed by spots A to E. For someone aged 30, the middle sprout would fire off three times. Given the fountain's method of indicating age, does one utterly use a spot on a fountain? <laughs> Encircle this font. Okay, hold on. For a five year old, I would go A, B, C, D, E. So one, two, three, four, five? Six, seven, eight, nine. Right, for age 15, the middle spout would fire. To go 10? And then one, two, three, four, five. And for 30, one, two, three times middle. Well, if you have this one to indicate 10, what, what the fuck do you want with this, this thing then? Consider this puzzle solved. <laughs> huh, wonderful. Good catch! The spout mark J is basically useless. A to I represents a unit of one year each, the spang numbers from one to nine, and the middle spout represents a unit of ten years, spout J will never be used. Dun dun dun. The way you tear through puzzles never fails to amaze me. Me! To look. Me! To... Oh goodness. Know what though actually I think this here would be a good place so I'm just gonna give this man a drink we had 99 souls puzzles and everything coming after this is pretty story heavy I don't think I 
I kind of ugh, finished this entire thing today. Oh my, so very thirsty. Oh. Are you alright, sir? To be honest, I've been better, sunny boy. Sunny boy! My name's Gregorio and I love cheese like pigs love mud. I've been standing here all day pondering my next move and, well, it's pretty brutal work. Would a cup of tea help that thirst of yours? That'd be mighty kind of you, Sonny Boy. Yeah, I'll see what I can make. Once you're really fresh, thinking about uh, thinking up your next move should be much easier. seems refreshed and ready to make his next move. Ah, now that's a refreshing cup of tea. Of course, queen to bishop six, check. See, a little tea can work wonders. You've already found your next move. Nice. As my way of saying thanks, here's a little fact trade for you, Sonny. In the Hats Museum, you can find books with the chess strategies used by aristocrats of the past. The peculiar thing is, that no new strategies have been developed in the last 50 years. It's almost like time has stopped. Hmm. 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 That's weird. The name is Gregorio, and I love chess like mice love cheese. If you can solve this little chess puzzle I've set up, I'll tell you what I know about Fulton. Sounds fair. Show me what you got. <laughs> okay, you know what? Actually, that's good. That, that would would be puzzle number 100. Yeah, that's good. Lead the night on a trip around the board. Oh, okay, this one, but it's just on a bigger... Ugh. Okay. Here seemed fun. Right? Maybe not. Oh, this is the same thing I just did. Ooh. to test my theory. Huh, All wonderful. Right. Well done. Sharp thinking, sunny boy, real sharp. What was I going to say? Oh yes, the Hudson's. Way back when, Hudson Castle used to be quite the hot spot. Lavish, balls will be held there. Now though, no one will go near the place. Castle supposedly got a vampire living in it. But I wouldn't give for things to go back to the way they were. Thank you for the pad and buy two time. Oh, 
this wretched life of mine, the girl I love and to whom I was betrothed has abandoned me and fled with full sense. Did all that awful talk of curses scare her off, or did she truly leave me to be with someone else she loves? Either way, her betrayal cuts me to the core. I trusted her, and now I'm lost. Where do I go from here? What's left for me? I don't know what's left for you, but left for me is another puzzle with this dude. My name is Gregory and I love chairs like cats love scratching up expensive furniture. You can converse if you want, but first you'll have to solve this chess puzzle of mine. Again. Seven. <laughs> there was one big round around the chessboard first, right? One big. One big trip. And then. not right. Ah! I cannot do chess. I don't even know how to play normal chess. Oh fuck am I going to do this fancy thing. Consider this puzzle solved. Please. Huh. Wonderful. Or... Oy, oy, oy. Well done! That's quite a thinking cap you got there. So impressed I'm going to let you in on a secret no one else in town would spill in a hundred years. A few years ago an awful thing happened here in town. People in Folsom just started dropping like flies that they all caught some mysterious illness. Anyone discover the source of the strange malady? Ah! Hi, Raiders. <laughs> Hi, Kuda. How dare you? I was lurking in your chair and I thought to myself, Oh yes, I can send people over to Little Nightmares. And then you finish the game. <laughs> Hi, Raiders. Welcome in. I'm new. I like the color pink vision of the JRPGs. And I was planning on ending my stream after solving this puzzle. But I guess here we are. <laughs> You. How was Little Nightmares? You played it for the first time, right? Good timing, yup. Good timing. Hi, hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Happy catcher for the Raiders, of course. <clears throat> Solve it quick enough. I had to jump around. <laughs> I don't know how to play chess. <laughs> it was cool. You played through it really quickly, though. Like three hours and a little bit. I think it took me longer to play Little Nightmares when I played it the first time. Way longer. Like double the time, at least. I think it took me at least six hours or something. <laughs> but yeah, we are uh, we're playing um, Professor Layton and the Pandora's box or. The Diabolical box or whichever version you want to fucking call it. For me, it's Pandora's box, actually. Um, and since we've been here for almost nine hours, I was actually planning on making like a stop here because 
everything after this is pretty much just story, 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 story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, you missed a lot. There's a ton more collectibles. Oh, yeah, yeah, true, though. I still haven't gotten all of them. I plan on going back to the game sometime and collect everything, but I have not been there. I don't know. I don't think I have the game still installed, actually, so I'd have to reinstall it in the first place. So I'm like, hmm. Okay. And now it's 12 for a new stream. No, please. Uh, I haven't moved in almost nine hours. <laughs> but yeah, they announced the third um third little nightmare. So that one's gonna feature co-op player. No, I mean, I think the thing is, I do like the game. It's just, I'm not tired to, to go sleepy yet. I'm just like, ooh. I don't know if I can actually fully finish the entire game. I think it would take us another two hours at least, story wise, cutscene wise, if not more, so. Haha. <laughs> Pause to check, thank you. Yeah. gonna grab a snack though. I might be back. I wish I could say yes, but it's still a mystery to us. What I do recall is that many fled the town once word of the illness got around. But that's as much as I care to speak on a topic. You solve all my puzzles and I'm tired. I'm getting back to my game. Hmm, if I... Well, the night would take point, I won't do. Oh, he's tired! He's getting back to his game? Oh, well, <laughs> how dare you! with the microphone one second <laughs> every time I don't care if it gets even earlier that they put all of the Christmas stuff up in 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 any in all Places and grocery stores and the like. If I can get Baumkuchen in October, I'm gonna get. Oh my god, this is hard. Jesus Christ, why is it so hard? Baumkuchen. You want eggnog? I actually tried eggnog sometime last year. Not really my thing. Make your own easy. <laughs> that was my thing. Oh, let's see then. We are finally in the museum. Oh, well, I'm blaming you now. I'm gonna keep going. I said I would stop with 101 solved puzzles, but we're gonna keep going. Haha. <laughs> I'm going to up the curator of the Hatson Museum. We have an extensive collection of artifacts relating to the history of this town and the Hatson family. Sammy told me all about you two. I hope you find our resources helpful to your investigation. Please feel free to peruse the collection to your heart's content. Oh, well that's mighty nice of you. You will take responsibility. <laughs> 
Vanessa, take a look at this case of knickknacks. These appear to be common household items owned by the Hudson family. Some of them look positively inch ancient. Right, the Hudson family clearly has a long and rich family history. I don't think anyone will blame me if you want to end stream in nearly nine hours. Ah, game! Ah. <laughs> Close to finishing the game. Very yes, exactly. I will be saying, oh, I'm too close to um uh, the actual end of the game. I'm just gonna keep going in like an hour or so, probably. <laughs> That's one impressive statue. It must be of Duke Hudson. This entire museum appears to be dedicated to celebrating his achievements, so I'd have to agree. Wait a second. I thought Mr. Bedulia owned this place. Yes, I believe that's the case. Then he built his museum in honor of his father. Maybe he's not so bad after all. <laughs> he's a little brash, but he probably had his reasons for leaving the family and stuff. I know there's something in here, don't hide. I know there's hidden coins. This place is certainly full of stuff. Do you suppose this is a picture of the late Duke? I believe so, yes. The old Duke Hudson died a while ago and left behind a massive fortune. If he's gone, who's this vampire the whole town's talking about? Sam mentioned that Mr. Beluga had an older brother here. I'd say he's likely the man at the heart of all this talk. If he's Mr. Beluga's older brother, he would have to be old and feeble by now. Oh, but then vampires don't age normally, do they? <laughs> hmm. I couldn't possibly comment. Seeing as something like vampires clearly don't exist. I mean, what? I see you've taken an interest in a picture. Is this what I think it is? It's a photograph of the entire Hudson family who were responsible for Folsom's legendary wealth. The distinguished older gentleman on the left is Duke Hudson. His youngest son, Friedrich, is in the middle, and his eldest son, Anton, is on the right. Friedrich, that's Mr. Beluga, the founder and owner of the Monetary Express, is it not? Oh, you know him? Well, in addition to owning a railway, Friedrich is a friend of mine and the owner of this museum. It's a sad story, really. He caught all ties to his father and left town 50 or so years ago. When he left, he took a small portion of the hats and wealth and used it to start his railway. Yes, Friedrich has quite a study in contra contradictions. He disliked his father enough to change his name, but he returned to Folsons to found this museum. Did the feud extend to all the members of the Hudson family? No, Friedrich and Anton were always quite close, but their relationship with their father was never the same after that fateful day. What day was that, sir? The day Duke Hudson discovered the vein of gold that brought so much wealth to four sons. He was a different man after that. Something changed him. Greed, perhaps. Well, yes, there was that. But there was something more than greed infesting his heart. What do you think that was? I... No, I think it's best if we end this chat here. It's not my place to speculate about what goes on in the hearts of other people. Of course. Tell me this, though, if you can. Where is Anton now? That's a good question. The third room is that he might still be living in a little castle, but I can't imagine anyone would live in a place so run down that people call it a vampire then. Gracious, look at how long we've been chatting. I think it's time for me to get back to work. Please look around for as long as you like. Seems money can't solve all your problems, eh, Professor? Hmm. It can. Solve most of them, though. The robot, not vampire. True, very true. Robot vampire could be <laughs> could be dope. Mm -mm -mm. What's weird in this one? This is missing that weird part on the cuff. Here goes. Piece of cake. Why is my bomb cool? Like this. Okay, what else is different? There's something else on the map here. Hmm. Let's see if this works. Piece of cake. 
Dog of Dracula 2? The several dogs of Dracula? This should do the trick. And there we have it. Dun, 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 dun. It's only going to be like, what, 30 more puzzles in the main game and the rest is uh, from the extras anyway. Oh, I found a hidden puzzle. The box shown below has a height, width, and depth of 30 centimeters. You'd like to place as many books as possible in the box. Each book is 10 centimeters wide by 20 centimeters long by 10 centimeters thick. How many books can you pack into this box? Books can only be placed in a box when they're closed, but you can position each book however you like inside the box. Wait. it's going to be a pain to get them out but it works and now to test my theory and there we have it <laughs> very nice if you arrange your books in the box in the method in the method shown you can cram a whopping six books into it you probably shouldn't but it does work Correct in believing that you wish to understand the secrets of the Elysian box. Yes, that's right. Would you happen to know anything about it? I'm sure you already know that the Elysian box is a handsome family heirloom. A heirloom. Thank you for the follow up Come in. That Mr. Beluga's requests have been researching the history of Fulsons and the Hatson family. In doing so, I uncovered a secret in this town's history that reveals the truth behind the Elysian box. Intriguing. What is the secret you speak of? It's easy to ask that question when you don't know what you're getting into, Mr. Layton. But if you thirst for the truth, you're ready to face it. You do well to visit the town line. Many miners used to keep little diaries down there to document the time below ground. If you can find one of those, you'll have a first-hand account of what transpired back then. Thank you for the advice. We'll have a look for ourselves. Come, Luke, let's head to the mine. The children! They earn for the mines! You earn for the mines! <laughs> Just one more puzzle. Yeah, get one more puzzle. And one more. And one more puzzle. And one more puzzle. Mm, and one more puzzle. <laughs> this man wants a tea from me so bad, he just doesn't know it yet. Come on, sir. Ooh, you want tea. Ooh, you want tea from me so bad. Come on. Come on! You want my tea so bad? Come on, my good sir. My good man. I promise it's very good tea. <laughs> Why is triggering some of them so hard? Sometimes we go on a map and the person is immediately thirsty and every other time it's just like, nope, fuck you. You want to give people drinks? How dare you? <gasps> you want to drink so bad, you just don't know it yet. Working in a museum is so hard, you really need to drink. Believe me. Is with this man. I want a drink. Come on. Three hours later. I'm losing my mind.
do okay you know what i'll read the diary first and whatever ever since she left father and i have been at each other's throats day and night the mysterious disease plaguing our town continues to drive people to flee their homes for a safer life elsewhere if only she'd stayed with me i feel like i could have weathered the storm i still ask myself why she left this town if she truly loved me then why did she leave Ooh, that I can answer. Because I can't remember. <laughs> I don't remember every single detail of this game, so thank you, Jesus! The Hudson Museum holds the most impressive collection of writings recovered from the family. The other day, while thumbing through an old account of castle provisions, I discovered something. Interesting. Please do continue. I have a weak spot for matters of this sort. I read an account about a very special tea. It was said to commemorate the extinguishing of a great fire and the spark of a new one. Sadly, it seems the ingredients from this wondrous tea have been lost to the sands of time. But what I wouldn't give for a chance to sever that historic blend. I suppose that's impossible now. Not necessarily, my good man. Perhaps we can use modern ingredients to recreate this legendary tea. Your knowledge of tea is clearly expensive, Mr. Layton, but... Could it really be possible? I can't guarantee I'll get it right, but let's see what I can come up with. What you're doing is random or set amount to trigger. Ah, uh, that's a good question. There you go. And string part to trigger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've made all green <laughs> You've made all green crisp beverage dreams come true. Ah, now that's a legendary team. The nuanced flavor almost moved me to tears. I aim to please, sir. Oh, you have to excuse me. I haven't become so emotional of the cup over a cup of tea in a long time. It's not much, but let me share this puzzle with you. It's really all I can do to say thanks. Oh god. Puzzling cubes. Eight cubes have been created based on the flat plan show below. shown below. These have been combined to build a larger cube. One of the eight small cubes has had the letters on. Each of its faces erased. The big cube has been constructed in such a way that all of the smaller cubes' faces that aren't visible are pressed against the same lettered face of another cube. Knowing this, can you work out what letter belongs on the face the arrow is pointing to? Your answer will be one letter from AQF. Uh huh? Oh my god. Yeah, yes, I can definitely imagine what this looks like in 3D. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This side is also an A. And what's over here? There's a C. Not... Yeah, like you, you need some kind of. <laughs> you need to get a, a die or like a paper cutout, and then you just write, write what you, <laughs> what you have on there. <laughs> to figure this out would make it easier than trying to figure it out just in your brain. In your brain, in your head. You can hear exactly how, how good I'm at figuring out stuff tonight. Uh which that's with that C and that's a D. And this side is C D E. E on that side and A on that side.
Okay, so this is an A. This is an E. That makes this one a C. E, A, sports. E, A. E. This is this is this A B D. No, okay. B B B B B B B. That's a pretty nice B. Consider this puzzle solved. Ooh. Huh. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. That's right, the correct letter is B. That was a tough puzzle, wasn't it? <laughs> Don't patronize me, game. Well done. I think you just might have what it takes to get to the bottom of what's going on in this town. I don't think I've got much to offer you in the way of help, but I'll be rooting for you. Aw. Thanks, kind sir. To be too thirsty. We need to wait for him to be thirsty. Mwah. Come on. Eh, oh, okay. You know what? Memories, so us about the days. Reminiscing, are we? Yeah. Back in the day, we had this cafe in town that brewed the most amazing tea. I mean, folks would flock to Folsom's by the hundreds to taste this wonder tea, as it was called. Also, the cafe was the place to be. True, right, it was. You know, you look like you know a thing or two about tea. I don't suppose you could brew me a cup of the wonder tea, would you? It's certainly a challenge I'm willing to take up. Let's see what I can do. Well, good luck to you. I kind of remember that the tea has something spicy going on. But that's all the help I can give you. That's fair, I have a wonder tea right here. Now that's wonder tea. Hopper gives your concoction a big thumbs up. Yes, this is it. Me and my mates will play cards late into the night while drowning cup of the cup of this. I wasn't sure you had it in you, but you really came through for me here. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Glad to be of assistance. <laughs> Glad to be of assistance, my good man. You're brainy one, but you're not the first clever clocks to visit this town. We used to get loads of them. Just a little while back, an old man from London came through here. He said he was an archaeologist. He played cards and put the word to rights. He was in town researching something or other. I wonder if he ever found what he was looking for. Mm, yeah, I wonder who you could be talking about. Good evening! How are you? I tried a number one rated puzzle here in full sense. I'd be delighted to, sir. Oh no! <laughs> it's a different configuration for you to try. As of last time, you can move any ball on the board below as long as it satisfies the following conditions. <laughs> You're drinking a cup of Earl Grey tea. Ooh. Enjoy, enjoy. Leaves no puzzle unsolved. I'm trying and failing to end this stream and say, oh, we'll continue this game some other time. <laughs> oh, thank you for the non-antlery. Move down a little bit so it actually fits on the screen. <laughs> thank you for the pat. <laughs> thank you. Hey, you're pretty good at this. I don't want to see the talent waste to listen. That talk with the vampire living up in Hansel Castle takes anyone who gets close. That's the word from some people who just barely escaped the castle with their lives. Pretty well stuff, ain't it? That's why everyone in town starts shivering when we talk about the forest. Yes, but the yep, but here's the thing. So just mentioning the place makes people jump out their skin, right? Funnily enough, I don't know a single person who hasn't made it back from there in one piece. Sure, they're all scared in some of our trousers, but they're no worse for the wear. 
That is odd. So what do you think is going on out there? You guys are as good as mine. Everyone says they escape by the skin of the teeth, but I don't know about all that. I like that we still keep getting stuff for the hamster as if we haven't already gotten him to be as skinny as can be. Granted, you can you can make even more combinations to try and see how high you can um, make the combo for him to walk through. I wonder what the highest possible thing is anyone's ever done. Hi! Like to see me work my magic in the kitchen again? been knocking them out extra fast, so they're more now than ever before. Unfortunately, just like before, I can't get even two of them to come out the same size. That's okay, ma'am. I will eat all of your pancakes anyway. <laughs> just one more! Okay, alright then, let's see. This one's gonna be... Taking us longer than all the others, I think. Ah, fuck, no, hold on. Like one more episode. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Hi, hi. I think I'm doing a fantastic job of just a little more, just a little more, just a little <laughs> And there we have it. Oh, I like the pancake stacking, that's nice. Oh, they're fresh. Now the only question is what to put on them. I've never seen someone who could handle pancakes with such a delicate touch. If anyone else had tried to stack them like that, they'd be buried in a mountain of batter right now. Yeah. I'm good at handling those pancakes. So good, you have no idea. Alright. Sammy! Do you by any chance want to drink? Don't. Not yet. You just don't know it yet. Ooh. Oh no, now they're both thirsty! Ah. I'm not cut out for all this running around, man. Check out how gnarly my shoulders are. It's my strumming arm, man. How am I supposed to hold my axe when I'm all tense like this? Didn't know you could play the guitar, Sam. Yeah, I'm born to rock, man. But hey, here's a tea that fixes like everything. Messed up shoulders, paper cuts, split ends, whatever, you name it, that tea will fix it. Hmm, that's certainly the first time I've heard of such a tea. Yeah, man, I'm a little foggy in the specifics, but I hear all sorts of good stuff about that blend. One sip fills you with energy and malus you at the same time. Wow, well, huh? Now, everything I'm saying is just a rumor I heard, but if that tea's out there, I gotta get me some. Well, you've intrigued me, Sammy. Let's see if we can discover the composition of this mystery plant. What, for real? You're gonna make me a cup of the magic juice? Oh man, this is gonna be sweet! Yeah. I would also like some of these blends. Mm -hmm. Yo! Sammy's back and ready to rock! <laughs> that tastes so good, it made me hit a high note, man! Talk about an original flavor. Top it off, my shoulders feel loose and ready to take whatever Gita soul is coming my way. Rock fans of the future are going to remember you as the man who saved Semi Thunder's career. I 
ain't that nice. Hey dudes, you getting close to finding what you're looking for? I... I sure am. I hope I am. Close-ish. <laughs> Things are coming along nicely, thank you for asking. Oh, but Sam, as the conductor, is it alright for you to be away from the train like this? <sighs> Man, forget that train. Even if I care, today's supposed to be my day off. But here I am. First I get sent off after the Legion box, and then I'm accused of murder. It's total drag. Semi Thunder's no murderer, man. With all the craziness, it's definitely time to chill out with a puzzle. Here, check it out. Ooh, Semi's working me. Let's say today is my day off. I'm yes, uh, if yesterday wasn't also a day off, then I'm off again tomorrow. If on the other hand I was off yesterday, then tomorrow I'll have to work. Now let's say I worked today. What a drag. If I didn't work two days before today, I'll have to have to work tomorrow. But if I did work two days ago, I'm off tomorrow. Yow! Assuming a standard 365 day a year and ignoring weekdays and holidays, use what Semi told you to work out the number of days he's weeks in a year. Oh my god! Okay, so hold on. Today's his day off. If yesterday wasn't also a day off, then I'm off again tomorrow. I need to write this down, Jesus Christ. Today is his day off. If yesterday... Wasn't also day off. So if he worked yesterday... Then he has another day off. But if he, if he did have yesterday off... Then he's gonna have to work. If he worked today... It didn't work two days before. I have to have to work tomorrow. It did work two days ago. I'm off tomorrow. What the fuck is it? Wait. He has two days off, and then he works three days, and then he has two days off again. He's just making it sound extremely convoluted. Hi, Sammy. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, he's just making it sound way, way harder than his. He works, he works three days, and then he has two days off. And we have 365 days. I need a calculator for this bullshit. Ooh, ninjas. Two days. Ugh, how am I gonna do that? He works three days. Then he has two days off, and he works three days, and two days off, and oh my god, the calculator doesn't actually show me that. Mm. Three days a week, yeah, but we ignore- yeah. I can't count- mm. no, no. 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 He works 219 days out of the week. Jesus. Ah. What a convoluted way of saying that. It's you and a bomb loves just snoozing. <laughs> I wish I was snoozing right now, but instead I'm going, oh, just a little more, just a little more. And then I'm gonna finish playing this entire game in one go because when the fuck not? Huh. Wonderful. Three days of work and two days off is cool. Score! Semi slang and convoluted explanation may have been hard to understand, but his work schedule is simple. He works three days in a row, rests for two, and then repeats the pattern. Put a different way, Semi works three out of every five days. Three fifths of 365 a year gives you 290 work days per year. That's a pretty sweet deal he's got going on. 
Yeah. Good for him. Nice answer, man. What's so sweet it makes me want to hit a high note. You know, the boss is a pretty lucky guy. I mean, the dude owns his own train. And here we are, in the middle of nowhere, searching for some old guy's loot. Don't get me wrong, some moolah would be sweet, but sometimes the boss can be real greedy. That is very true. No, time to hope for this lovely woman to be thirsty. How many more people do we have that can be thirsty that we haven't given a drink to yet? Please, ma'am. Ooh, you want my tea so bad. Ooh. doing air guitar on his day off. He's doing air guitar right now. On the other hand, he works for his uncle. I feel like he's not gonna get his full proper days off most of the time. Working for family? Ew. If I tell where you go along is that we get to see a cute curse along. That's true! It's a lovely curse. Lovely curse that anyone that wants it is free to have. Either like, you go on the Discord and download it, or you, you go tell me you want the curse I can send you. Zip file, that's also fine. Come on, lady, you were thirsty earlier. Why are you not thirsty now? <sighs> There we go. <laughs> what to do, what to do. He's in trouble, madam. May I be of any assistance to you? Yes, I'm quite troubled. And what's worse, I have no one with whom I can discuss the matter. Well, how would you like a hot cup of tea? If nothing else, it should bring a bit of cheer to your day. Well, I'm tired of mulling over the issue, so I suppose I might as well take a break. I don't mean to sound picky, but please keep in mind that I have certain preferences. On a day like today, I do believe a nice strong tea with a pinch of dream fluff is in order. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Is she Meiji? Oh, yeah! <laughs> that one's also fun. Splendid drinkability. Thanks to your brew, Opal is ready to return to obsessing over her troubles. Oh, great. Lovely. Yes, this tea is just the thing I need to lift my sagging spirits. Could I trouble you to lend me your opinion, kind sir? It's been some trouble in my family, and to be quite frank, it's been quite a bit- it's been a bit much for me. Of course, please continue. Just a few weeks ago, the contents of my father-in-law's will were presented by his lawyer. However, the way he demanded his property be divided is simply baffling. In what sense, madam? The specifics are written up like a strange riddle. Until we can decipher it, no one gets anything. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, Barry. Thank you. I'll save after this puzzle. A wealthy land baron passed away, leaving his land to be divided amongst his sons. A section of his will is written below. I want my four boys to each receive a piece of property containing an orchard, a house, a pond, and an open field. Everyone should receive the same amount of land. Our lines are using the status to separate each son's plot of land. Oh fuck, yeah dude! Everyone gets a little bit of everything. Okay. You get this. And you get this. Bam. Boom. Done. This should do the trick. <laughs> huh. Wonderful. Good job! Now everyone has their own land. Hopefully they can all get along. <laughs> now everyone has the same amount of land. They can finally stop grumbling. Happy days. Do you not get anything? Oh no, you're just the wife of one of the... Right, right. She said father-in-law. Hopefully she also gets something. My good sir, could you please be thirsty? Any more people do I have to give a fucking drink to anyway? Blah. Hey there, Topad. You look like a bit of a bookworm. A bit! I don't suppose you know anything about fortune telling, do you? What sort of definition do you have in mind? This is tea with oasis leaf in it that lets you predict people's love lives. Oh yeah! 
Oh, I've never heard of any tea like that, Professor. Can we try making a cup, please? What do you mean you've never heard of that? You literally said when I made the tea that the tea leaves can be used to... Oh. Luke! I'm all for experiments, Luke. I'll give it a go, but tell me, sir, whose love life will we be forecasting? Well, I'm a handsome lad, so I don't really need my romantic fortune at all. But if you're brewing it anyway, I'll read the leaves when it's done. That sounds fine. I'll sketch a brewing, shall we? You're stronger than me. I'm already passing out. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Thank you for coming by. Don't dream of the scary people following you in little nightmares. Because that's not a nice dream to have. That's quite scary, actually. Dream of the good tea that I'm making and the bound kuchen that I'm horribly cutting apart. Ha <laughs> ha! Come on. I hit the spot. Smile spies across Rory's face. He seems restored and cheerful. Where? Where? You got your revenge, so you're not scared anymore. That's good. <laughs> I will. Thank you. Oh yeah, these will do nicely. See how the tea leaves are positioned just so? They're trying to tell us something. Cool. So what can you see? Mm, doesn't look good for the poor lad. What lad? Whose love life did you just peek into? The vampire lives at the edge of town. I hear he's in love with some human girl. I decided to see how that relationship's gonna work out. Oh. That sounds like bad news, doesn't it? I mean, it's only a matter of time before he breaks down and drinks her blood. Too right. But yeah, just as I thought, this one's gonna end in tears. I don't know if you really need tea leaves to see that. Glitz, <laughs> <sighs> Glamour Games, those are the three G's you need to know here in full sense. It's given you a, I've given you a taste of the glitz and glamour, so how is it going to help? I was about giving this game a whirl. I cannot talk anymore. <laughs> I think the last one of these puzzles is just gonna have the entire thing. Like, the original thing actually is. Your poor phone battery doesn't like Twitch streams. Oh, okay. <laughs> Have a good night, room. Bye, my. <laughs> Entire thing filled by one is the Yeah, normally it would be all of these filled except for this one. I think that's going to be the last one then. You want to be catchy before you go? Okay, one second. <clears throat> they got you. They got, they got. They got you. <laughs> Let's see. The thing is, the thing is, you can learn how this entire thing goes to an extent, but I can never fully remember. was a very poor move on my part. I made this one go in the other direction though. Isn't that cool? Right. Now I can't move any of them anymore. Never mind. Um Sure did. Should do the trick. A trick. 
true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. The game is often played on two different types of boards, English and French. The puzzle you just played used an English style board. Oh. I was thinking you'd need at least a few more tries to beat it, but I guess you showed me. I can show you many things. I like it. Our goal is getting to the mine, and we're doing quite literally everything except going to the mine. Hi. I can tell by looking at you, you want to chat to me about something. But before we do that, let's take care of a little business first. Oh. <laughs> yes, I know the drill by now. To test my Just took theory. a second longer to think about. What do you mean? And there we have it. The only condition for solving these puzzles was eliminating all by one ball from the board, but the true solution to these puzzles requires you to finish with the ball position in the center space. Perhaps that will provide some incentive for you to revisit a few of these packs solid to puzzles. I did that! Good work, fellas. Handful sends down many people much to do, so folks tend to fixate on their hobbies. After all, hopping show beats sitting around staring at the wall. Believe me, I know. Yeah, I'd rather be hobbying. Hi. Oh, nice. He's actually thirsty. That's one spectacular tea set you've got there. You could brew a mean sugar smoked tea with that. You ever had sugar smoked tea? Brewing, it's a doodle. All you need to do is take a basic citrus classic and make one little substitution. I said so. We're open to giving it a shot. Let's see just how difficult the sugar smoke tea is to make. I've made this one before, it's fine. Getting too much into the motion. Mm -mm. Just a ticket. A smile spreads across Garland's face. He seems restored and cheerful. Mm, that's nice tea and drinking it out of a nice porcelain cup like this makes it all the taste. I have to say, it's a miracle you could even taste a tea with a place smelling like it does. <laughs> True. I do love garlic though, it's a fun to food. Oh, and don't get me started on how well it keeps. Hey, take a look at this chap. I've been holding on to him for 10 years. One sniff is guaranteed to send vampires running for the hills. Probably also most humans. Did you say 10 year old garlic? Blech. Carry one of these around with you and vampires won't be the only ones trying to stay out of your way. That's what I'm saying. Remember, business has been laid in rain. Lots of works and custom. Haha. <laughs> you have another. You have another. Yeah. Take a look. Some of these cans and bottles contain things other than garlic. Can you believe it? <laughs> Everything here appears to be in order. Tell me, Luke. Have you ever heard this one? 99! Another row of jars and cans all mixed up and this time there are even more of them. As before, your job is to rearrange these items so that both jars and cans are grouped with items of the same type. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay, okay. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi. Okay. Um, anyway. Anyway. Oh, fuck, wait. <laughs> wait. Hold on. 
that was stupid. That was even more stupid. Not how this works. That was almost too easy. Well done. This puzzle space on one wildly known in Japan since the Edo area. Ooh. It's an excellent answer, Luke. Right, this man probably is also thirsty, right? Yes, he is. You two, there's an emergency. Well, I'm in big trouble now. No, what's going on? It's my tea. It's not sweet at all. How's a man supposed to fight vampires without sweet tea? Ow. I was going to go home and brew up some more, but I can't leave my post. We're trapped here like rats. Is that all? What do you mean, is that all? What will we do if the vampire busts in? How will they quench my thirst made wankish? Hmm? Exactly what kind of tea would allow you to continue your fight? Secret monster fighting recipe handed down from my great great grandfather. It's got dry wood clove and a little something else for a thirst obliterating smoky taste. See, I believe we might be able to make you something that would approximate that tea. Oh, aren't you well prepared? All right then, if you can brew it, bring it on. Here. That's good tea. Jeff seems restored and cheerful and ready to kick some vampire rump. Mm, yes, now that hits the spark. I hand it to you. You really came through for me here. Yeah? Done a great thing for the people of this town. They'll be safe now thanks to my protection. I'm sure you're trying your best, but I think you can afford to relax just a little bit. Relax? Listen to me, boy. You can't underestimate vampires. The cunning creatures, just when you think you spotted one, kazam! He vanishes on you. Bottom line is, don't tempt faint when it comes to vampires, so stay away from hats and castle. Yeah, I'll be doing just that. Clearly, I'm not going to attempt to get any closer to the castle than I've been so far. Whoopsie. Guess I'm one step closer to the mine. Wow, hmm, surely there's going to be nothing of interest in there. Please, you want a tea so bad. Ooh, you want a tea. Ooh, yes, you do. See these sunglasses? They're my favorite pair, but no matter how I wipe them, everything's still blurry. On my stand, the lenses look just fine. That's the root of the problem isn't your glasses at all. Tell me, do your eyes feel strained? Hmm, now do you mention it, I suppose they do. Blow me down, aren't you the fast thinker? You can learn to relax, your eyes might feel better. How about a cup of nice tea to that end? See, yeah. Well, it's not bad, I'll take you up on that offer. Something relaxing and with the hack, a little spicy and earthy would be great. Yeah, have you still got a one more puzzle? <laughs> Thank you for the pasta check. Oh, ow. Oh, it's a spicy pasta check. <laughs> God's good tea. A smile spreads across Ray's face. He seems restored and in high spirits. Ooh, that's one spicy finish. I'm loving it. And you know, I think my eyes do feel better. Thanks for the tea. You really helped me out. Oh, oh not again. What's the matter now, sir? You still see the stupid fog? Maybe the enforcers just really polluted. You're now Team Master. Team Master's house has been added to Layton's challenges. You two must have nerves of steel to come all the way out here. But it doesn't mean I won't need to see what you're made of. Try this puzzle on for size. <laughs> you know what? 
I think next time I go grocery shopping, I'm gonna buy an energy drink. Just to see what all the fuzz is about. Below are 16 cards. There are 4 cards from each suit. Diamonds, cups, spades and hearts. Cards are arranged in a 4 times 4 grid as shown below and 4 cards have already been placed down. Arrange the remaining cards so that each vertical column horizontal row and diagonal line of 4 cards contains 1 card from each suit. Touch a card to change the suit. So basically just a very small sudo sudoku. A <laughs> single energy drink. Yeah, exactly. This needs to be orange. And this needs to be that. And then that maybe must be blue. This one has to be oh, This one has to be all right. Blue Oh, no, 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 you were right, you were right. This one. Oh, wait, the other one. This one. Consider this puzzle. A yeah, single energy drink because I don't trust myself what I would be like a if I drank more of them, I no think. Puzzle unsolved. <laughs> Nicely done! Did that one give your brain a workout? It's a great puzzle to set up with real cards and share with a friend. This is just Sudoku, but with less than nine. And that's what I'm talking about. Superb puzzle solving there. Listen, he had some castles on the other side of this forest. No one will go within a mile of it, but I hear the Duke's fortune is just sitting there in piles. If you're thinking about heading in, keep your guard up against the vampire or whatever's in there. <laughs> hey, this fork in the road is my turf. What's the big idea? Oh well, since you came all the way here, why not try your hand at this puzzle of God? <laughs> I think this up to here is pretty good. And then it's just figuring out where to go from here.
Oh, there we go. This should do the trick. Ah. <laughs> Wonderful. Nicely done. One variation of this puzzle challenge is a way to complete the puzzle in the fewest number of moves possible. For the purpose of this puzzle, multiple consecutive, consecutive gems using a small build. A single ball count is only one move. If you get some time on your hands, why not try this puzzle again and see how few moves you need to complete it? <laughs> what if I don't? You tore through that puzzle like it was nothing. Small things live in a forest ball. If you got if you're set on going deeper, you gotta be prepared for danger. Danger. Dangerous. Maybe that sounds fun. Nope, we cannot get through the gate yet. So let's check out the mines, actually. This must be the mine we heard about, Professor. Yes, and it appears to be sealed off. Just imagine it, Luke. They used to dig for gold here. There must have been a lot of gold down there if it had such a huge effect on the entire town. But if it brought so much wealth, why on earth would they ever close the mine down? That's a question we might be able to answer if we can find some account of what transpired here. There's no sense in any more speculation. Let's venture in. Yeah, I think if you have a version that's like this, it's easier to just reset it though. <laughs> Having to like actually reset it every single time with the actual thing is annoying, if I might say so. <laughs> What's different here? Just leave it to me. I like that we both saw the bush at the same time, it seems. <laughs> Piece of cake. Yep. Here is missing. Here goes. Layton's apprentice strikes again. Yep. And what else? Ah. One this missing. should do the trick. Nice. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Mm -hmm. The box shown below is fitted with a lock consisting of two dials. You can turn the blue dial directly, but when you turn the red dial, the blue dial moves an equal amount. In order to see the relationship between the two dials, you try turning the red one from its original position as shown below. In order to open the lock, you must turn the blue dial to 3, 6, 4, and 1 in that order. Since you can't turn the blue dial directly, to which numbers must you turn the red dial in order to produce the desired numbers of the blue dial? Ooh, okay. If this is zero, is five. And this is three. Ah, okay. I like that they added more boxes. 
Why is every time that it doesn't... Oh my god, that's a one! Why is it always a nine? And now to test my theory. I like that they add more boxes to write stuff in. Huh. Makes it easier Wonderful. to answer. It was tough. The red dial needs to be turned to two, seven, one, and four to produce the numbers you need on a blue dial. Turns out these two dials actually rotate in opposite directions. One way to solve this problem is to create a chart with each dial's corresponding number, like the one shown above. Mm. Seems to be struggling a bit with that one, Professor. I like to see you do it better than Luke. I like to see you try. Oh, I have cake all over my. Yes. Open, Professor. Yes, it would seem we need to solve this puzzle first. Mm. 20! The button that opens the door in front of you is buried deep within this machine, so you can't push it directly. However, by pulling the lever at the top to the left or right, you can move the various gears and plates in the machine, allowing you to press the button at the bottom. In order to push the green button, should you pull the lever towards A or B? Mm. Okay, wait, wait. If I pull it here, it's gonna move like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. B. And now to test my theory. And there we have it. We're at the part of the game where we just have a bunch of, oh, you want to rage deeper in here? Puzzle, 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 puzzle. Nicely done! Moving the lever towards B will spin the gears in a way that causes the bottom lever to hit the green button. Since there are only two possible answers for this puzzle, you should have just that guess, but hopefully you were able to work it out properly. You just gotta imagine how these move. But two buttons is easy. I like can flip with the button and run. True, true. Excellent, the door is open now. Let's proceed. The door is not only open, it looks like everything is breaking down. I don't think it's very safe to be here, but whatever. Good for you, little man. Hello. Look, there's something on the wall here. That is most certainly a puzzle. Let's take a closer look, shall we? All the doors in the maze below only open when pushed from one direction as shown. It is therefore impossible to pass through every room while going through the maze from the entrance to the exit. However, this feat would be possible if one of the doors could open in the opposite direction. Can you find and circle this door? Ooh, okay. Okay, wait, so... We go... Here. Wait, this only... Ah! We're going nowhere! Okay, let's go from the back. Different direction, and I could go here, 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 here. Come, come. This one. Hmm. Let's see if this works. Piece of cake. 
You did it! You have to pass through every room on the way to the exit to solve the puzzle, but no one ever said you can't pass through the same room twice. Eh hey. Finally solved it! Still it's our Professor, why would someone go to the trouble of placing a puzzle down here? Helps the miners make puzzles to pass the time between shifts on the mine. Right? Perhaps everyone here is as puzzle obsessed as everyone was in the first game. Wow. My father fell ill from that sickness and has passed away. I also heard that many of the people who have full sense have formed a village a safe distance from town. I imagine she lives there now too. I've decided to send her a letter. A stupid can't leave town, but I've entrusted my message with a man who's passing through town. Not all I can wait is for her to reply. Not all I can do is wait for her reply. <laughs> English. What the fuck do you speak it? Me at myself. Hmm? We'll need to use this lift if we are to head further into the mine, but it seems to be broken. How can we get it running again? There's a circuit board over here. We should be able to use this to restore power to the elevator. <laughs> yes, well, the instructions on the circuit board, Luke, that should fix our problem. <laughs> Puzzling lift. <laughs> it's another sliding puzzle. The circuit board for the lift contains a puzzle. According to the instructions, you need to make the blue and red balls switch places in order to restore power to the task. <laughs> you up to the task. No, I'm not. <laughs> No, I'm not up to the task. <laughs> oh wait, never mind. Okay, that's easy. There we go. <laughs> Leave it to me. <laughs> I, I yeah, see sliding puzzle, my brain think. shuts down. <laughs> Good job! So how many moves did it take you to complete the task? If you did it in 12 moves, give yourself a pat on the back. Now oh, listen, do you hear that? Sounds like the lift is up and running again. Hmm? The lift is making some noise. I think it's fixed. Excellent. I suppose our next move should be to head down. <laughs> Thank you for the pad. I shall save. Yes, I shall save. Let's go down. Oui. I know there's something here somewhere. There we go. What's in here? What do you think, Luke? Could I say fold some of the journals that Kringo mentioned? Well, we won't know until we open it. How do we open it? The lock is rather complicated. Let me see if I can decipher the code. Mmm! Mm, 50! Find the full digit code that opens the safe. You can use the digits 0 to 5 in the answer, but each digit can only be used once. The small lights next to each row of digits are the key to finding the code, as they tell you how much in common that row has with the code. A white light indicates a digit that is in the code but in a different place in the sequence. An orange light indicates a digit that is in the code and in the correct spot. That's a digit at the bottom of the screen to change them. Then just submit when you have the answer. Ooh, okay. Okay, so it's all four of these numbers. But only two of them in the, are in the correct place. And two of them are not right. But the numbers we can choose from are zero... One, four, and five. Going from the smallest to the biggest. This one has a three in it. Ooh, this one has two that are correct. It cannot be the two or the three because neither of these are in. So zero and one are correct already. Oh, okay. Zero and one. Zero and one are already correct. There's one here that is correct. As it is neither the one we, it's not it's not any of these and we already know the one is here so the four has to be correct but zero one five four zero one five 
That's easy. What do you mean this thing is worth 50? This is and now to test my faith. easier than what I just did. Huh. Wonderful. Huh. Wonderful. That's right. The code is 0154. You could solve this by entering numbers haphazardly until you stumble upon a solution, but it's much more fun to think your way to the answer. As soon as you realize that this one already had all numbers you could choose from, and this one has two in the correct place, you just need to figure out way. Which ones of these do not fit, and then boom. Okay, that 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 is an easy puzzle. In my humble opinion, that one was easier than some others. That did the trick. Have a look at this, Professor. This looks like a miner's diary. It's just a thing we've been looking for, Luke. Perhaps I can shed some light on what transpired here. Let's see what it says. Look up some funny mineral that I've never seen before here in the Dung Duke's gold deposit. Be sure the ore can be refined into some other kind of precious metal. Personally, I feel like there's something sinister about this stuff. Not that the Duke cares one bit. No, he'll have his way and we'll keep digging. I bet my life on that. Some other kind of precious metal? But I thought this was a gold mine. Ever since we unearthed that awful ore, people have been dropping like flies from some unknown illness. So many sick people in town that half our miners have stopped coming into work. What in the world is going on here? Oh, it's just, just terrible. So many people must have been sick. Full sense of time is a gleaming beacon of prosperity is at an end. This town is cursed and ruined. I suspect we're just days away from shutting down this awful mine for good. I leave this diary behind so that anyone who tries to reopen the mine may think twice about it. Oh, odd. The date on his last entry is from just about 50 years ago. But it can't be right. The mine was up and running until recently. Yes, yeah, so, so we've been told. But this has got me thinking. Both this diary and Grinko suggest a connection between the Elysian box and the events in the mine. From what I can tell, all of this traces back to a single man, the Duke himself. Even if he himself is long gone, his castle may yet contain the answers to all of our questions. So, um... Does that mean we have to visit a spooky castle for ourselves? <laughs> Do you mean to tell me you're scared of the place? Of, of course not! A million vampires wouldn't scare me! The truly is a vampire living in that castle I'd very much like to make his acquaintance. Don't say things like that, Professor. If we met one, I'm sure he'd eat us on the spot. Nah, Luke. You're fine. You're gonna be fine. Mm hmm. I believe we've retrieved the records we came for. Let's take our leave now. What's this? The lift is out of service. Hmm. I say this won't do. Oh, but look here. There's a set of buttons built into the wall. Surely one of these buttons will send the lift back up, but they're disconnected. Ah. Restarting the lift. <laughs> Shouldn't be too hard. We managed to get the lift started in the first place. I think we can restart it. Easy peasy. Easy lemon squeezy. Holy spaghetti! <laughs> True. The wires connecting the lift to the button controlling it have somehow been severed. However, if you can connect the negative and positive wires on the top to the wires carrying the same charge below, you can fix the lift. To do this, draw lines between sets of terminals, draw two lines to connect each positive and negative terminal to its counterpart and get the lift running again. Okay. Let me think. You go. You go. Here. This one is a minus, and this one. So these two. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. This one, and this one. That's easy. Consider this puzzle solved. Every time I hear eeny meeny miny, I have to think of Gravity Falls, by the way. We're back in business, the lift is working again. 
Button ap <laughs> buttons appear to be working. We should be able to leave the mine. Good. Oh, time to get out of here. Imagine really fusing Kivami for two. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I can see why. No, Eeny Meeny Miny is always. Um... Oh my god, what was his name? Bill Cipher in Gravity Falls for me? Just in my brain, it's always his voice. What the hell? Hola, friend son, I'm glad to see you. Oh, sure, I'd never see another soul lover again. Hey, I know you. I was traveling El Mundo, and last thing I remember, I was in Tanazito to Egypt. Tell me, por favor, how long ago were these fine pyramids built? Sorry, sir, you're not in Egypt. Do you remember how you got here? I have no foggiest, senor. One minute I'm heading for Africa, the next minute I'm down here. With no one around, I started poking at this thing to pass the time, and I think I broke it. I yeah. Help me fix it, see what What is with this man? Why is he everywhere? <clears throat> Small ornaments dangle from a metal bar, and they've thrown a bar of balance. The five ornament strings are spaced equally apart, and each type of ornament weighs a different amount. Three light ornaments weigh the same as one heavy ornament. Or two light ornaments weigh the same as a medium ornament. Is one of the three ornaments in a rectangle into the space marked question mark to restore the bar's balance. Oh no! Yeah. Okay. Okay, wait, so three moons and two hormones are the same as one star, two of these moons, and one moon like that. Star and I don't know what are the same. Mm -hmm. How much is one star now? Mm -hmm. One star is one full moon. Test my theory. Ah! Fuck yeah. Ah, wonderful. Good job! The crush the moon ornament is just heavy enough to balance things out. A single star ornament weighs the same as one sun and one moon together. The strand of ornaments that is supposed to counterbalance the one with a question mark doesn't have any star shaped ornaments, but if you compare the ornaments as shown above, you can work out what should go in the question mark space regardless. Hey! Wunderbar, a million arigatos, mine ami! No more mine is any second, finally, this must be too. Nice. Mine ami! Oh! Million arigatos to you! Arigato gozaimani! Wait a second, what's up? He's feeling the men. <laughs> oh, Mr. Layton. Uh, what are you doing here? Now, look. <laughs> sir, if I may be so bold, what brings you to these parts? Well, to be blunt, sir, I've been doing a bit of, um, spying on you for some time now. We've had quite the investigation, and it won't be long before it all snaps into focus for you. 
It is for that reason I feel I can no longer hide the truth of this place from you. What are you getting at, sir? You've seen my studio. All those pictures of the town there, those are pictures I took. The ones on the station are my work as well. These photographs have held my interest for some time now. As I should, Mr. Layton. Do you remember our last meeting in my shop? You pointed out a certain strange phenomenon occurring in photos taken within full sense. Yes, just one curiosity among the many we've seen in this town. It feels as though the whole of full sense conspires to keep a secret hidden from us. Your feeling is right, sir. You see, full sense is a cursed town. Cursed? To call it such may seem base, but I assure you the town's past is the very definition of the word. Perhaps the curse is a punishment we are meant to endure for the great mistakes of our past. But all nightmares eventually end, and I feel it won't be long now before we awaken. Huh? I encourage you to head to that castle in a distance and to meet with Duke Anton. Is this Anton the eldest son of the previous Duke? Yes, Duke Anton has presided over Hadson Castle since his father's passing some time ago. I served the Hadson family until the day, 50 years ago, when I left it all behind and fled. I don't think Anton will ever forgive me, you see. He's a man who abhors betrayal above all else. What transpired 50 years ago? The answer to all your questions can be found at the castle. I urge you to head there. Perhaps a voice of reason like yours might persuade Duke Anton to listen. If you believe it will settle the matter, we'll visit the castle. Yes, see, with your own eyes what's become of this town. Perhaps then we'll finally reach the end of this dark tunnel we've been traveling through. Luke, I believe our destination has become apparent. You know where we must go next, don't you? People we've talked to are scared to death of the vampire they say is living up in that castle. And that chat with the photographer only raises more questions. What happened 50 years ago? What on earth is going on in that castle? Almost overnight, the Hudson family became incredibly wealthy when they discovered its seam of gold. If you can understand the story behind that, our questions about the Elysian box will be answered. But how are we going to get into the castle, Professor? I don't think it's the kind of place we could just waltz into. Oh, but I wouldn't say it's impossible by any means. What do you mean? The tracks we saw on the road to the castle are still very fresh. It would seem that the stagecoach is bringing something to the castle every day. We need only follow it to find our way to the castle. Of course, that stagecoach is our ticket in. Excellent deduction, Luke. Now, shall we get going? I'm ready to go whenever you are, Professor. Just lead the way. Oh. The symbol is actually a crest belonging to the Hudson family, who once ruled over Fultzens. It's clear that the Hudson family and the illusion box are deeply connected. Sure is. I don't know how many days have passed waiting to hear back from her. It's been so long, in fact, that I can barely remember even sending that letter. Maybe she really doesn't love me. Maybe she's living in some other town, happily married to another man. I need this new thing to go back, to go away here. It's making me mad. Hey, to shut tight. In order to get in, we'll simply have to wait for the stagecoach. Look, there's the stagecoach now! Quick, let's hide! Well, that was easier than I thought it would be. It's open, Professor! The gate's open! And we've escaped the detection. If we're going to enter, now is our only chance. Move, quickly! Good thing is we've done everything else we wanted to do in other places, so we really don't have <coughs> any reason to be going somewhere else again. <laughs> Thank you for the video, Sammy. We really have to go through this forest to get there. I have to say, I find this place rather spooky. Hey! It's okay, Luke, come down. Luke, what's the matter? A uh, uh, ghost! There's a ghost in a forest! Oh, Luke, you know that there are no such thing as ghosts. Your eyes must be playing tricks on you. But I'm p positive I saw it, Professor. Deep breaths, Luke. When on edge, even something as harmless as a granite tree can look like a ghost. I suppose so. Feeling better? Good. Come along. We mustn't let the stagecoach get too far ahead. Is the gentleman to block castle of the car? <laughs> yeah. 
we can get there. We're almost there. Yeah, like an hour ago I could have said, okay, you know what, we finish the game next time, but now? Let's just go for it. It's pitch black out there, Professor. Yes, without some sort of light, I don't believe we'll be able to advance. But what do we have here? We're in luck, my boy. I think someone left a lantern here. Oh yeah, just by chance. Use lamps to light up the dark forest paths. For each lamp, assume its light reaches to the end of any straight road. Use the fewest lamps possible to light all the paths. So where should the lamps go? Ooh, okay. Uh, here. Is that why we have this road, 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 we have this road. Perfect! Good! Let's go! This should do the trick. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Good job! The paths are quite scary, but that was just because it was dark, right? I don't know, flavor text, you tell me. Ah, now that we've got a light. Here is though, isn't it? Who would leave a perfectly good lantern out here? I can't imagine someone simply forgot it here. It's almost like someone is leaving a trail for us. <laughs> no way, right? This forest just goes on and on. It's darker than ever here. Yes, but fortunately somebody left behind a second lantern. Let's see where we are. Like one lamp, I can understand. Okay, maybe you actually lose one lamp, but two? No way, Jose, no way. One here. And one here. Here goes. That was almost too easy. Good job. The paths were quite scary. That was just because it was dark, right? <laughs> yeah. Finally, some light. Now that the path is easier to follow, let's move back. Sure. Nothing hidden on this road anywhere. If there's something special happening with this one mushroom. It looks so out of place. Not connected to the background. We're missing a mushroom here. This should do the trick. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Yes, 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 yes. There's a stump here. Consider this puzzle solved. Ha! Huh, wonderful! And there's more tree here than there is. Just leave it to me! Room. Cake. Piece of cake! Piece of cake! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, I found a hidden puzzle! It said that Asian people came up with constellations by staring up at the stars in the night sky. Here's a star lane puzzle to celebrate the achievement. Below is a 6x6 grid of sky and stars arranged into 9 larger blocks. Arrange these 9 blocks so that each row and column contains 3 stars. Blocks without surrounding outlines can't be moved. We. Okay. Mm. 
three, 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 three. Oh wait, but I need to. I need them to be like this as well. <laughs> I thought. Here I thought. Oh, I just moved one. I already did it. <laughs> Cancellation of the donut. Oh, we need something here. Three, three. And oh, now this is four. This is this cannot be. Three, 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 three. No, that's still not right. Consider this puzzle solved. Yay! And there we have it. Brilliant! The constellation is a bit abstract, but oh well. <laughs> oh well! Ew, that wasn't easy. Okay, big mushroom. Look at a strange mushroom, Professor. Curious, I've never seen this type before. Let me study it just a moment before we move on. Let's hope it's not poisonous. Ooh, 50! Jesus. Collect all the mushrooms in this forest as you pass through. Each circular clearing on the map contains mushrooms. You don't want to spend too long in this creepy forest though, so find the quickest route that visits each clearing only once. Ooh. Okay. Can I also start from... Yeah, I can. One... Oh, one... strikes again mush tastic you clearly realize that you don't need to use every single path so yeah if I want the shortest route possible I'm not gonna go every single path not any curiosity is satisfied can we please move on professor <laughs> another lantern Professor, I hate to say it again but I think we need a little more light out here all right, let's see if we can use this lantern to get our bearings back. <sighs> use lamps to light up the dark forest path. Blah, 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 blah. Same as before. Okay, one over here. We're already done with it. And one over here. puzzle coming up that I, mm, I remember. See you again, that's much better. It's a pretty long road to actually get into the castle. Ah, yes, yes. <sighs> Why did I get so chilly? Indeed, it's so cold out here that the lake is frozen over. Oh, I have an idea for a shortcut. Don't do that. 
The lake in front of the professor is frozen solid. The ice is thick enough to stand on, but so slippery that any movement in any direction causes him to slide uncontrollably in that direction until he hits a wall. While he's stationary, you can change the professor's direction by touching the areas around him. Can you guide the professor through a slippery lake to the goal? Yes, but also do not just start walking across a frozen lake in real life. Because you have no guarantee that it's actually that solid. Don't. Do what he's doing. Alright, well, straight ahead it is. Consider this puzzle solved. We are going to do this, because we don't value our life! That was super slippery, but you can stop now. Nope. Next lady, lady looks like he had a ball. <laughs> so cute. Crossing wind as well as could be helpful, but we can't stop here. Off we go. And now we do the same thing again. Whoa, what you said, paper professor? It's nothing but ice. <laughs> There's no snow for us to walk on here, so we need to thread carefully. Here goes. It's not safe! Believe me when I say this is not safe. Ah, <sighs> oh, whatever. Obvious, I would appreciate you if you didn't die now. You've been doing just fine for the past 10 mm. hours. You can handle Let's a little see more. If this works. That was almost too easy. I also like that <laughs> we still get like the whole, oh, did you do it correctly? You're like, yes, I did. <laughs> There's no submit option. You either make it or you don't. It. Feel like you're getting the hang of these puzzles? Just remember, if you ever come across a frozen lake in real life, be sure to keep off it. Those things are dangerous. Thank you, game! <laughs> that they are! Well done. It's a miracle we both made it across without taking a tumble. Since we're getting close, Luke, let's keep moving. And one more time! Here we are, facing another frozen lake. It appears to be the only way across, so here we go. How many frozen lakes are there? Hurt this building. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, let's see. Does stage girls take the same path? <laughs> I don't think they did. That wouldn't be very sick. Why am I thinking so hard? There we go. Consider this puzzle solved. I really oh, hope wonderful. they didn't. That would be highly unsafe. Excellent! Be glad the professor isn't a champion ice skater. Okay, so he'd have an easier time moving around on the ice, but then you'd be out of a puzzle because of it. <laughs> Made it across. Now we've only a short distance left to cover, and we'll be there. Nice. I do actually have a one a DS game that features figure skating that I really like. Wow! Look at this extremely inviting castle that you definitely want to go into. That also looks like nothing could ever happen to it and it would definitely not be breaking down anytime soon, right? Uh, Professor, are you sure it's safe to cross this thing? It looks a bit rickety. Safe enough, I believe. Are well, you frightened, Luke? A 
little, yes. I mean, just look, if I fell, it'd be the end of me for sure. Now, Luke, it may seem scary, but if you stay calm and keep moving forward, you'll be just fine. Here, help me with this puzzle. It will help take your mind off our little trip across the chasm. Hmm. Luke and Professor Layton stand at one end of a rickety old bridge. Afraid of falling into the chasm below, Luke's legs have become stiff with fear and he can only walk across the bridge in increments of one of three planks at a time. The narrowness of the bridge prevents Luke from doubling back the way he came or switching the foot he's standing on before stepping forward. Use your stylus to create a path that guides Luke safely across the bridge while avoiding any gaps in the planks. Luke is safe when he steps on a rat foot Okay, so left. Right. Left. Right, left, right, left, right, left. This should do the trick. Huh. Just run Wonderful. across, Luke. The sooner you're over there, the better it is. That was some fancy footwork. The nice step you choose gets Luke safely across the bridge. I suppose I feel a little better, but this bridge still makes me nervous. That's fair. That's fair. It's not a very inviting thing to be on. I would probably be the exact same if this happened to me in real life. Oh, this place looks even scarier up close. Being nervous again, are you? Not in the slightest. Let's go, Professor. Ah, somebody help me! Seems to be the problem, sir. There's a vampire in a castle. I thought it was a goner, but I managed to give him the slip. An actual vampire? Are you sure? Didn't stick around to check his fangs up close, Sonny boy. Gotta get out of here. Oh. So what do you think about all this vampire business now, Professor? The rumor does seem to have spread throughout the population of false sons. Do you think maybe it could be, you know, more than a rumor? Mr. Purcell seemed fairly sure. That's what we had to find out. Just a few more steps and we'll find out for ourselves. Ooh, save my progress, yes. We're almost there. An encounter at the end of the line. We're almost there, I say. It's still gonna be like another hour. <laughs> almost. Just one more puzzle. One more puzzle. Give me this fucking hint coin game. Hello! It would appear you've solved at least 80 puzzles. I command your perseverance and proclaim me worthy of entrance to this castle. Welcome. Welcome! Sorry to intrude, but we are investigating an important antique. This box we have here. Yes. That chapter card the is very... The emblem on its lid seems connected to your house in some way. Would you have time to answer a few questions? This matter would best be addressed by the master. Please come inside. Wow, this place is really something else. Indeed, Luke. This castle is extremely impressive. Right this way, please. Good evening. Welcome to my house. Welcome to my so, house. If I understand correctly, you're saying people fear the box because they believe it kills anyone who opens it. <laughs> That's quite a story, isn't it? It seems that the design on this box is connected to your family in some way. Can you tell me anything about this? It's true that it was a Herzen family heirloom. Although I parted with it a number of years ago, the garish emblem you mentioned wasn't exactly, uh, suited to my taste. Personally, I think it's quite spectacular. Oh, is that so? Well, chalk it up to my bad taste, then. You know, I don't think he's telling us the whole story. Perhaps not. It's hard to say just yet. I'm sorry I'm not much help, though I confess, visitors are always delightful. 
I'm sure you've had a long journey, so please do stay the night. Prepare the quarters for our guests, Nigel. Yes, right away, Master. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> huh? Scary! Wow, this is the poshest room I've ever seen. The Molotary Express looks tawdry by comparison. It's a room befitting the wealthiest and most influential family of full sons. I have a hard time believing a place as gorgeous as this is a vampire lurking about it. You never know, Luke. Maybe Anton himself is a vampire and you just haven't realized it yet. Anton, doubt it. He seemed like a perfectly nice chap to me. Wait a second, I thought you didn't believe in vampires. Are you putting my lack, Professor? Still, now that you mention it, there's something strange going on here. Remember the picture we saw in the Hudson Museum? Anton was in it, wasn't he? Thing is, the photo was taken 50 years ago, but Anton doesn't look a day older. So it's been bothering you too, has it? I can't quite understand how it could be possible. It's especially odd given that Mr. Beluga is clearly aged since the picture was taken. It would seem that both Anton and his castle warrant further examination. That famous latent intuition acting up again? I suppose you could say that, though I'd hardly call it famous. Why don't we start our exploration of the castle with this room? Good idea, let's get to it. Hi, TK. Good evening. Just a little more. Let's see. Hint coin. Hint coin. Hint coin. Hint coin. Hint coin. I say, look at this picture, Luke. Is that full sense there? So, the artist's inscription down here says that this painting is 50 years old. Looks more or less the same as the fault since we can see outside our window now. Hmm. What are you thinking, Professor? No, it's nothing. I was just pondering something. That is a fascinating painting. Have you ever seen such a convincing illustration of a ball? what we've seen of this castle, I'm certain the ball was extremely opulent. It's getting late. There's time for a quick puzzle and then it's off to sleep, alright? I just saved the world. The couple in this piece seems to be dancing high in the air, floating impossibly near the chandelier, but when viewed properly, there's something strange at all about the picture. If you look closely enough, one peculiar area of the painting hints at the reason the whole picture seems so odd. Find a peculiar area in circle to learn the truth. There's a mirror down there. Yeah, I just wrong more and it's off to bed. Let's see if this works. <laughs> Layton's apprentice strikes again. Nice eye. The couple seem to be the only two people with a visible reflection on the floor. Seems that the scene in this painting isn't of the ball itself, but rather of its reflection on the ballroom floor. Perhaps one of the young couple out on the floor looked so happy together that the painter didn't want to ruin the dance by staring straight at them. It really is a magnificent picture. What's this? Luke, tell me, do these two look familiar to you? Looks like Anton. Is that Katya? Or am I playing tricks on me? I must be tired. It's getting late, Luke. It's been quite a day for us, so perhaps it's time to turn in. Yeah, I could use some sleep. Good night, Professor. Yeah. Good night, Professor. Fear not, my dear. 
They're just the main course for this evening. What are those shoes, my, my man? Don't they look fresh? <laughs> what? Lovely. You're awake. It's been far too long since I've encountered prey so... feisty. Ah! Anton! What sort of madness is this? I knew it! You are a vampire! Well, you literally said five minutes ago that he looks like a fine chap. Wouldn't you say? But I'm afraid it's too late now. I must begin preparations. In the meantime, why don't you just stay put and enjoy each other's company? After all, it'll be your last chance. <sighs> Did you hear that? Anton's going to eat us for dinner. Look, listen to me. Take a deep breath and collect yourself. But there's no cause for worry, my boy. Whoever tied these ropes was clearly no sailor. With a little work, I may be able to get free. I don't know, is there a puzzle about a tying knot? Hmm. <laughs> a man sits bound by a long length of rope among several posts. While he has no hope of untying his bonds, he can still move his legs. Were he to stand up and run away, his long trail of rope looks like it might catch on at least one of the posts. They need to use his legs to pull up any posts if the rope would get caught on before he can dash up. Touch these posts to mock them with an axe. <sighs> Oh, we're good, we're good, we're good. Two, three, four, four. This one. Everything else is... Oh, it's side of the ring. Nope, it's just this one. This should do the trick. I feel like these, even with the ones where you have to like follow along the lines, ah, is way easier uh, than in the first game. In the first game, they felt... I don't know, they were harder to follow for some reason. At least it feels like that to me. You did it! Mark the area encircled by rope and suddenly the puzzle gets a lot easier. There's only one post that needs to be removed for the man to make his getaway. You better hurry up and get that post loose. Okay! Finally free, but there's no time to stand around. We must find a way out and quickly. Yep. I do hope there's an innocent explanation for that stain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's some rather dangerous items around here. Ooh. Oh no, we're locked in. There's no place to run. Calm yourself, Luke. There's bound to be another way out of this room. Look around you. You can see the key, if only you could reach it. Here, let's see if I can reach it. Hmm, the key to the door is sitting behind some blocks. Slide the key out towards the professor's hand so that the two can make their escape. Goodness gracious. Technically, we just have to go in one big circle, right? Maybe, maybe not. No, no, that doesn't seem quite right. Really. She just wants some tomato soup, but nobody knows how to make one. <laughs> Please, a true just one no puzzle unsolved. Just one portion of tomato soup. Great work! Now Luke and Professor Layton can finally leave the room. There we are. The door is unlocked now. Freedom's ours, Luke. Oh. Oh, 
we also got the last diary entry. <gasps> In order to deal with the swine who sneak into full sense by night like rats to steal our gold, I have decided to quite literally play the part of a monster. I focus on this, at times my thoughts turn to that gilded box and a letter inside. I now suspect the night I met either to her. Oh, my dear Sophia, just to hear from you is all I desire. Sophia, huh? Hmm, I wonder what character we heard about whose name is Sophia. Who could be connected to anything that's happening here. You stole one butch. I don't see any kind of lock on it. Good point. The stone must be controlled by some sort of device positioned elsewhere. Let's head down from here and see what else is around. Ah. Never seen such an immense boiler before. This must be the castle's main power source. For some reason though, it's not currently in use. What do you make of these other contraptions? They're all so gigantic. Well, to venture, I guess. I'd say this equipment was used to mine gold in the area. Probably the same equipment used to create a large hole in the castle's flooring. That's really scary to think of. That's why this place is so draughty. Look at that bizarre smoke coming out of the hole. Don't get too close to it, Professor. I bet breathing it is probably terrible for you. Whoever dug the shaft must have been an expert at using that machinery. One misplaced scrape of the shovel could have sent the whole foundation crashing down. Not to be rude, but I don't think we really have the time to admire the miner's handiwork. Oh yes, quite right, my boy. Hmm, I believe we can open the door buffers if we get this boat up and running again. Stream power. Which valves do you need to open to send them from the boiler into two, but not one or three? All valves are in a closed position. Answer using the solution that requires opening a fused number of valves. Touch a valve to open a closet. Oui. Okay. Not to one, so no, don't open this one. This three. Only goes to two. Doesn't go to one because nothing goes over here and three. Where does three get its process from here? Nope, nothing here, nothing here. Nope, good. E3. Here goes. Layton's apprentice strikes again. Well done, you only need to open three walls to direct stream steam to two and not three or one. Good work, my boy. Now upward and outward. I don't see any other way out of here. I should save my game. I still haven't saved my game. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Whew, ten minutes ago. Oh, over here. Yeah, come down, my guy. One, two, somewhere around here. Three. And this should be our last camera. This thing is dented. Hmm. Let's see if this works. Layton's apprentice strikes again. This is pushed in a different direction. And now to test my theory. Huh. Wonderful. I've played all of the hmm. the first three. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I've played in one city before. Like on my replays, on my private replays. <laughs> but uh, I guarantee you this. Only because I already know the story. Um, and the puzzles. I would not recommend playing these games on your first own playthrough in one go. Because that's uh, very... <sighs> Ex 
exhausting. I mean, frankly, this is exhausting to an extent as well, but at this point, it's not speedrunning territory. But it's... It's very much... Uh, just going, because I'm already this far, like, come on, woman there. I guess Twitch did eat your last message. Yeah, the last one I have is the one about the, the tomato soup. A frog sits perched on the white space in the diagram below. This little guy has an unusual jump. His first jump travels one space, his second jump travels two spaces, and his third jump travels three spaces. After his third jump, he repeats his pattern. The frog can't change his direction mid-jump, but he can turn around between jumps. This frog's goal is to land exactly on the green space. What is the fewest number of jumps he needs to make to complete his task? Oh, okay, wait. So what? Let me, let me try. to jump back sometime earlier. Nice to see the puzzle I'm working HD someday. One of them has a dead display at the face of it. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, to be fair, the first three games have an HD collection. Well, not one collection. There's three separate uh, games, but those are exclusive to um, mobile. So either iOS or Android. And while I have them, and I've played them to 100%, they also have a few more... The first one has more collectibles than the initial release, for example. Uh, I could not make make uh, me um, uh, streaming my my phone screen. I could not get that to work in any way whatsoever. Otherwise, we would have been uh, playing the HD release actually. But. Uh, <laughs> It's also the reason why I haven't played Professor Layton even earlier because I couldn't figure out how to make the HD release work through streaming through my phone. And I had problems with the audio quality for these, but I figured that out, so here we are. Okay, so what if I just go back here and one and then it's two. Three, one. Also doesn't work. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, how many is that? Consider this puzzle solved. Yeah. And there we have it. Good. That's the way to do it. Shown in this diagram, if you make the frog jump back the way he came twice, he can make it to the green square in 12 hours. Ew, that one was a lot of work. Right. Ah. 
this? Such a shut tight too. Such serves as the only passage out of here. We'll need to open it to escape. How are you gonna fit through there? Seems that the lock here is some sort of magic square. In order to solve it, position the remaining numbers so that each string of four vertical, horizontal, and diagonal numbers add up to the same total. Oh. I hate those. I'd rather have a Sudoku kind of thing. I hate these. Oh, I hate these so much. Let me save that. Yeah. Missing, missing. Five, two, three. A. One missing, 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 missing. Three, missing, missing. Four. Okay, what else do we need? Seven, and we need eighteen. Seven. Three. Three goes here. Ever since we done with the the game three times already, <laughs> I have never actually looked at the speed run times for these games. I mean, to be obviously, they don't actually read the text. I'm unsure whether you can skip the cutscenes. Oh, three. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> These are 18. My bad. Uh, nine is. Oh, nice. You love Professor Layton. Oh, me too. <laughs> huh, hey, hey. Wonderful. Good evening. Very nice. Each horizontal vertical and diagonal line of four tiles adds up to 18 when placed in the correct positions. Now, onward to freedom. You say that, game, but it's not freedom time yet. Not yet. <sighs> Look, the hatch is open now. Follow me. Flee the castle. Easier said than done, game. Easier said than done. Oh, hi, sir. <laughs> Do you mind? We're trying to run from your master. Terribly sorry. Had a good day so far all night? Oh, yeah, I've been having a, a lovely day so far. I've been spending it playing Professor Layson. And not much else. <laughs> Take care that you don't slip loop. The floor is polished to an almost blinding shine. You're right. It's like a mirror. Who do you think does all this polishing? That would be me, sir. Hey, it's a butler. Yes, it most certainly is. No, OBS, please. Ooh. Did the stream die? Are we good? I was at zero just now, but it doesn't say anything about it reconnecting, so I think, aside from a giant drop, I died. Uh, I, I good. I good. <laughs> it's 
So here we go. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, a giant buffer. I was at zero for a second. I don't mean to be presumptuous, but what are you two doing up at this hour? If you're having trouble falling asleep, I suggest a good strong puzzle to help clear and relax the mind. You're not going to try to stop us or anything? Stop you? Young yeah, sir, I haven't the foggiest notion what you're talking about. Now, where was I? Ah, yes, the puzzle. This hall has been fitted with a hidden door, but to my chagrin, I've forgotten where. However, I do recall an old saying the servants used in days past to remember the location of the door. I will now relate to you that saying, and your task, dear guests, will be to work out the door's location. Why well, if I might need to grab a cup of joe? Maybe. Just like me. Begin from the doors etched in the decor, a path will appear strong and quite clear. Made of stars of flare, each within its own square, these words are said to point the way to the hidden door. Highlight where you think the door is hidden. Hitting the limit of my drive again, that is... Actually, something that might be highly likely. It's got the hand in the mail today. Oh, nice! That's cool. Yeah, hold on, let me see. Sixty nine gigabytes. No, no, that should be that should be fine. I need to once again catch up with all of my video stuff, though. He. <laughs> okay, hold on. Ugh. No, I don't want a hint coin. I just want. Okay, let me see. Begin from the doors etched in the decor. Okay. Doors. Path will appear strong and quite clear, made of stars of flare each within its own square. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, it's this one. This one. That's what it's pointing towards. And now to test my theory. Oh, I'm getting too tired for all this, Jesus. Ha! Huh. Wonderful. Excellent! The squares with stars contained neatly inside them form an arrow that points directly to the hidden door. Masterfully solved, sirs. Now though you've had that little nightcap, might I suggest returning to your quarters? These old halls can get quite dry in the dead of night. I'll keep that in mind. Good night to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, and to you too. Yeah, you don't look creepy at all, my good man. Oh, over here! Fessa, I think I see a way we can get out of here. Our search led us to the castle and we're on the verge of revealing what killed Dr. Schreider. We must search this place thoroughly before we make our escape. Let's see what else is here. Uh, Professor, I don't know if that's such a good idea. Luke, listen to me. We can't turn back and run. Not now. We're so close to uncovering the truth about false sense and the Elysian box, we must press on. I am not going to do a short finishing stream that's like half an hour of this game. No. No. Didn't you hear Professor Layton just now? We must. <laughs> we must go. <laughs> it's fine. 
I'm not even tired tired yet. Like I only got up around what eleven. Thank you for the pet. So yeah, I'm still streaming. We're still out here. Professor, take a look at this picture. There he is, the current head of the Hudson family, large as life. You mean the head member of the Hudson family, large as staff? Strange. Strange? What's so strange about this portrait, Professor? This picture, it's far too worn to have been made in recent years. Yet you saw Anton yourself, the man in his portrait, are virtually identical. See what you're getting at? He doesn't age. So he really is a vampire? I knew it! We need to get out of here this instant, Professor. Perhaps those rumors in a town weren't entirely unfounded. But running about in a panic has never solved anything. Why don't we take a moment to clear our heads with this puzzle about portraits? A puzzle? Is this really the time or place, Professor? <laughs> you know what? Actually, I'll take this one and move it off the stream. Screen sure that's good. I mean, I had food, yeah. I had dinner sometime earlier. Oh, I've also eaten half a Baumkuchen. I have been snacking the entire time. True brothers have inherited their parents' 5 piece art collection. According to the will, the older brother will get a set of paintings worth twice what the younger brother gets. In order to ascertain the value of the paintings, the brothers called in a valuer, who valued each painting as shown below. For services, the value was promised a one painting left over after the brothers divided the art according to their parents' wishes. Assuming that individual paintings can be divided, which one does the value get? Gets the sixty thousand. The appraiser gets the one for fifty nine thousand because that's the one that's still left. Ooh, good for him! And so thank you for the high time. Drinking, drinking is a good idea. Yes. And there we have it. <clears throat> that's right. The value receives painting E. The older brother inherits painting A, C, and D, which are worth £120,000 £120, in total. The younger brother gets a single painting worth £60,000, half of what his brother gets. In the end, the value takes on the most expensive painting of all. My, is that convenient? Good for him, huh? What a weird will. Oh, the older brother gets this and the other one gets half of that. Like, that's fucking stupid. That was fun, wasn't it, Lou? It may not have seemed like the ideal time for a puzzle, but keeping calm in a time of stress is vital. I appreciate the sentiment, Professor, but right now solving puzzles is the last thing on my mind. <laughs> Come on, Luke, live a little! Hi, Katya! Oh, I do believe that's... Katya! What are you doing here? I could ask you the same thing. It's dangerous here. There's a vampire living in this castle, you know? Anton? He's no vampire. He's just... I'm quite puzzled, Katya. What do you know about this man? Um... It's not for me to say. Besides, right now you must focus all your efforts on escaping. If you linger here, the madness will grip you before long. Madness? I'm afraid I don't understand. Please be honest with us. What's happening here? Very well. I'll explain everything. But first, you must get as far for at rule as far from this castle as possible. Quickly. I know the way out. Follow me. Oh, she doesn't. Oh, she has a stronger voice than I've given her. I'm sorry, Katya. How are you related to this entire situation? Are you? There's no time. You've got to get out of here. <gasps> What are those shoes? People are trying to sleep, you know. 
Is it you? It can't be. Oh, how I've waited. It's been so unbearably long. Professor, do you know what he's talking about? Not in the slightest. Come closer, my dear sweet Sophia. I've missed you so. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Very well, then. Is this how it is? I didn't see this coming, Leighton. Not at all. I'm not sure I understand. This is your fault, but you can't have my Sophia. You're going to be very sorry you crossed me. <gasps> <gasps> There's no lack of swords here. Take whichever one you like. Know this, though. Only one of them is real. A true warrior always keeps his blade in hand. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna finish the game. I'm still here. I'm still alive, yes. Hayden pulls out a gun and Janet just says, No! Layton, uh... And actually, um, he's actually done fencing quite a lot in his life. He's really good. True warrior always keeps his blade in hand. These are Anton's last voice to Professor Layton before the start of the duo. Can you find one real sword, amo sword among Anton's collection? Circle your selection to draw your weapon of choice. Finally, I circled that they did not, not like. And now to test my theory. Huh, wonderful. Ha! Huh. Wonderful! <laughs> Time to fight! Nicely done. True warrior always keeps his blade in hand. Anton's voice was subtle hint that all the swords in the war were for show. The only real sword is the one sitting in the hand of the suit of armor. Time for the best scene in this... One of the best scenes in this entire game. I didn't think you had it in you, Mr. Layton. Sophia belongs to me. You can't have her. Ah! <laughs> I just need to catch my breath. No more! Please, just stop! What's happened to me? Are you all right? Please just stop, Grandfather. Your body can't take it. What did you say? I don't understand. Sophia, dear. You haven't figured it out, have you? You really don't know. Then I guess it's up to me to tell you the truth. I'm your granddaughter, Anton. <clears throat> Don't be ridiculous. Look at me. I'm too young to be anyone's grandfather. Yeah? Well, how long have you been young for, mister? But what you see around you isn't real. It's just an illusion created by your own mind. Your youth is part of that illusion. The truth is, well... Allow me, please. The gold mine built by your father, the late Duke Herzen, brought this town much growth and prosperity. But something terrible slept deep within that rich gold deposit. Unbeknownst to the miners, they hit a vein of hallucinogenic gas while digging for gold. 
the gas made those who breathed it extremely susceptible to mental suggestion of all types. Tales of the nightmarish vision seen in Folsense then spread, as did the town's sinister reputation. In truth, neither the Folsense we see before us nor its residents really exist. This is all a creation of our minds. How did you work it all out, Professor? The images of Folsense we saw are 50 years old, yet they show a town identical to the Folsense of today. Basically, they're all high as fuck on hallucinogenic gas right now. No, why does it do that? Sorry, I just need to check something real quick. I know I have it somewhere. Ooh. Ah, yeah. Okay, okay, gotcha. No town can remain unchanged for 50 long years. The photos we saw in the train station formed our impression of the full sense we'd see. A full sense of 50 years ago. Enough of this madness. Full sense is real. I'm real. April. April 20. Not May. None of it's real, Grandfather. This town is just a thin shadow. An illusion born of greed. You and Sophia? Everything you know changed 50 years ago. Katya, Sophie, and Anton's granddaughter. Katya set it alone for false sense to solve a 50 year old misunderstanding. The hallucinogenic gas present in Folsons' air caused Lloyd and the others to imagine the station as the gleaming edifice displayed in the fanny photographs lining the walls of the building. But you and I are betrothed. How can you just leave me here? I won't have it. This whole town is cursed. If we remain here, all those dear to me will die. Am I not dear to you, Sophia? Stay with me. And we'll rebuild full sense together. I'm sorry, Anton, but there's someone else I love who needs me even more than you. And that's not another man, but the child in my body! Is that the real reason you want to go? Because there's someone else? I trusted Sophia, and she left me for another. You've got it all wrong, Grandfather. She never betrayed you. What? The other she was talking about was the little life growing inside her. The life you two created together. No. That can't be. I'm sorry, Anton. But there's someone else I love who needs me even more than you. I never knew. Sophia was... That's right. Grandmother was carrying my mother, and she left Fulsense to keep her safe. She kept the baby a secret to avoid causing you more pain. I've been so wrong. Grandmother passed away last year, but she was always talking about you, even toward the end. She never stopped loving you. And you think in those 50 years you would have told someone to, hey, can you maybe bring me to this town so we can bring an end to this man's madness? No, she passes away. Anton invented a whole vampire story to scare those who would try to loot their heads and fortune. He did this by whisking away all those who came too close to the castle and setting them free to run, once, run away once properly scared. Sophia is dead? No, it can't be. I've had enough of your lies! Oh! No! Grandfather, no! Please stop! Oh. 
We must leave now. The whole place is starting to crumble. Come with me. What's this? What's happening? Huh? <gasps> Come on, Grandfather. We have to get out of here. Be careful. It's not a late game if they're not running for their lives at some point. answers I was searching for. Here, allow me to return this to you. Thank you. So, the box wasn't cursed after all? Nope. There was just a bunch of gas in there. And if you open the box with the whole thing of, ooh, if you, everyone who opens it dies, and you're basically high as a kite, then I guess you just... <coughs> Until the effect wears off and your body remembers, wait, I didn't actually die. No, Luke, there's no curse to be found here. But if I were to guess, I suspect you'd find traces of that gas in the ore used to make this box. The same fumes that drove the town to ruin were released upon each person who opened the box. Those who opened the box expected death and in doing so, fulfilled their own grim predictions. I suppose it was just an ordinary box then. Oh, I assure you, it's far from ordinary. This box was crafted to hold the words of my heart. What do you mean? The box contains a hidden message, one meant only for Sophia. Many years ago, I asked a traveler passing through town to deliver it to her. Unfortunately, the box's value made it a target for those hungry for wealth. And so it was stolen again and again, thus perpetuating the whole chain of sad events. But we checked the box. It was as empty as could be. Ah, well that's because there's actually a second way to open it. The sun rises when you and I meet, and when the wind blows, you will know my heart. And if your microphone's broken, you cannot finish the game. These old words are the key to understanding this box and what it means. Do you follow, boy? I uh, think so. Let me give it a shot. The sun rises when you and I meet, and when the wind blows, you will know my heart. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see if this works. That was almost good thing too I can easy. Open and I have a microphone. Wonderful. What was the message that Anton left to his sweetheart all those years ago? The time has come to find out. I did it! Oh. Yes. 
Once you put the sun up, you actually need to blow into the microphone to finish this puzzle and the entire game. What's the matter? This isn't the letter I wrote. This is Sophia's handwriting. The box must have made it to her after all. My dear Anton, are you well? I received your letter. Though I'd like nothing more than to see you again, I'm afraid I no longer have the strength to do so. You don't know how many times I've thought about you over the years. I often wonder if you hate me for what I did. Do you? When I decided to leave, I was carrying our child. I couldn't bear exposing that tiny life to such danger. I knew your father's position and understood you didn't have the option to leave with me. Even though I did the only thing I could, I'll always regret leaving you that way. But there's one bright spot in this sad story, and that is our lovely granddaughter, Katya. My departure all those years ago has given you the chance to meet. Katya's mother died shortly after she was born, but Katya grew up strong and sweet just the same. She reminds me of you every time she smiles. With her around, I could never forget about you, even if I wanted to. You've been in my thoughts since the day we parted, and now, Though my time here is drawing to a close, I like to think we'll meet again on the other side. The thought of seeing your face warms my heart. Be well and be happy, my dear Anton. Goodbye. But just for now, your Sophia. Oh, Sophia. I finally understand now. So the Legion box was crafted 50 years ago to carry a letter from Anton to his love, Sophia. Gas present in the material used to make the box causes hallucinations in those who open it. His visions are how the rumors of a curse be. Grandfather. Hmm? Grandfather? Yes, that's right. It has a nice ring to it. <laughs> uh, no! <laughs> uh. I am so happy we met my dear granddaughter. You don't know how much this means to me. It's been so long, so very long, in fact, that I had forgotten what love even felt like. Instead, my love for Sophia was replaced by anger, and that anger completely blinded me. But now I can see the world clearly again, thanks to you, my granddaughter. Hmm. Are you listening, Sophia? I'll have to put off returning to your side for a while. There's someone I need to get to know here first. Will you forgive me for making you wait just a little longer, my dear? Wherever she is, I'm sure she's very happy for us. <laughs> I can't help you, I'm also crying. <laughs> is still there you need to get this man out of the town though <laughs> and that was the my pad is the one with an e 
<laughs> a relic reputed to carry a curse so terrifying that it became known as Pandora's Box. But when all was said and done, the nickname Pandora's Box couldn't have been more inappropriate. The box was revealed for what it truly was. <laughs> A vessel created to carry the love of two kindred spirits through all of time. While terror brought the box its notoriety, in the end, its most powerful message was one of love. <laughs> if you think the story with this one is good, just wait until Unknown Future. But still, this one makes me cry every time. And I knew this was coming up, right? I, I knew, oh. This song makes me cry every time. The <laughs> game where I'm gaming so hard. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> Good job, right? I wasn't too far off when I said like three more hours for the full game. A few hours back, right? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Silent Voice is so good. I still have to watch the movie at some point. I own it, but I've only read the manga. <sighs> you know, I shouldn't tell you get to take the late night while watching this. <laughs> If you if you want to please share your cosplay once you have the full thing at some point. The weakest twist. Hmm. But still, this one, not because of the twist, but this one just tugs at your heartstrings with the whole you realizing um, that this man oh, has lived in this town for 50 years in his anger and stuck in the past without realizing he's stuck in the past. And it taking until the granddaughter actually comes here? God. Oh, do you have Twitter maybe? You could also send it to me on Twitter if you want. If you don't have Discord, that's fine. <laughs> Luke! Don't go in there, Luke! <laughs> it's not for you, you're too young. The love of your life left you for another man, right? You don't use Twitter either, damn! Okay, oh. <laughs> um. Upload the picture to some kind of, um, I don't know, this photo packet still exists? What, something like this and send me a link in uh, Twitch DMs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running out of other options. <laughs> oh god, I love this game. Well, this, would, this is certainly not what I thought it would be doing today. I was like, I'm gonna play Layton. Because I love Layton. I didn't. Yeah, you can whisper to people, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think I would be finishing it. Jesus Christ. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna run a little past midnight. Oh, look, it's crying. <laughs> I live for longer than your whole workday, so you just listen along. <laughs> yeah, I've heard people go to bed and get back up in the time. It's <laughs> I stream this game. <sighs> Talk a couple of ago, what's next? The talk. <laughs> 
I shall be shutting my mouth on what Don Paolo is going to be next, because otherwise it's not going to be as fun once we see it. It's another sliding puzzle. I, <laughs> I feel that. That's a lovely hat. That's a lovely cosplay. I hope you can do the full thing at some point. <laughs> Come look at this article, you two. Huh? Miracle Rescue saves beloved academic. So, the doctor's alive after all. Yeah. We'll visit him as soon as we return. Hmm. Oh, but that might conflict with the symposium you've scheduled in London tomorrow. Well, then I'll simply have to cancel. Huh? After all, Luke, one must always show gratitude to one's teacher. <laughs> That's what a gentleman does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good thing they didn't forget her. Good thing she also didn't see any of the actual adventure. I mean, Luke's entire thing was like, oh yeah, we, we can't forget to pick up once we get back. I'm like, a good dude. You better not. Show gratitude to my teachers for my students. <laughs> the end. I like that they already put the to be continued in there. We hope you enjoyed Professor Layton on Pandora's box. It looks like you've sold every puzzle in the story mode of this game. Congratulations. For more fun things to do, check out the top secret area and weekly puzzles in a bonus section. Yeah, sure, there obviously. Since you come to the end of the story, your game will now be safe and you continue the game you resume play inside Hearts and Castle just before fighting Anton. From there you're free to continue playing however you wish. Sure, that's nice. Hands on my lessons to be here today. <laughs> uh, technically, obviously, there's going to be all of the extra puzzles, but I'm not going to do those right now. Because there's no way I can finish those in less than like half an hour. And honestly, I'm quite happy that I managed to actually beat the game in less than 12 hours. Because otherwise, I'm going to have a lot of trouble to cut this stupid fucking wad. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> No, no extra puzzles this time. <laughs> Thank you for the fun. <laughs> Congratulations, by the way. Uh, you were my thousand and one hundred follow. <laughs> so we hit the follow goal just now. Yay! <laughs> time to set a new one. <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh, goodness. That's Professor Layton and Pandora's box, or Diabolical box, or whichever version of the game you want to call it. Yeah! That means our next Layton game is gonna be Unbound Future. When? I don't know. Also, Unbound Future, I'm not gonna play in one go. There is no way. Like, if this took me almost 12 hours, no way. Mark those words. To mark those words, I'm not gonna play through that one in one go. I'd... For real, for real, this time. <laughs> you will cry. You will cry. I will cry. I cry every time I play this game. I cry every time I play Our Future. For the first late, I did not cry. The others I don't quite remember, but the third one, the sec this one and the third one, I always cry. <laughs> Noted. Yup, 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 yup. Oh. 
that is gonna be it for tonight. Uh, it has been 12 hours. <laughs> it has been 12 hours. I need some bad stuff. Will I pass out right after ending stream? Probably not. I'm gonna get up and move a little so my body can remember what it's like to be moving. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> thank you for the stream. Oh, thank you for coming by. Thank you for the pets. Please rest when you can. I will. I will. I will not be up for much longer, I don't think. <laughs> Fight those blood clots. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. You know, there's other people who play a game for 12 hours, but they get up. They take breaks in between. They, they are not stupid like I am. <laughs> so, Zen, the limits of humanity will come in when you. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, it's still uh, within the limits of humanity. And to do some squats. Exactly. <laughs> now, have a good night, everyone. Let me. While well, I love this music, let me just. Uh, switch over to my ending music. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming back. Oh, it is Thursday night. It is Thursday night. I can I can go be about my real life now. <laughs> oh, okay, I paused just check before we end. Okay, that's fair, fair, fair. Ooh. Oh my god! Okay, enough! I get it! <laughs> oh, okay, good! That was needed. Those are my fingers, yes. <laughs> okay. Ah! Enough. Thank you so much for coming by tonight. I'll send you over to Tip. Who is playing Celeste, which is something you'll never see me play. Stands up, begins to glow. <laughs> yeah. Things are like glow sticks. Thanks for receiving it. Have a good one. No, thank you for coming by. Let me actually give you a right message too. Have a very, very good night, everyone. Thank you so much for coming for this adventure. <laughs> Have a good night. Uh, I'll, I'll try and play uh, Digimon tomorrow, actually, so we can get that done sometime as well. <laughs> Have a good night. And bye-bye. Bye-bye.